Hello. Hi, everyone. Oh, let me transition. How are you guys? Let me move myself over a little. I'm cropping into my... There we go. <laughs> <clears throat> that OCD was hitting hard. How is everyone? Thanks for coming to a pretty early um, stream today, actually. <laughs> A little, a, little, a little early. Yeah, we're alive. We're live. <laughs> yeah, today has been a little bit rough, so <clears throat> I figured I would stream just to feel a little better, actually. <laughs> you guys always make me feel so much better. Like, I love streaming, so when I stream, I just feel so much better. I feel like I'm connecting and I get to talk about my how I feel and, like, everything like that so this is I'm so happy but <clears throat> I feel very happy to be able to do this um let me move this over you gonna move you gonna move over a little bit okay so until Shammy gets here um we're gonna go ahead and actually work on the wave painting today instead of the <clears throat> the portrait that we were working on before so we're gonna come we're gonna work on a completely new portrait until she gets here um in the meantime so it'll be a fun time i think it'll be a super fun time regardless <clears throat> and we'll get to talk and listen to um different <clears throat> different true crime stuff that was suggested i think today all of today's were suggested by salary um <clears throat> Yeah, Salary suggested um, the ones that we have here. Though, Shadow, I know that you also suggested and said that you like listening to Mr. Ballin. So, not the only person out here who likes him. So, uh, we're going to be starting with Mr. Ballin. <clears throat> then we're going to do the two uh, cruise options or the two cruise um, <clears throat> stories. And then another one from Rotten Mango, because we're probably going to go long. Hi, Salary. How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, we're going to be watching the ones that you suggested. <laughs> it'll be a fun time. I think it'll be a super fun time. I'm doing well. I'm, You know, <clears throat> it's just hard because... Okay, well, how many people do I have? Oh, four. Whatever. <clears throat> so... I guess I I am due to tell you guys about what happened with my pipes and my plumbing and stuff. Okay, so two years ago, we had so okay. I'm sorry, go back. <clears throat> I want to say three years ago, actually. My a a new tenant moved in upstairs to the second floor, and. <clears throat> they were fine. They were, I had nothing wrong with them. There was nothing wrong with living with them. They never did anything crazy or anything like that. I <clears throat> I was fine with it. And the problem with... Uh, the problem started about two years ago, though. So they were there for about a year. No issues. <clears throat> two years goes... Uh, or two, a year passes after the year they, they come in <clears throat> and start living there. And I start to notice that there's, like, some draining, drainage issues with my kitchen. <clears throat> so I tell my landlord, and my landlord's, okay, I'll give you this, um, this, this degreaser stuff, and, like, <clears throat> I'm sorry, like, I was coughing earlier, so I actually have, I have a coconut drink to help me. Um, <clears throat> so I told my, my landlord, Hey, like I'm having these issues. He gives me a degreaser. I use it. Um, it didn't seem to really do much, but I'm like, okay, maybe it just needs some time. Hmm. That doesn't happen. And, oh shit. I just realized this candle is burned out. Remember it burned out from last time. Hold on. Let me, let me grab a new one. I have a new one that I... <clears throat> that I have for today's stream. One second.
Wait. There we go. Sorry. This is a new candle. It's from Bath and Body Works. I am not sponsored by them, but I could be. I am open. Um, it's sweater, sweater weather. And <clears throat> I like um, woodsier and traditionally more masculine smells, to be honest. So I grabbed some of those. <laughs> sweater weather. <laughs> anyway. So. Um, so. I, it started with drainage issues. And then some time passes by. And my... I was at work one time. My landlord calls me and he goes, Hey, did you leave the bathtub running? And I'm like, um, no. Why? And he's like, the guy in the basement that's living down there, he says that, like, there's water leaking from your, your apartment. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? Oh, hi, Shammy. Hi, Brie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Shammy, take your time. Don't even worry about it. I, like I said, I started, I started stream. And if you, you can't do today, that's perfectly fine too. We can, we can, if you want to, and you still want to work on your diamond painting, you can work on it now. If you feel like jumping into stream is too much, that's perfectly fine. Cause I know, I know I work with streams different from you do. <laughs> in a way well i know I, okay i should say streaming is different from for me than some other people right sometimes it makes them tired and other times it doesn't really make me tired but i i, I mean really long streams do but not like two to three hours it's okay regardless i'm still continuing my story so <clears throat> i'm at work he calls me he says are you did you run a bathtub is it overflowing i tell him no I'm at work. There's no way I could do that. And um, he says, well, can you go home and check? So I said, okay, fine. So I go, go there and it doesn't seem like there's anything. And then I check my kitchen. There's water like all over my kitchen floor. Um, it is extremely just like it's pouring over my kitchen sink essentially and <clears throat> it's because it's overflowing with like dirty water stop don't burner don't look at my mouse <laughs> i say as i put a translucent bag over it Um, hi, Burner. Hi, Burner. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> Shammy, if you have time, can you please uh, shout Burner out? It's just a slash shout, shout out and then his name. Um, so yeah, so my kitchen sink is just filled with dirty water and it must have overflowed. And I'm like, how? I didn't leave dirty water here. <clears throat> there's no way and and so I talked to my landlord and he's like well what's going on and I'm like I don't know it must have overflowed from the thank you thank you for doing that thanks um <clears throat> um it must have overflowed from the main pipe the main pipe it must have come through and the reason why is because the second floor they're pouring oil down into their into from their sink from their kitchen sink they're pouring oil into it it goes down the main pipe and the main pipe kind of snakes this it goes down from the apartment and then it snakes over right but it has to hit the first floor first right and guess who's on the first floor me <laughs> so the oil starts to harden and stop any type of water that goes through and tries to go out of the house and instead it goes to me up into my apartment and through to the kitchen sink and and so my <clears throat> and so of course the guy's upstairs the guy upstairs is like is saying no it's not me it's not me but then every time my landlord goes to check he's like 
why is there this black and gray sludge here? This is very obvious, like grease. Why are you pouring oil and grease down, down the sink? And they're just like, no, 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 it's not us. It's not me. I have nothing to do with it. Like, it's because your, your pipes are bad. And blah, blah, blah. he's like, what are you talking about? And so, okay, regardless. Okay, so he says this. And okay, and so my landlord ends up grabbing a, a plumber who will rod all of the like rod <clears throat> you stick um a really long piece of metal essentially that's flexible into the pipe to push out whatever is in the pipe and at first the plumber comes in and he rods it and he he's like okay this is heavy duty like i have to go and get a heavy duty <clears throat> i have to go and get a heavy duty rotter because the, whatever's here Whatever is here is heavy duty. <clears throat> and so he's like, okay. So he goes and grabs it. He rods out my sink. It's fine. It's working fine. And then it happens again about six months later. And this time I was home. My my landlord tried calling me like he just did. <laughs> like right now. He calls me and he's like, you're you're are you are you in the bath again like i'm like no and so i looked i'm like the kitchen sink is flooded again and yes bria stink <clears throat> and so i'm like um i'm like charlie charlie like and this is my landlord charlie i it's happening again and he, charlie's like oh my god what the fuck and so he actually thinks it's at first, he's like, okay, maybe it's her. Maybe there's something wrong with it. He <clears throat> he checks my pee... The, there's something called the pee trap. <clears throat> he checks that. And he also checks all my pipes. It has... It looks like there's water that's gone through it backwards. But there's just a little bit of basically the sludge that was in the other guy's pipes. And he's like, yeah, this is the stuff that like was coming out of his pipes and i'm like well it didn't come from me like obviously because you checked it last time but yeah so this whole thing happens two more times and so overall four times this has happened this weekend <clears throat> i got a call from yes four times hi vonkin how are you welcome welcome four times my apartment is randomly flooding and it's like what? sometimes i'm at work sometimes i'm out sometimes i even i'm i'm even at home it just happens <clears throat> and um and this time i was out i was at kb's house like i said i was supposed to do a stream i was supposed to do uh what was it uh, unwording that time which thank you for everybody to come coming out you guys like i i expected like two people to be there like 12 10 11 people were there <laughs> i'm like what are you guys doing it's like one two in the morning <laughs> mm. it was right before labor day so i mean people didn't have work but <clears throat> so yeah so i was i was telling my 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 landlord i'm like charlie what's gonna happen if like i'm not i'm i'm out of town like, I can't literally stop my entire life to deal with something that randomly happens. And then what am I supposed to do? Like, my kitchen is overflowing. Like, So, what happened... <clears throat> um, more degen overnight streams like, oh, I, you say that, but I might... Uh, the thing is, is that I can't do that because if if I if I do degen streams at night, I'm gonna miss burner streams, and I need burner streams to sleep. So, sorry, it's gonna have to be early evening. <laughs> no. no, actually, to be honest, it's because this kind of works for me. This t uh, time schedule works for me because it's right after work and like that helps me de-stress so <clears throat> <clears throat> 
anyway, so I tell Charlie that and he's like, I know. So what we, and, and he keeps telling the guy, he has told the guy multiple times, hey, can you please, please stop it? And the guy just won't. So, um, so we're working around it and we set up a, basically a bowl. I have a really large mixing bowl that I'm no longer going to be using because gross. Um, that is catching all the water that <clears throat> is going to be coming through there. Okay, I want this shape, right? Yeah, that's number 23. Um, that's going to be catching all of the water. Yeah, Shami, you laugh, but literally he, when he is being confronted about it and shown the evidence, he's like, no, it's not me. He's just like, doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. I don't know. He's just, he, he's in denial. He's 100%. He'll blame everything else and everyone else before him, himself. Um, but whatever. Um, but yeah, he, <clears throat> he, he says this. And so we go, okay, well, we'll work around it. We gre he buys a pump. There's a pump. We put the pump in the mixing bowl that, um, second we put it in the mixing bowl and um <clears throat> and sorry I'm, I was just texting Charlie because I'm just like he keeps like calling me constantly so I'm like I'm busy I'm busy <laughs> but um yeah I'm sorry if I'm like erratic I'm just today's been a lot it's been a lot and this whole weekend this whole week's been a lot so but I'm glad to be streaming it makes me feel happy so you guys put me in uh, you guys put me in a happy place so I'm happy to be here um but yeah so um we put it pump in the mixing bowl and then the hose connected to the pump is to outside so if there is ever water that goes through like starts flowing overflowing to my to my sink I um it'll automatically just start pumping it out out of the out of the leak leaking area so um that's what we have right now and I mean, to be honest, it is a jerry-rigged little fucking thing, but it hypothetically means that my apartment should never flood. I have that pump on just like constantly, which I looked up the voltage. It's not going to fuck up my electric bill too bad, <laughs> to be honest. So it should be fine. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, it it's it's been a doozy. It's been a lot. It's been a week and he sorry, sorry, I text Charlie. I'm like cuz he he just called me twice and I'm like, "Uh, can you text it to me instead?" And he texts, "Oh, it was an accident. You accidentally called me twice. That's crazy." Um but yeah, so, and not to be, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but, like, Charlie is not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed sometimes. And so I have to, like, tell him how, like, gravity and, like, physics work sometimes. And I'm not even a, I'm not even a math girl, man. Like, I am a science girl. Like, I really like bio. I really like genetics. I like all of that stuff. But I am definitely not. I wish you could show the text. Um... <laughs> show me. When did I say that? I don't remember when I said that, to be honest. I just, sometimes I just say things and then Shammy just laughs at them. Um, is it difficult to evict where y'all are? Um, no, it's not actually. So, 
uh, actually, my my landlord said that he was after this whole thing. After the lease is over for for the guy, he's probably gonna say, "I I don't want to, I don't want to renew the lease." So, <clears throat> yeah, that's his problem now. But oh, should I? I totally forgot. One second. I have so many little rituals that I do, you know. But yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Um, that scenario first before I started because I know that some of my friendos here, some of my community already know that I'm going through this. So they're probably like, well, what the fuck is that? Like, what is going on with that? So that's, that's what's happening now. And today actually what happened, basically Charlie, when we put in the pump yesterday, he said, why don't we put it into, why don't we put the end of the pump to your sink? And I said, no, like, I don't want to do that because, like, what if it falls? What if it, like, he's like, oh, but if you put it in your tub, it'll get dirty and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I have a lot of places that I could shower if I don't want to use my tub. Like, it's fine. But he, he insisted to put it in the sink. Then I get a call. <laughs> I get a call at around like 10 30 and it's charlie saying hey so your apartment is flooding again and the guy in the basement is livid which i mean to be fair he should be like he's also getting affected too and <clears throat> um he goes can you go back home and um i i said i'm at work it's 10 30 i literally literally got here like three hours ago and he's like yeah but like you have to check it and i don't know whatever so i call my boss tell him okay yeah i've, I've got to go and do this she's like go go for it i go over go home my landlord is already there because he's off today so he met me there and he goes, oh, I found out what the issue was. The hose dropped from the sink because of gravity. And I'm like, bitch, I told you. I fucking told you. Don't put it in the sink. But no. <clears throat> so it flooded because there was water coming through the sink, through the, um, through my kitchen sink. When in tried to go through the sink for the for my bathroom because that's where it was supposed to go and um it ended up um i guess overflowing or flowing too hard flowing hard enough where it jostled the um the hose and it jostled it so much that it um that it knocked it over and the hose was actually on my bathroom floor. So there's that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I am actually going to stop talking about this because um, it is it, it is it is a frustrating thing. However, however, um, that is what that is. Because of gravity. Yes, because of gravity. Well, I mean, honestly, it, he's not wrong. Because, like, if you think about it, right? Which, I mean, I feel like a two-year-old. Not two, but maybe, like, at least ten. Would, when they're, when you put something in a pipe, like, in a hose, like water, and then that hose is light because there's no, there's no water in it right now. When there is water that flows through it, it's going to get heavy, right? And so I just fell off after a while. And then I'm just like, Charlie, come on. Come on, Charlie. That, oh, stretch. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, I won't have any colors today because I have my PNG instead. <laughs> and my hands. Um... But, I mean, I guess the closest thing I could do for you is if you choose a color, then um, I can choose that out of my colors here for my next color. Oh, maybe. Um, 
but yeah so that that's my whole um kitchen sink issue um you guys want to listen to true crime (laughs) okay um let me go ahead and um this go down a little bit wow this really it really didn't doesn't want to though okay that's fine don't just don't um let's yeah i mean the great thing about it is (laughs) poor shammy has had to as as she has said um live the saga of it so <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny it, it it can be pretty funny like in in a way where you're in a really shitty situation but you can't do anything but laugh yeah it it is it is it's literally an arc it's an arc in my entire life that this arc i want this arc to end this is like one piece and the arc constantly is work it, like going on and people are like i hate this arc this arc is the worst but it just keeps continuing yeah that's that's basically it all right so our first story today is suggested by salary actually i'm sorry all all three of these stories are gonna be by salary (laughs) but i have an extra one at the end as well um oh i totally forgot Shami, can you find me an Am I the Asshole post that you think is really good? And I'll read it halfway into, like, between the two um, cruise ones. I can do that. Yeah, if you can send that to me, great. And then we'll do, as usual, we'll do the Am I the Asshole poll so we can see how everyone feels. Okay. All right. Oh, so this one is Mr. Ballin. It is the most fucked up investigation ever caught on tape. I'm ready to start. If you guys are. Okay. Three. At the end of today's story, a lot of you are going to be shaking your head, wondering how in the world could they have missed that? But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place. Let me know if it's too low or too high, okay? Times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to make a like button a sandwich of their choosing. But when you build it, make it between two very thin, stale rye bread heels. Also, please. I, I'm not. A, I'm okay two with very thin, rye. Stale rye bread heels. Also, <laughs> maybe subscribe to our channel and turn on too low? notifications okay. so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. How's that? That better? Perfect. Heels are good toasted. I agree. I kind of like heels, not gonna lie. In People will say it's the Heather worst Kwan one. was a 21 year old college student living in the small residential town of Desert Hills in Arizona. Oh my gosh. From a very young age, Heather was someone who always seemed to give her friendship to the people who needed it the most people who were hurting on the inside or whose society had kind of forgotten about. This is why when she was a teenager and a young adult, she would often spend her weekends volunteering her time with underprivileged children. It's also why she aspired to go to law school and become a defense lawyer because she loved the idea of professionally helping people that desperately needed her help. She lived in a rental home with her boyfriend who was 18 years old. His name was Ryan Waller. And amongst other things, he was a huge gun enthusiast and a student. That year, the couple had made plans to visit Ryan's father, Don, on Christmas Day, so on December 25th. But when the day came and Dawn had made Hey Erie, how are you? Them, welcome, welcome. First time so chat. Dawn tried contacting both of them, but when he couldn't, he just had a bad feeling that something was off. It was just very uncharacteristic of them to just no show. But instead of driving <clears> over <throat> to their property himself, Dawn just called the local police and asked them to do a welfare check. The police arrived at the house mm-hmm. in Desert Hills, Arizona. They hello, knocked on hello. the door, but there was no answer. They looked in the windows and some lights were on, but it was mostly dark inside, and they couldn't really tell from the car in the driveway like if that L. belonged this to the L. homeowners or somebody else. This is definitely so they stood L. there There's for a, a second, they're looking in the windows, there's no movement. I they totally knock again for... while simultaneously calling out that, hey, we're the police, we're here to okay. do a welfare check, just want to make Fine. sure you guys are okay. And this time, after they were done knocking, they heard the deadbolt unlock and then the door swung inward into the house 
and standing right in front of them was Ryan. Ryan had this huge bruise on his left eye, this big black eye, and he had a cut on his nose. I'm doing and he was well. just standing there, not saying I was telling anything, a, not asking any questions, just an interesting at them. story. And they looked past Ryan but into his house and they saw there was doing a woman better lying now. on the couch, Definitely which they presumed it. was his girlfriend Heather, because that was the two people they were coming to look for. And so they turned their attention back to Ryan and they asked him, you know, what happened to your eye? And Ryan was a little bit cagey. He didn't really give them a straight answer. He basically said, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to my eye. And, you know, the police didn't really pry that much. But I don't know. They Can you tell me what Ryan happened? was more or less okay, albeit a little bit strange. And then they said, okay, well, who's the woman who's lying on the couch? Is that Heather? And Ryan, again, was kind of cagey and a little bit dismissive and said something along the lines of, oh, you know, she's just sleeping. And so the police said to him, look, you know, we're here on a welfare like check. Your father that. sent us here to check on you guys. And so we have to go in there and wake her up and make sure she's okay. And so Ryan, oh, she's again, so was dead. Just a little bit she's weird dead. and kind of defensive and didn't Sorry, really but... immediately comply, but eventually did step out of the way. And the police walked into the residence, they walked over to the couch, and as soon as they looked down at the girl on the couch, which was Heather, they saw right away that she was not asleep. Why is it, she why would dead. he be making fun of you? For at least a couple of days. She had died from a single gunshot wound to the head. Oh my Immediately, gosh. Ryan oh, Shadow, you heard about this one? I haven't heard car. of it. He didn't fight the arrests, but he did emphatically say he didn't know what was going on, he didn't understand what was happening, he didn't know what happened to Heather, he just seemed kind of generally confused. But Regardless, he was thrown in the back <laughs> Spoiler, of the police car sorry. property, and he would sit there for several hours while more and more police and paramedics arrived to process the crime scene and also to transfer oh, are the you, body to a morgue. Are you playing Finally, Phasmophobia with you right now? On December 26th, the police brought Ryan, who was still in the back of this police car, to the Phoenix station. Oh my God, Ari and, and the Brenner have beef. That followed this uh, interrogation that was all filmed. <laughs> <laughs> would start off relatively normal. Yeah, that's what I thought, Yuri. I thought you guys were going to be playing totally Sunday. Back and forth as well as I'm greeted with the bitch boy. Who was questioning <laughs> him. And then at the end of the interrogation, there would be this stunning revelation. Uh, from this point until the end of put it in video, our, in our, we're going to be um, showing you clips from the actual interrogation. When in you our get to the end DMs. of this video and you hear the revelation, <clears throat> and trust me, he sure you does just take it, it honestly. I he takes a lot of things. To then go back and including watch the clips of the interrogation, being or just go bitch online boy. and watch the entire <laughs> interrogation because it's totally mind blowing watching this thing, <laughs> knowing what's really this going one. on. In the video, Ryan is led into this sort of nondescript small interrogation room at 5:08 a.m. on December 26th. So he's just arrived at the station. They put him in this room. He's wearing this white jumpsuit that might have been issued by police. Maybe he owned it, but it definitely looks more like prison attire. He's got no shoes on, no socks on, and his hands. No are not shoes? And so he Free walks into the feet? Room and he sits down in the oh chair that's in the back corner of the interrogation. People room. donating on here. Right Charity. Next to table, and then on the other side of this table is another. I chair. am making so a diamond corner, painting. Kind of facing out towards oh, the middle. It's of the hard room. to see he's quiet. it. He's basically not moving. Because it's like I've covered it up point, by now. Notices there but, is a yeah. handcuff that's connected to this table. Now, in some cases, the police would handcuff the person they were interviewing in this room, but in this case, Ryan was not. I can told send you a picture of it, Yuri. handcuff on. He was I uncuffed, so there was no picture. directive that he needed to have this handcuff on. Here we go. Oh, he's so creepy. I don't understand. Does he have like. He wants to put the handcuff on? I'm confused. Oh, he's putting it on himself? And yes, After Bernard and I have- himself to um, this table, Ryan I don't think, turns I don't and puts think... his arms over this table and he lays down, puts his head in his arms. I don't know. I don't know if um, Burner and I have beef. Sounds, we don't really have part, beef. He's quiet. And then all of a sudden, as he's laying there, he suddenly makes a fairly loud moaning sound and he stands up in his chair like he's going to walk out of the room. But as soon as he starts to walk away, the oh handcuff stops him. The handcuff that he was not told to put on. And so he's stuck against this table, but he doesn't seem phased by it. He looks Dude. almost confused by what's happening, but he doesn't dwell on it for very long. Instead, he just reaches across the table and grabs a blank piece of paper, and then he just sits back down in the seat, he crosses his uh, legs, and he starts looking at this piece of paper. At 5.17 a.m., roughly nine minutes into this interrogation, which really hasn't even started yet. Yeah, it hasn't Ryan even started. There's no interrogation. piece of paper, 
when a detective walks into the interrogation room. He's reading somebody else's Dalton, essay just and in he his mind. Ryan that they're going to be taking pictures of his feet, and so he needs to put his feet up on the table. That's we right do bicker a lot. The FC did. I feel like the FC started really beef with you because I no eventually has beef with you because I started table. beef with you. And by the time his feet are up there, because I don't think the whole mitt thing came. Room into existence until we did copper bell mines and you you literally told me i'm a great tank and then immediately you totally forgot your periodically asked him if he can just leave and go home seemingly unaware of how serious the situation really was for him and when dalton would tell him no you can't leave ryan would act totally frustrated and kind of angry and upset kind of like how a child would act if they were told they couldn't have something they really wanted to. At 5.28 a.m., after this 10-minute session is complete and they've photographed and swabbed Ryan's feet, the second officer oh. leaves the room and there Dalton shuts the door behind him, and then he walks over to the table and he grabs the chair on the other side I was Ryan, experiencing a skill out, issue. So I mean, you Ryan, were. And he sits down but at the same time, himself. that doesn't after mean that, that I come and lie to you and tell you that you're questions. a good team. He asks him to confirm his name. You were, you were missing some fundamentals. How? However, I also recognize that recognize that you are new. Then he asks Ryan if he understands why he was there, that is why very he was being important. interrogated. And Ryan says no. And so at this point, Dalton says, okay, you know, let's just stop right now. I'm going to read you your rights. And he so doesn't know why he's in being interrogated? Did he know Ryan's that behavior starts to get Heather's really, dead really body was there? After he had Dalton no idea. After tells Ryan he needs to read him his rights, you can see Ryan doesn't compute what he's saying. He's just kind of looking blankly. Oh. Dalton seems to pick up on that. And hey, so Shammy, he can you please kind of um, shout you know, hey, Eerie out, I'm going to read you your rights like they do on TV, you know, like on Cops and on Law and & Order and CSI, any of those crime shows, they read people their rights. That's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm talking about? And Ryan just goes, no. And Dalton's kind of confused. He's like, you haven't seen any cop show where they read people their rights? And at this, Ryan kind of changes his behavior. And suddenly he's <clears> Yes, robotic, go and check them out when they play looking, Phasmo. Says, I am oh, excited yeah, to see them play Phasmo. At this, it's pretty obvious to Dalton that Ryan I cannot is wait. lying about something that is totally insignificant. Thank you, Shami. Whether or not he's seen true crime TV shows, it really just didn't matter at all. Don't worry, I'm and a bitch too. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm a huge, huge, scary, scary game bitch. It's like Dalton bitch. knows he's lying so. about it, and Ryan just seems totally confused. And then ultimately, Dalton just decides to not key in on this kind of weird lie that Ryan has just told. Instead, he just reads Ryan his rights. And then after that, he gets back into some basic questions. The next one was, hey, Ryan, what was the highest grade you would choose? Scary game. And now at this I point, am. I'm Ryan a huge. Is not looking I, I he's looking am so to the scared. far side of the room. He's got this blank expression on. And it's when scary. he's asked this Sorry. question, it's he scary. just says, I don't know. And Dalton's like, you don't know what level grade <clears> you achieved in school? And Ryan says, no, I don't know. Uh, eighth. Eighth grade. So again, he's changed his answer fairly abruptly when he's challenged. And so know. Dalton is probably thinking to himself that he's lying again. But again, it's just kind of an insignificant thing, but it's building a pattern of Kimi and I are besties because girls. To believe that Ryan <laughs> true, is going to true, true, true. If he can't even tell the truth about things that don't matter. But Dalton decides not Would to it fix kill it you it. to Instead, just he lie a little? Question based on the fact oh. that Ryan has said eighth grade is the highest level he achieved. Mm. And so Dalton yeah, says, okay, I... well, did you get your GED? So, the GED is a high school diploma equivalent. That's super fun. You enabled if you did not graduate board. high school. And since eighth UV grade is, is below high school, 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 then Ryan clearly What's did not finish high school. So it's a scary first person. The answer to this question is binary. Horror game. You have a GED, you don't have Yeah, it might kill me. But Ryan's kill answer me. is anything but binary. It's totally contradictory and Remember weird, the sounds that I was really making begins to when show a side of I had to lie that just doesn't add up. He's acting totally about weird. how <laughs> if you're not good at like one know. thing or another thing and you're like you tried to convince me. I don't know. Oh, um jack it's good to be a jack of all trades, you know? I'm going to go home. You're, you're not going to go home. <laughs> like I know. Mm -hmm. A chamois or a brave soul? <laughs> who the fuck? Th this could not come from the same girl yeah. who screams from seeing the killer across the map in DVD. Crazy. There's no yeah. fucking way. There's no fucking shot. <laughs> at, at grade, as in letter grade, I'm asking you, did you graduate high school? Screaming is part of the fun. No. It is part of the fun. And the highest you went was eight. For grade. us, 
Mm. Just not the neighbors. You know? Yeah. You gotta read and write, right? Yeah. See, After this is why education, education is very important to everyone. Dalton, again, does not Being a jack of all trades all is a good thing. Answers so far, <laughs> and instead um, just kind of continues asking more questions. And so I mean, he begins yeah. to address Heather. He starts by asking Ryan if he has a girlfriend. Now, Dalton, at this point, would know that Heather, the girl who was deceased, was Ryan's girlfriend because the police were asked to do the initial welfare check on Ryan and Heather, the couple. That's something that Dawn would have relayed to police. And so Dalton knows they have a relationship, but he wants Ryan to tell him he has a relationship with Heather. So again, yeah. he asks Ryan, you know, do you have a girlfriend? And Ryan says no, which is a lie. But Dalton goes yeah. along with it and says, okay, There's, well, um... do you know a girl named Heather? And Ryan would say, yes, I do. But his description of Heather was just completely inaccurate. He said Heather was a it means I can do anything. Maybe not a pro level, but it means you aren't limited, and he would say right? The last name was Kaiman. He thought he wasn't entirely sure. He said she has nicknames and she has different names she uses, but he believes it's Kaiman, even though her last name was actually Quan. Now Dalton, of course, is aware of Kaiman. these discrepancies, but Kaiman. again, Why he does Kaiman? not fixate on them. He just keeps on asking more <clears> questions. <throat> Dalton asks Ryan. What happened to your face? You have this huge bruise on the left I side mean, of your I face. I mean, I agree with you know, that to a certain At first, extent. Ryan says Burner. he doesn't know. But when Dalton pressed Especially him, when it comes to uh, about his face and careers happened, and stuff, Ryan usually it's to open up. better to, to be an expert in something or uh -huh. try to be an expert in something. You told the officer just a few minutes ago that someone... Games are fine, though. Do you remember who hit you? Um, I don't know. I think it was Heather. Hmm. Why would Heather hit you? I don't know. It was an accident. I forgot why. Like the other police officers involved, Dalton believed already going into this interrogation that Ryan killed Heather. That the bruise on his face was from Heather fighting back before yeah. ultimately Ryan killed her. I was thinking so that she, say, those are mark defensive on my face is from Heather, even though he claimed it was an accident. It's probably Dalton, That was the same thing Oops. as Ryan saying, I killed Heather. Dalton attempted to get more specific details about the actual physical struggle that took place between Ryan and Heather, but as he asked more and more questions, he became more and more aggressive and it seemed like Ryan picked up on it and became very defensive and started throwing out random pieces of information much of which seemed untrue like he suggested there was at least two or three other people that were in the house on the night that Heather got killed but it's unclear if these people were real or if they were actually ever there and it just seemed like Ryan was kind of panicking and just kind of saying all sorts of random things and so it's I some mean point, he, if he doesn't have a lot of education it could be that he's he just like, like getting totally out of hand he's so he like freaking out Ryan, at this point, says, right? Ryan, there is a dead girl in your house, and I need information. Hey, Ryan? Huh? Huh? There's what? a dead girl in your living room. She's dead? dead? Yes. Heather? I don't know. I want to know what happened in your house last night. Oh, at least they have the time. The time of death, the girl right? girl on the couch is dead? I don't know. If she's on the couch, she's dead. The interesting thing about Ryan's reaction to being told by Dalton for the first time in the interrogation that there was a dead girl in his house is Ryan reacted with genuine surprise. Yeah, it's the he only sounds time in the entire legit. interrogation start to finish where Ryan sits forward in his chair, he kind of perks up and he seems relatively normal. He's not acting confused and kind of bizarre. It's like he's, he's like really legitimately as if he confused. had not heard this before, that he didn't know Heather was dead and he's <clears> now for the first time being told and it shocked his system. Weird bits of psychology but just come to after like during he sits forward and seems events. really yeah. engaged. He Things can kind of go haywire. Totally yeah, it's bizarre. he's he like seems like had completely this really elaborate story like, whoa, about what? what happened to Heather, whoa, even what? though just seconds ago it seemed Might like more he for the FC learned about it. So FC it didn't really make any sense that he would have a story so imploding. readily available for something he seemed to not know anything about. And of oh, course, like all of his other like problematic answers, people, his story he gave was full of contradictions and holes, and was just totally unbelievable. Well, these people came over. The machine is dead. With shooting arrow, bow and darts. You know what I'm talking about? Bow yeah. and darts. They hit me and her with those. That's it. They hit you and they hit you. Yeah. 
Now it's Richie that hit you, not Heather. No, Rich. Richie and his dad. Richie and his dad. Who the fuck is Richie? Hit you. Yes. Why? Because they're trying to get their stuff. I don't know why. And they had some kind of bow and arrows? Mm hmm. Damn, we're straight up going he into shot RPG two mode. And they didn't let off any shells. Damn, with that bruise, the DPS was actually popping, though. Bone arrows. Now they have revolvers. <clears throat> Apparently, they have poaching revolvers. are rather they alleged. Have revolvers. Yes. Heads and then what happened? And then they shot His us, ex so. babysitter. Following this okay. exchange, sorry, Ryan sorry, would sorry, story something. again and would say, actually, they didn't shoot me. They just shot Heather. They put me in a sleeper hold. But when Dalton asked him, "What do you mean sleeper hold?" Ryan said, "Oh, like I don't a know what sleeper right? hold is." And then eventually, Ryan would actually just ditch the sleeper hold narrative and go back to the Richie and his father. They came in and they shot both of us. At this point, Ryan's story has become so convoluted and it's changed so many times. So never take me seriously unless I'm totally being serious. Oh, and so Dalton, was doing <laughs> I his totally best believed to you because like story. At I've been point, talking to chat, so I'm just that like, he cannot pretend. I, Bumpkin that knows. He's following Bumpkin knows. Story. It doesn't make any sense. Knows everything. <laughs> you're telling me. You're, you're Paying all attention. Here, I'm not clearly. You're seeing bows and arrows. You're seeing revolvers, and you're seeing some other thing. And they, you're saying they shot you in the eye. Damn. Okay. They shot you with a revolver in your eye. Yes. Wait. And hold on. Is it a BB gun? No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a if revolver. They shot you in the eye with a revolver. You wouldn't be talking to me right now. How do you know? It was most likely you'd be dead. That's what I thought too, man. I really don't know. So you got shot first? Uh huh. And what happened? Did you fall to the ground? Yeah, I was trying to get up and I couldn't. Okay. I don't know. <sighs> and then she so got shot? Just stuck. Mm -hmm. What, why, what, what did you do? Nothing. Did you call 911? Uh -uh. Did you see if she was alive? She was sleeping still, and that's it. I just let her sleep. She got shot in the side of the face, and you let her sleep? Yes. This does not make sense, Ryan. After this exchange, Dalton just goes full bad cop on Ryan, openly accusing him of shooting and killing Heather. And Ryan just continues to say he doesn't know anything. I legit don't do think it. he did it. And his answers are just totally nonsensical and contradictory and nothing is making sense. And so finally, at 5.52 a.m., roughly 45 minutes into this I want to know who Richie Dalton is, though. Dalton is just at a loss. He does not know who how to handle Ryan. Because even though he really believes he did it, nothing Ryan has <laughs> said has incriminated him because nothing Nothing Ryan has said makes any sense. Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense. So he can't really incriminate next. somebody who's and not making sense. And then Dalton notices something. He notices something on Ryan's face. He tells Ryan Me to too. come closer. He needs to look at it. Let me see your nose. Put your, put, your legs, put your legs down. Put your legs down. Bring, bring your legs nose. Bring your legs down. Oh, my head hurts. The side of his nose. I'm trying to get a better look, but yeah, camera sucks right. ass. I wonder if he actually does have a bullet in his nose. What Dalton had finally just discovered were four bullet holes in Ryan's face and head. Ryan had what? committed no crime. He was a victim the same way Heather was a victim, he, but somehow Ryan had survived the attack. On December he has four 23rd, bullets so two days in his the face? Check, two men attempted to break How? into Ryan and Heather's house. They How are were you alive? They were old Richie Carver and his 54-year-old father, Larry Carver. The same Richie and Richie's father that Ryan had mentioned during the interrogation. How they is even, no wonder he's like fucked up. Occurred between Richie and yeah, he was confused because he got shot in during the fucking head. Head Richie four was times. actually living with Ryan and Heather. Hey, but apparently he began hitting on Heather. <laughs> I am. Um, Ryan and Ryan got this really mad a, about it. And Ryan and Richie got in this big fight. Uh, and ultimately diamond painting. Ryan kicks Richie So I put the these house. little things in. Now this totally infuriates Richie. And is very embarrassing for Richie. 
And so right away, he begins <clears throat> plotting his revenge. And so on December 23rd, Richie Wait, and his sorry. father, they were go there back. to carry out this revenge. I'm listening to this. Hold on one second. attempted to break into Ryan and Heather's house. I want to listen. They were 23-year-old Richie Carver and his 54-year-old <clears throat> father, Larry Carver. The same Richie and Richie's father that Ryan had mentioned during the interrogation. They were there because of an altercation that had occurred between Richie and the couple about a month earlier. During that time, Richie was actually living with Ryan and Heather, but apparently he began hitting on Heather and Heather told Ryan and Ryan got really mad about it and Ryan and Richie got in this big fight and ultimately Ryan kicks Richie out of the house. Now this totally infuriates Richie and is very embarrassing for Richie. And so right away he begins oh, plotting no. his revenge. And so on Poor December baby 23rd, got fucking Richie rejected. and his father, they were there oh. to carry out this revenge plot. When the father <clears throat> and son got to the back of Ryan and Heather's house, Ryan saw them at the back door through the glass door that was near their kitchen and he ran over to try to stop them from getting inside. But Richie and Larry managed to barely get open the door and Richie reached in with his hand, which was carrying a gun, and he shot Ryan point blank twice in the face. The oh first my God. went in through his the nose fuck? and then out the other side of his nose. So that's the first two bullet holes. And then that bullet traveled back into his head through his left eye into his brain where it got lodged. And along with the bullet, six pieces of his skull that broke off from this bullet went inside of his brain as well. So that's the first three bullet holes. No and wonder the he's like fucked up mentally. Head, hit the side of his head. It did not penetrate into his skull. So the bullet didn't lodge anywhere inside of his brain. However, it did break bullets off. Bullets aren't always piercing, skull. unfortunately, so nor is it guaranteed a headshot will kill Ryan you. That's terrible. Ground, How are you not check him for injuries upon arrest? They managed to I'm the pretty the sure they, they thought that his inside, injuries were Ryan's defensive body, wounds. That's they why into the living room where Heather was they just assumed. On the sofa, and Richie just immediately walked up, put a gun to her head, and fired a single shot. After she had fallen to the ground, the two men stole some things in the house and then fled the scene. They would ultimately get caught, and they're both currently serving life sentences. It's believed oh, Heather died God, instantly from her gunshot wound, but Ryan didn't. At some point, maybe a couple of hours after he was shot, he woke up, but he had severe brain damage, and he wouldn't have known yeah. what was going on. He didn't. He's really fucking happened. brain damage. He saw his girlfriend Heather this lying is some on the couch, shotguns. but he thought she was just sleeping. Well, all depends and on so where you aim. So he too went My to his God. bedroom and he fell asleep. But the next morning, he woke up and he still would have had no idea what was going on. Honestly, spent the day that man's a tank. Work, just kind of wandering around his house with his girlfriend lying dead on the couch. And so after a full day of just kind of mindlessly walking around his house, he went back to bed and then he got up on Christmas day on the 25th and spent another day just kind of walking about his house with his girlfriend who he believed was sleeping, but really she was dead. And so finally the welfare check is called in, the police show up and as soon as they see Ryan, they jumped to conclusions that he must have killed Heather. I mean, that's not dictated the way they treated him. Had they believed he was a victim, uh, that's not a they crazy might have sought medical attention assumption, for but face. But again, jumping to conclusions and assuming he was the killer, they figured that bruise on his face was from the woman fighting back. She had struck him before he had savagely killed her. And so they didn't give him any medical care. Instead, they put him out in the cop car out front of the property, and he sat there with no medical intervention for six hours. And during those six hours, I mean, to be honest, every second that went by, there was irreversible brain damage being caused because oh. he had all this bleeding inside of his head that was causing brain damage. And so the clock was ticking as soon as they found him. Yeah, they should have at least checked hours, the severity no of his. Care and was just getting worse and worse and worse. Wounds. And so finally he goes to the police station. And again, they do not give him any medical care. Instead, they interrogate him for almost two hours, even though he has four bullet holes on his face that apparently no one noticed or no one took seriously. But regardless, he spent those almost two more hours in the interrogation room where every second that's going by, his brain is getting more and more destroyed, irreparably destroyed. And then finally, at the end of the interrogation, Dalton- It's just like, at first himself, glance, you wouldn't think a home invasion happened. You think his it was him that killed his girlfriend sense. as he was He's only one Yeah, place. I would have thought so too. Probably also thought he was in shock of what happened. Yeah. To convict this guy I, I would have thought the same. The holes on his face specifically the hole in his nose 
And that's when he called him forward and he looked at his face and he realized a huge mistake had been made and he called an ambulance. Here is a clip of the <clears> fire department. <throat> yeah, I'm sticking with that. It's not up to them. The you got the paramedics. Yeah, the I also agree that it was paramedics. I the think what they should have done is seen how yeah. deep the wounds yeah. are. Captain, you're not going to believe this one. You're right. I've already heard the story. I can't believe it. This is just my observations that this might be an entrance, this might be an exit, this might be into his eye. And he's acting uh, like he has a serious head injury, which yeah. makes sense. Ryan yeah. was ultimately rushed to the hospital where he would undergo emergency surgery that would save his life but it would come at a great cost. They not only had to remove a large portion of his brain, but they also had to remove both of his eyes. Now, it oh should be noted God. that at least Fuck. one other source says he only had his left eye removed, but regardless, after the surgery, Ryan was no longer independent. He had so much brain damage, he couldn't take care of himself, and so he had to move back in with his parents who became his full-time caretakers. And then 10 years later, Ryan would die from a seizure that was directly connected to the injuries he sustained from that attack and it's connected to the lack of care he received in those first critical eight hours after the police found him. The Phoenix Police Department, after this mishandling of Ryan's case went public, they did an internal investigation, but no one was ever disciplined, at least not publicly. As for Ryan's family, they certainly could have filed a lawsuit against him. Yeah, the they could Police definitely do that. But they chose not to. They said, the only thing we want is our son back, and a lawsuit will not give us that. So that's going to do it, guys. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to make the like button a sandwich of their choosing. But when you make it, mm. make sure you construct it between two very thin, stale rye bread heels. Also, please subscribe to our channel. Okay. So I have a question for you guys. Number one, if you were... If you were the parents... Would you have sued or... I mean, I feel like most people would have, right? Because if there's anything that you need... Healthcare is so expensive, you know? Like, oof. At least care for that. God. But yeah, I agree. Shadow, I understand what you mean. Like, you wouldn't think of home invasion. You think that he killed his girlfriend. I get that. But at the same time, like... <clears throat> Like, you can tell how deep wounds are just by the color. Like, you can tell how deep they are. But also, he was in the house for a long while, too. I would have wanted to have, but I also wouldn't have thought it would have made a real difference in the end. I know. Like, to be honest, seeing how much he had to go through, I don't even... Th this sounds terrible, but, like, even life in prison, I'm like... Like, <clears throat> like, even then, just, there's, there's a sense of, like, cruelty to what he had to deal with. And that's, that's, it's just really sad. But, yeah. I, I am gonna go on to the next story. <clears throat> so, this is the other story that... Salary had suggested to us. It is the story of the Costa Concordia. It is a um, cruise ship, I think. And it is, yeah, it's a cruise ship that apparently had some fucked up things happen to it. So let's check that out. I'm gonna. Transition. That should be the new one. This is a good one. I have not seen this one yet. So let's check it out together, shall we? It's oh, a little loud. Sounds familiar. I don't remember it at all, so... We'll have to see this together. Oh, I thought this was like an ad for the, for the, uh, 
cruise ship. So I was like, oh. Make their way to the lifeboats by themselves. Yeah. Um, it's bad when your own like passengers are bringing themselves to their life lifeboats. Hmm. Honestly, this footage this is, is not only giving me for us. fucking vertigo, up, but it's My pretty harrowing. Jake. I remember on the evening of January 13th, 2012. Jake, oh my God, Shami, can you, can you, um, ship had run aground <laughs> off the coast of Italy. It wasn't I was going to say, can you shout out thick, uh, it's thick brain? I'm going to shout out Jake. <laughs> That would not only change the cruise industry forever, but would become the most infamous ship disaster if you know next who that to is. the Titanic. Today, I wanted to tell really? the incredible and truly unfathomable story of the sinking. That's of what the I Costa told him, and he wanted to kill me. So Costa, which or is Costa fair. Cruise Lines, however you want to pronounce it, is owned by the Carnival Corporation. It was founded in the mid 1800s and eventually became a pretty prominent European cruise line. Bernard, can you put down his um Carnival in his channel so Shami can chat him out, please? Based on the designs already proving very successful oh, shit. for Carnival. Nice. Then began ordering he did it. Based off the general design of Carnival's Conquest class, <clears> just another <clears> nice, 4, Shami, thank you. larger. In 2004, Costa ordered the first ship of its brand new class, named the Costa Concordia. The vessel completed construction and it. entered service for Costa. Oh, on not June quite. 30th, Whoops, sorry. At the cost of five hundred and seventy. Hold on. One second. At the second. time, the ship was the largest in the Costa fleet. It's this one. She was nine hundred and fifty-two feet long, had go. a beam of one hundred and sixteen feet, spanned thirteen public decks, and had a top speed of twenty-three knots. Okay. The Concordia was the new flagship vessel of the Costa fleet, and the company ensured that the ship would be the very best. Oh, quiet on your side. Well, it wasn't here? anything that drastic drastically different than the previous Carnival and Costa vessels, it did feature a massive two-story spa along with four pools. The there ship's center pool featured an outdoor movie screen, and the kids slash family pool would end from a twisting water slide. Below the top decks, Man. the ship would feature five restaurants, I've never been to, bars, I haven't and the been grand in atrium a, um... that soared ten stories. It was oh, a culmination of everything the modern cruise industry How many people had, have been and on really a was ship? the new shining star for the Carnival Corporation. Let me do that. She truly oh, it's was okay. a no modern, worries. enormous cruise ship. The Costa Concordia had 1,502 guest Just cabins my table, and my 601 Sorry crew if that cabins, shook my table. allowing the vessel <laughs> to carry a maximum of 4,890 <clears throat> people. Following the Concordia, Costa ordered another five ships in its class, all being sisters to the Concordia. Captaining the vessel since its 2006 launch was Francesco Schettino, an Italian man who had been working for Costa since 2002. The Concordia began cruises catering to the Italian market, sailing mostly in the Mediterranean. She continued with regular cruises carrying hundreds of thousands of passengers until early 2012, when one January night changed cruising forever. The Costa Concordia was starting its seven-day Mediterranean cruise starting from the point of Keglery on January 11, 2012. After its stop in Sicily, the vessel arrived in Civitavecchia, Italy My wife on, is on Friday her way. the 13th, 2012. By sunset, the Costa Concordia had set I put sail out a, on its I put way out a to pole, Savona. So you guys the official go. course charted took the vessel directly down the center between Italy's mainland and the island of Giglio. However, deviation was made on the official thank route you, to take the vessel thank much you, thank closer you. to the island to perform what is known as a sail by salute. This was a deliberate action to take the ship relatively close offshore to give passengers a unique view of the island and also as a nod to fellow sailors on land. This isn't really a new thing for cruise ships, nor is it new for the Concordia, which had performed this maneuver several times before, even for the island of Giglio. As night falls, the vessel is making its deviation course towards the island of Giglio. On the bridge, deck officers are guiding the ship as Captain Scatino is eating dinner. The officers on the bridge are instructed to keep at least 1,500 feet away from the island shore, as that was the determined safe distance. By 9.40 p.m., the Costa Concordia is moving at 15 knots and is about to make its turn for the island. The captain returns to the bridge along with his mistress. Yeah, I'll talk about that a little later. However, there what is a the miscommunication fuck? between the captain and the captain is wild. what the correct turning <clears throat> course should be. 
Because of the incorrect heading numbers, the turning radius of the ship to sail alongside the island was much wider than it should have been, which brought the colossal ship 659 meters closer to the shore than it was supposed to be. The Concordia is immediately ordered by the captain to turn 20 degrees to the right. Seconds later, at 9.44 p.m., the port side of the ship collides with underwater rocks, creating a 60-meter gash in the hull, breaching but several they're... watertight compartments. They're close the to the shore, though, right? The immediately lost power in its generators and full propulsion from its two engines. Panic ensued in the main dining rooms where passengers had been eating as the ship's emergency generators kicked Hi, in. Hi, Secret By Ducky. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. the situation had been under control and that technicians were working Mom's on fixing wife. the wife. Well, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be able to speak with you then. Oh, I should look at the bow. Three Nas, huh? Three Nas. However, moments later, the bridge was informed that three compartments had been breached. Yeah, you're no longer a secret ducky. Electrical panel. This was communicated to Costa Cruise Line's crisis center via Captain Scatino minutes later. By 10.07 <clears> p.m., open to the, public, the harbor ducky. contacts the Concordia. However, the ship claims that the situation <laughs> is only a blackout and that they have the situation Exposed under control. Ducky. During this time, the deputy chief engineer meets with the officers on the bridge to inform them that the flooding has appeared to reach compartments 4, 5, 6, and 7. At this oh point, the ship is starting to list as water fills the watertight compartments yeah. and the passengers are making their way down to deck four where the lifeboats are located themselves three nas huh that's fair Captain Scatino did make the decision Damn. to let the ship drift into shallow water, where at worst case, the vessel would rest on the seabed. She just However, lies to everyone? Failed, the flooding worsened, as did the oh, ship's is tilting. Listing. Please return to your room. Even at this rooms. time, not the captain's I, right? or Costa Cruise Lines I mean, okay, to be fair, though. Help. Okay. However, as the situation below let me, decks let me, worsened, Let me ask you guys a question, okay? Personally, having people go to their rooms is not a bad idea, Right? Because if you think about it, what if people are panicking and the boat is tilting already? You do not want hundreds, thousands of like weight on one side of the ship, right? You would want it to be equalized so then you can actually right the ship up again. However, if that at that point, though, you have to realize to yourself, okay, well, if this ship is about to for sure sink, maybe it's best to just not <laughs> like go away yeah but i mean yeah i don't uh, number one yeah don't you don't want people running around all over the place freaking out but also for the buoyancy of the ship itself like people not people evening it out throughout a ship that makes sense i think i'd rather be up on deck to be honest i agree but if you're gonna be up on deck then like spread out a little bit but like how are you gonna have that many people follow your orders when they're freaking out already i don't know just just a thought food for thought cruise and for as thought passengers climbed into light boats themselves <clears throat> finally at 10 35 p.m the bridge calls for an abandoned ship and the emergency alarm is sounded. If it's already taking there that much water from the gap, I don't think people will weigh in. Yeah, exactly. people aboard the Costa Concordia. By now, all That's the what I mean by like their way down to deck you should also be able to make the idea one or the the decision. Okay, this is a lost PM, cause. The ship is now you know? listing on its starboard side more than 25 degrees. By this point, any hope of the vessel being saved was gone, and as lightboats continued to launch, <clears> the list continued to worsen. By now, the majority I can't decide of the if it's better to be in my room company and ignorant or out on the deck Captain seeing what's happened. I would definitely be deck. The Costa because you ha have at least a as safety net of being four, able to just jump, of the ship even if you're taking the, like, to the, point the chance. Boats being launched from the port side was impossible. 80 people remained on the ship ascending down the side of the hull by a rope ladder where rescue boats by the Coast Guard were waiting. 
Captain Scatino, however, had already returned to the shore where the Coast Guard began a demanding him to return to the vessel. fucking course he did. Why are captains such a pe pieces of shit? I swear to God. This is the second time. I know, look at it. The fo video footage is crazy. Yeah. Luckily they were so close. I agree. That's why I was like, when they first said, oh, they hit rocks from being too close. I'm like, oh, well, if they're really close to the shore, hopefully people can just, like, jump. Or be in lifeboats and leave. I'm recording this conversation. <gasps> It's literally on its. It's literally on its side, my dude. Damn, this Coast Guard's pissed, and I would be too. Save yourself. Oh. Oh. oh my god The Coast Guard continued to rescue people still clinging to God the side of the damn. Ship, as most residents living on the he island that. welcome the stranded passengers <laughs> into their homes. Because of the okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, but this is already better than Sewol. This is already better than Sewol. Is it not? Is it not? Because the Coast Guard there, they were so they were so slow. They didn't even do anything. The people who who mainly survived were the um not the Coast Guard, the fishing boats. The local fishing boats had to save the people because the Coast Guards wouldn't. Oh my God! Yeah, exactly. I wish um those kids would have this. Yeah, because clearly the Coast Guard are more concerned and actually care more about the people who are in this cruise ship that's sinking and not only that but they're closer to the shore than like everybody in the sable situation this in the sable situation they're in the middle of the ocean they couldn't even do anything they couldn't run imagine the different outcome would have happened with that shipwreck I know so many actual kids would have lived and that makes me so sad but dude man it's just like so many people just failed in their job both the captain in the and say well and also the coast guard and say well man no wonder they just had no no faith in the government whatsoever afterwards I don't blame them I don't blame them to shore, the vessel rested on the shoreline rocks at around an 80 degree angle, with its starboard side completely submerged. By 6.17 a.m., rescue operations concluded, and the rising sun revealed the true extent of the disaster. Since the vessel partially capsized on its starboard side, the gaping oh, hole on the port side showed just how severe the impact was. Daylight also revealed that three of the ship's port side lifeboats were never able to be launched, which is why so many people were left aboard the ship. They think it's glamorous and high honor until sh shit hits the fan and they're actually responsible. For yeah, exactly. 27 of whom had been passengers and five being crew members, almost all of which had been trapped below as water rushed into the ship. Truly, I can't even begin to imagine the horror it would have been like. Bodies were recovered mostly on the lower decks, indicating people were trapped inside the vessel as it capsized. In the atrium elevators, four bodies had been discovered trapped inside, as well as another nine bodies trapped in two other elevators. Oh my god. 
Soon what after the wreck, what's the Carnival kill count and their insurance on company had deemed the vessel a total loss <clears throat> as damages had exceeded $500 million. Oil and fuel had been extracted million? as salvage crews began working on removing the wreck. However, removing a 114,000-ton half-submerged cruise ship proved to be a pretty daunting task. The plan was to place a steel structure under the Concordia and turn it upright. Massive buoyancy tanks were welded to the ship's port side, and on September 16, 2013, the Costa Concordia was turned upright, resting on the underwater platform. Turning the vessel upright showed just how unbelievably heavy the ship was as it rested on its side, completely the crushing elevator, sections so they're of the ship's trying to escape. steel yeah. balconies. Uprighting yeah. the vessel also allowed pictures to be taken inside, take... showcasing the true extent of the damage. It's oh so surreal God. to see a modern cruise ship have its interior slowly decay from being abandoned and untouched. Buoyancy tanks Either were fitted to the no ship's other side, the starboard side, worry. and the Concordia yeah. was slowly lifted off its platform, now freely floating. And on July 14th, the vessel was towed on its final voyage to the Italian port of Genoa, where the ship was completely gutted. Scrapping began by cutting sections of the ship apart, and by July of 2017, the Costa Concordia had been completely dismantled and sold for scrap metal. The total cost of the salvage operation was $1.2 billion. Following the disaster, the search to find who was responsible concluded with six arrests and prosecutions. Several of the Concordia's um, first the officers captain? were given Herself? jail sentences, most being under two years. Costa Cruise Line's under? crisis director, who Captain Scatino had been so they just didn't have any the event, or, um, had been given the longest sentence of the five, with two years um, experience. and months. As for Captain Francesco Scatino himself, well, his story was, well, sketchy to say the least. He claimed that during the ordeal, he had been coordinating the rescue when he had slipped and stumbled into a lifeboat due to the listing of the ship. Oh a video no! Later emerged of what appeared to be Captain Oh Scatino no! I accidentally fell into the, the life on deck oh, waiting to board no. a lifeboat. Though he claimed that this oh, was not no. him. It was also later revealed that he had been I'm having safe. an affair with a oh, woman that no. he brought aboard the Concordia with no tickets. She, by the way, like I said earlier, was taken to the bridge of the vessel when all of this happened. However, he assured that she did not affect the disaster. He also claimed that he should not be responsible for the deaths of the 32 people aboard, as they were not killed as a result of the initial impact, and instead by the sinking. The only what? good thing Captain Scatino did was make the but, decision to deliberately ground the ship so it wouldn't fully sink. Do you not if understand? If sank okay. about 700 feet where it eventually did, the entire vessel would have likely went under, and it's possible that many more people would have been killed. Okay. Scatino was charged for manslaughter, causing shipwreck, and abandoning passengers. Causing shipwreck, yes. Sentence, which he is currently serving. The Carnival Corporation Wait. certainly felt the final presidential Sorry, sentence, which he is currently in abandoning passengers. He was given a 16-year jail. 16 years? No. Only 16 years? Okay. Sentence, which he is currently serving. The Carnival Corporation certainly years. felt the financial impact of the disaster. In their 2012 annual what? report, they claim that as a direct result of the Costa Concordia Damn, incident, anything's happened the company in, had in lost $410 Italy, million huh? dollars in declined revenue. Though 2012 was not a great year for Carnival anything's at all, with happening. the addition of they the let Carnival power failure in the same year. Carnival offered each of the Concordia survivors $13,000, which included the refund of their crews. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> Honestly, I just think the whole situation is truly unbelievable. I don't really like Carnival at all, and I think I have a fair reason to. The company and its subsidiaries have done so many shady things, and the safety features it had implemented on the Concordia, well, sucked. The fact that a modern cruise ship owned by the largest cruise line in the world could have something like this happen is unfathomable. The Are they still Concordia around? Was only five Carnival? Years old. It cost five hundred and seventy million dollars. Or did they go bankrupt? Which was from all this put to waste thing. just a few years later. The disaster in its entirety ended up costing around two billion dollars. Carnival is huge. Costa yeah, has I remember now been building seeing new ships once again. And in Carnival's defense, of, uh, they did change ads. CEOs, and they have been focusing a lot more on building back their safety reputation, which to be fair, I can appreciate. It really is hard to believe though that 100 years after the Titanic sank, off the coast of a small Italian island, human error once again brought There's down what we thought mm. was an unsinkable vessel 
the Costa Concordia. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter. In yeah, so that was the story of Costa Concordia. What an unbelievable captain, though. That is crazy. Have we not learned by now that no vessel is truly unsinkable? True. It is. It's just... I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, all right, so <clears throat> I have another question though. Would you? Okay, let's say, for example, you go on um, you've never been on a cruise ship before. And let's say you do want to be on one, okay? Just just hypothetically, right? You want to you want to be part uh you want to go on vacation on a cruise ship. But because if you remember, the Costa Concordia was gutted, right? So it's probably gutted for parts that would end up being used in other cruise ships later. If you found out that it was using a part that came from Costa Concordia, would you still go on that trip? Legitimately? No. Absolutely not. Like, let's, let's, I mean, Shadow, I know that you, you don't even want to be on a cruise ship. Let's say, I don't know, there was a car. I don't know, there was a very famous car crash or something. And they're like, oh yeah, we scrapped that car for parts. And now we've repaired your car with the parts that were good from that that car would you still buy the car or would you still use the car um a part is fine it would bother me if they repaired the ship itself and sent it back out <clears throat> yeah i mean it's kind of scary though right i think i'd be like ghost gonna come out and haunt me for even thinking about being on this ship i don't know <laughs> I don't know. Um. Okay. Yeah, that's haunted as fuck. <laughs> I feel like reusing a part in something like that just sounds like bad. So, I don't know. Whether it's superstition something it's possibly damaged because it looks good doesn't mean it is good. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with you, Shadow. Uh, maybe it's superstition, but I'm just like... Ugh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Even using a part, it's just like, ugh, just throw it away, melt it down, do something. I don't know. The same boat. The same boat. Oh, God. You guys, come on. <laughs> next story. Next story. I gotta grab what, what um Shemi sent me, though. <clears throat> Oh, okay. So I have not seen this either. So I'm going to read this together. Am I the asshole? If you're new to this, hold on. Let me go ahead and turn this on first. If you're new to this, um, <clears throat> it is now a new rule that we, we are going to be re um, reading Am I the Asshole posts and do a poll. Um between stories to kind of just a little break right so let's go ahead and read this <clears throat> am i the asshole for not allowing my parents to sleep in the same bed i think you know where this is going but there's no definitive answer on who's who's in the wrong also for simplicity's sake i'll be saying parents but it is my mother and my stepfather my mother and stepdad have been together since i was little so I am a 25 year old woman with two older siblings, both male. When we were growing up, we were never allowed girlfriends or boyfriends to sleep the night, which I felt was fair enough. When my brothers got to be, got to be about 16, however, their girlfriends were allowed to sleep to spend nights, but they had to sleep in the spare bedroom. Again, fair. That makes sense to me. <clears throat> I was always somewhat of a tomboy, so as you can imagine, Teenage boys did not did not show much interest in me romantically. Fucking how? 
Honestly, I feel like I feel like tomboys are like huge for guys, but whatever. Um, so I didn't get my first boyfriend until I was already 18. My parents wouldn't allow him to spend the night at all, despite us both being over 18. I wouldn't have minded if my brothers have held held to that standard, but I felt as if they were they were favored over me. It isn't even because they disliked my boyfriend at the time either. Everyone seemed to love him. That relationship didn't last more than six-ish months, so I dropped it after a while. I got with my now fiancé when I was 22, and we've been engaged for a year. We're getting married in only a few months. Still, just like every time before, my parents wouldn't allow him to spend the nights until a few moments, a few months after we got engaged, after I brought it up with them. It wasn't a conflict, but they knew I was irritated and allowed him to start using the spare room. We moved in together not long after, so it doesn't really didn't really matter. <clears throat> now I may be an asshole. My mother asked about wedding planning, the first time she even contacted me since the move. And I told her I still had a lot to sort out, but I was getting through it, and she basically insisted on coming up to me and having a week of mother-daughter bonding time, where she could help me with wedding planning. <clears throat> my fiancé isn't a very social person, and is happy to be the money bags behind my wedding decisions. Hee <laughs> hee. Hee hee. Jeez. Mm, guys, catch me up. I have to do some housework. No worries, Ellie. Enjoy your housework as much as you can. Um, uh, he just likes to give little opinions and I'm sure, I'm sure to include them when he does. My parents arrived and we spent the first day going out to dinner. I'd like to point out that the two aren't married and are steadfast that they won't be getting married again. Both of them divorced already, my stepdad twice. So as the night was slowing down, they asked to be shown to their room. I directed my mother to one guest room bedroom and my stepfather to another. We have a three bedroom with no kids, yet we have the space. My mother said that there's plenty of room in one of them both and instructed my stepdad to come in with her. I explained that, just like she told me, it was my house and I didn't want them sharing a bed in my house. I basically repeated word for word what she would tell me when I'd complain about my brothers getting better treatment than me when, I, when it came to their partner. I told her that actually they were in the same- What the fuck? Sorry, I must have pressed that. Um, I told her that actually we were in the same position I was because neither of us were married. She tried saying it was different because they've been together for almost 20 years. I told them that it didn't matter because this is my house and my decision is final, just like how my mother would shut down any discussions about it back then. I was sure to mention how my brothers were allowed their partners, and I wasn't, but she claimed I was making it up. They stayed the night and left for home the next day, which I preferred because I was happy wedding planning on my own, and I haven't heard from them since. My grandmother has called to tell me off for it though, so I'm wondering if I am in the wrong. Am I the asshole? <clears throat> oh, I'm done. I just got back. Welcome back. Uh, edit, a lot of people are confused. At my mother's house, we were not allowed to ever sleep in the same bed. Ever. Only months after we got engaged, my, mo my mother allowed him to sleep in the spare room. Also, I said, I, didn't, I don't mind the rules they have. It's their home, but it was a double standard for me. I had to wait until 25 to have my fi fiancé stay at my house while my brothers could have whoever they wanted from 16. They were engaged by the time they let him. I was no longer I was no longer a child, and it's not as if I've been holding on to resentment for years after it stopped, as some misguided people claim. It was months it was months it was months it ended. Also, my intention was never to make them sleep the whole week separately. It was initially a now the power is in my hands. Do you see the error of your ways? If they did, they could have moved on and laughed about it, and they would have slept in the same bed. Because I didn't and doubled down and started getting aggressive with me, claiming I was making things up, I stuck to it. I know I am being assholey, but am I the the asshole in the situation I'm in? Hmm. So, what do you guys think? 
Um, okay, taste of your own me her own medicine. Okay, so clearly Shammy thinks not the asshole. But let me start the poll first <clears throat> before we get crazy. Um, okay. Yes, the asshole. Not the asshole. And everyone's the asshole. Here you go. I'm gonna put it on a let me put on a five minute. Oh. It doesn't meet guidelines. Is OP the the butt? Here you go. Okay. Oh my god, Ducky and I lost our jobs at the same time. Thanks, economy. And we had to move in with my parents after living together for years. We literally had to explain why we should be able to be in the same room. <laughs> okay, yeah. Holds hands five feet apart only. Am I right? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, some say it's petty to do this. I say I was raised to do that. No questions asked. Therefore, I expect the same of family members. No questions asked. Uh, okay. Petty but not asshole. Yes. Not the not the asshole. Mom used to get cagey about me and Bree the same way when he'd come over at the very beginning of our relationship. I see. So <clears throat> the way I feel about it is I I I agree with Shammy where where she says Petty? Petty, sure. But not the asshole. And I agree with that. Because I don't know what it is with, like, people thinking that men and women can't be friends. You know? Like, number one with that. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is not because, oh, it's, like, it's relevant. To that, but it's just that, like... That men and women just can't keep their hands off of each other. And they can't handle themselves around each other. <laughs> so it's just like, it's the same thing here. Even if they're in a relationship, just because they're sharing a bed doesn't mean they're going to fuck. Like, just saying. Agreed. It's a little petty, but having having been in this situation, I do the same. Yeah. They'd just be like, I'm sorry, but this is my house. <clears throat> we're sharing a blanket watching a movie and she got upset we're watching a movie mom <laughs> like, can you be quiet you're kind of you, you're, you're talking over the best part I think it's funny and barely petty to be honest I'm so tired of the double standard parents think oh no I don't want my dog you know what I never thought about that I totally never thought about that I totally didn't I totally forgot that there was a double standard I don't understand the double standard about men getting women but women can't get men like don't you want your daughter to also be hot I don't know like like being able to to pull is not a bad thing as being a woman like you should be able to <clears throat> no, it's true. The suns can go out. Yeah, exactly. If anything, rather I was home than potentially doing something stupid outside. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Uh, oh, though my parents didn't really care as long as I didn't get the girl pregnant early in high school. It was all good. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. Like, why is it that, like, guys get... Oh, you, you have this girl on you. Oh, you had sex. Like, good job. Nice job, son. Oh, my God. But it's just like, when a girl has sex, it's just like, what? That's crazy. You shouldn't be doing that. What is that? It's true. Go forth and be hot, my children. Honestly, yeah. Like, wouldn't you want your kids to be sex before marriage? Oh my gosh. And the thing, too, is just like, if, if OP's brothers legitimately were also just like, oh yeah, you can 
you can sleep in the same room, but she can't sleep. She can't sleep in the same room as her fiance. Like, that's really kind of crazy, I think. But what do I know? I'm just an adult woman. Um, <laughs> finance? I love the prote I hate the protective father trope. It's creepy. It can be creepy. I can see that. <clears throat> I understand why you would want to be protective. But I feel like you want to be protective of your kids because you don't want anything to be happen to them. But But I mean, the best protection in my opinion is <clears throat> is education. Educate your child about safe sex. Educate them about birth control. Condoms. Whatever it is. <clears throat> and that'll help. But yeah. Alright, so um, poll has ended. It's crazy, but it's a landslide if not the asshole. <laughs> um, exactly. It goes down a different path of the whole father-daughter thing. Parents are hypocrites sometimes and it drives me nuts. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Um, but shall we, now that we're finished with our Am I the Asshole reading, <clears throat> how long is this one? Let me see. 14 minutes? Not, the, not that bad. This one's long, though. If you guys stay after the Rotten Mango stream, then number one, you guys are amazing. Number two, I'll probably read another Am I the Asshole. Let me... Let's do this one, I guess. This one seems popular, but we'll, we'll read that one later, huh? Glad we liked this one. I thought it was funny. I'll join you after this short one. Sure. You can join me for the Rotten Mango one. All right. A stretch redeem. Oh, jeez. How long is this true, true crime story? This one is only about 15 minutes for the 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 other um cruise ship one but the rotten mango one that one is lasting that one's like an hour long actually probably a little bit less because there might be ads and stuff like that but <clears throat> generally about 45 to an hour all right earlier you had missed coastal concordia to catch you up okay might have to drop towards the end right in an hour oh Okay, no worries. No worries. We'll try to fit. Um, you'll you'll might catch most of it then. Ship go Burke is incompetent sailor. Honestly, yeah. Ship go Burke is incompetent and scared coward fucking captain who won't do his job. <laughs> All right, when here we go. You think of everything that could go wrong on a cruise liner. I bet being asked to poop in a biohazard bag falls <laughs> pretty low on that list. But for more than 3,000 passengers aboard the Carnival Triumph, that became a daily reality. Feces covered walls, food fights, and a sprawling tent city on the decks earned the cruise its infamous name, the Poop Cruise from Hell. I remember this. The Triumph. This Billed was like as the right pride of the after Carnival Group, the length of the three pandemic? football fields. Boasts 13 decks with four swimming pools, seven whirlpools, and a massive casino floor. On board Carnival's fun ship, expectations were high. Sadly, this ill fated trip would make memories for very different reasons. The Triumph set sail from Galveston, Texas, for the Gulf of Mexico on Thursday, February 7, 2013. Conveniently what was fell to be into a four oh, day cruise. Yeah. Oh, oh the captain. It was yeah. all plain sailing <clears throat> with late night parties, onboard entertainment, great weather, I saw and this. mouth this is not yeah, the poop the cruise. Guests. The Hi, highlight of the Jake. Cruise Hi, Jake. was set to be a stop in Cozumel. We shouted Mexico. you out earlier, but. Here, passengers could disembark. Uh, another carnival frolic boat. in Azure waters, <laughs> yes. shop to their heart's delight, oh, and wrong. return <laughs> for a night of festive on board activities. Oh, my God, the story. Hi, in reality, Dan, how are you? After um, departing Jenny, Cozumel you for the return trip to Galveston, Gian the cruise. Oh, my God, the story reminds me of what I saw on Twitter talking about a plane that apparently had to turn around because a passenger. Ew, oh, my God. Terrible. In the early hours of Sunday, February 10th, a fire alarm echoed through the ship, 
with the Alpha Team call booming over the PA system shortly after 5.28 a.m. The Alpha Team announcement, the code used for a fire emergency aboard Carnival vessels, left many holiday makers panicked. Guests on the first and second decks opened their doors to find smoke-filled hallways. Oh Chaos God, broke what? out, with passengers there scrambling for life jackets and frantically searching for friends and loved ones. <clears throat> on the top deck, black smoke was billowing from the smokestack. The Alpha Team alert led to panic among passengers, with some heading to evacuation stations Thank once you, they Shemi. heard Thanks no further for information for or Jan. instructions. I'm doing well. Hope your While day the has been going well so far. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it's been on and off, but of the fire. this has made me feel better, for sure. <laughs> Why do they always say things are under control? God. Soon after the initial announcement, clearly. the ship's lights flickered. I guess it lost saying, what are, you, what are you supposed to say? Except for the Everything is lights. not under control. The Freak blaze, out. <laughs> which was contained in the engine room through an automatic fire suppression yeah, system, like was reportedly quelled by 6.08 a.m. Yeah, never stay the in your room. had knocked out most of the ship's power and disabled the propulsion system. To sleep in the, the deck. 3,143 passengers on the deck. and close to 1,100 staff stranded in the Gulf of Mexico. But there was a plan. Two Start tugboats set course now. for the stricken vessel to tow it to the nearest port of Progreso, Mexico. Jake, is that a. Passengers breathed a sigh of relief and started taking off their life That's a vests, pun for sure. Talking by Tuesday, they were told. Little did they know, another four days would pass before anyone set foot on land again. By mid-morning on Sunday, passengers realized it wasn't just the propulsion system that died. The air conditioning, running water, elevators, and, worst of all, the septic system had also failed. Oh, God. That's when the cruise director delivered a message that left passengers horrified. We're going to deliver some red bags that to your cabins, hilarious. to the bathrooms, if you can. That if you need to hilarious. do a, you know, a number I'm two, you need a poop. It. Please do it in the red bag and drop it off in the bins, in the corridors. And if you need to do a number one, that's a wee. Please do it in the shower. Thank you, folks. That's a wee. A wee. <laughs> this announcement came no, when toilets oh, were for already sure. clogged due to lack of Especially flushing facilities in the, in the middle private cabins of, um, and public restrooms. The now infamous red poop bags were just too oh, much geez. to bear for many passengers. <clears throat> yes, it is. I'm not proud of it. At least you know. At least you know. We were in shock. We were like, um, I'm not using a red bag. The Sounds like they have a wee problem. Stop. The Triumph stabilizers Stop also took a hit doing? from the fire, causing the vessel to list heavily. Passengers reported clutching walls to keep their balance. Is this because I was out of pocket in your all, stream? That's fair. Toilets overflowed and spilled into halls, <laughs> seeping through walls to floors um, each time the ship tilted with the wind. One more, and that's Before a ban. Before long, images emerged of sewage sodden carpets, bins lined with red bags, and in some cases, erupting toilets. <gasps> Depending no. on where the Yuck. drains and the bathroom Gross. were, okay. water and fecal matter came back up, pooling in there and overflowing into the cabins. With temperatures soaring and the foul stench of human waste Yeah, I was going to say, the if they're in decks, the middle many of, guests dragged like, their mattresses the to outside sea, decks, wherever you'd like, you know, wherever you're... And sweltering heat. <clears throat> wherever you're, like, trying to, react, to go to, helicopters Costa Rica, out to the wherever... Ship. Could just be Soon, worse. Soon, images of what would become known as Tent City flooded news channels as passengers started Oops. using bed sheets, towels, and rope to construct makeshift accommodations on the tanning deck. In a bold attempt to quell the passengers' mounting frustrations, Carnival decided to host an open bar, offering free beer and wine after the fire. What? The bar uh, service was to run from afternoon until midnight, but turned <clears> out <throat> to be a terrible decision. With Dude. drinks flowing freely, several passengers became obnoxious and intoxicated, lobbing objects into the water and messing up the restrooms. By Tuesday morning, what when both tugboats finally arrived, the vessel had drifted more than 90 miles north, meaning that Progresso was no longer the yeah. closest port. Where are they the going to throw up? The decision was made to tow the 102,000 huh? ton behemoth to Mobile, Alabama, adding another two days to their journey. 
On the bright side, returning to the U.S. would ease re-entry for the 900 passengers traveling without passports. Imagine the, However, that's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, where are you going to vomit if you're Rachel like, Alderette, you need to vomit? Urgently requiring dialysis became the first of only two people evacuated by the Coast Guard. They uh, got the Coast Guards and transferred me to another another boat, another ship, sent me to Cozumel to do dialysis on Tuesday. It was hard. It was scary. It was, oh my God. You know, it was just scary the way they put me down. They can't uh, they do in, that in to everyone. I guess there's and, a lot. Um, the Coast Guard said that don't worry. There are about a lot it, of people, so I guess and, they can't. And you know, they were going to hold me back, and they did. Never ever they, they no. me to the bigger boat. Yeah, and, that's fair. That is very you know. fair. The following day, a second passenger was taken off the ship because of a pre-existing medical condition. Both were moved to other Carnival ships that had diverted their courses to assist with the rescue mission. Passengers commended the crew for doing everything they could to meet the travelers' needs, but that the toilet situation had been trying at best. Now that is the problem with the boat, is that the toilets have not worked and they ended up having to issue us these bio, we call them the red bags, and um, that is what's been used almost exclusively for the first two days after the fire. Conditions on board Those are gross. rapidly deteriorated Those during that time. <laughs> and food was reportedly running out. Dwindling food supplies forced passengers to queue for hours for cold onion and cucumber sandwiches. One passenger described scenes reminiscent of the Hunger Games as fights erupted over dwindling provisions. And they would gripe at you or other people would practically cuss you out because you would have multiples, but you're trying to get for your whole cabin, so everybody wasn't standing in line. Three other carnival liners, of course Elation, you're not be Conquest, and Legend, like, performed impressive maneuvers to drop <clears> off <throat> provisions and supplies you know, to the weary they're passengers. They're not going to pay Transfers attention and be like, oh, by we're only going to take as one. Knots and a oh, sea no. swell of up to six feet. Yeah, I'm onion and cucumber the tugboats, sandwiches. Yeah. Clearly lacking the muscle to pull a ship of triumph size. What if you're just pregnant or something? I thought about that. Only pace of about five miles per hour. Naturally, it didn't help that I'm the tow line up. I need snapped an several times during the process. Major news networks reported on Triumph's arduous journey to Mobile with around-the-clock coverage would too. of the so-called like, um, floating petri dish. I suddenly have on um, Wednesday, February 13th, a terrible disease Tent right City now. Had to be dismantled to make way for Please, an incoming get chopper me out of delivering here. much needed supplies and equipment. By Thursday, the mood aboard seemed oh to get a little lighter after the food drop and the arrival of a generator that promised the luxury of hot meals. By this time, sanitary yes. facilities were restored to parts of the ship, and passengers had access to power generators to charge their cell phones. That's crazy. For many passengers, staying in contact with loved ones had been a battle. We spent the past two days, about four to five hours a day, charging our phone so we can at least have the opportunity to talk. The only time we get cell reception is Dude, one of solar the other power would be sick right now. So we've all been I have the rarest disease, you know, one that you've never heard of, that sound, but sounds believable. That's the one. Yep. To try to I've got I'm tryptophobia. Sure I gotta go. In Mobile, worried family and friends gathered at the port anxiously awaiting the first glimpses of the triumph and their loved ones. She said it was terrible. I've got cruisophobia. Said, Mama, when everybody get off this bus, everyone's probably going to have to have a little psychological help. The triumph was the <laughs> largest cruise ship you ever all need to dock therapy. in Mobile. All its of final you. <laughs> leg into the port required more than six <clears throat> grueling hours of careful nighttime maneuvering as four tugboats ushered it up a 30-mile ship channel across the shallow bay. The a passengers shower, yep, finally so started true. disembarking a a at about 10 p.m. Yes. on Thursday. Carnival CEO Gary Cahill was bag among the anywhere many anywhere near waiting me? at the oh. port. He thanked the crew on board the vessel for their tireless efforts to keep the passengers comfortable <laughs> and apologized to everyone for the situation. And I'd like to reiterate the apology I made earlier. I know the conditions on board were very poor. I know it was very difficult. And I want to apologize again for subjecting our guests to that. We pride ourselves in providing our guests with a great vacation experience. And clearly, we failed in this particular case. But there was still more trouble mm. in store for the passengers. In the carnival ticket's small print, the cruise line added a protection clause 
if the performance of the proposed voyage is hindered or prevented by breakdown of the vessel. Carnival may cancel the proposed voyage without what? liability to refund passage money or fares no paid in advance. No way. Despite this, each passenger received $500, a free flight home, a full refund for their trip, and reimbursed most expenses on board as well oh, they, as a so they full did it credit anyway. for another cruise. This didn't stop passengers from filing a slew of lawsuits within hours of reaching land. However, their chances of claiming compensation were slim to none unless they suffered a personal injury. Carnival <laughs> ended up awarding $118,500 in damages to 27 passengers for doctors and hospital costs related to the ill-fated cruise. But the ship's woes continued. While it was moored for repairs in Mobile, the vessel broke free drifting across the Mobile River and colliding with a tethered dredge. What? A responding towboat became pinned between the cruise ship and the dredge. Tragically, one person died and another was injured. As for the fire's cause, Carnival asserted that a fuel leak in the engine room sparked the blaze, but many feel that negligence was the real cause of the blaze. In just two years, the group reported nine incidents involving fuel leaks linked to flexible fuel lines. In January 2013, Carnival gave ships two months to Very install poor. spray I repeat shields the apology for all diesel I made engines earlier. using flexible lines. Very poor. However, the Triumph the failed to shield the, the hose that wound it was. up causing the was infamous say only $500? in February. It's true. It was found bucks is that the fuel lot. hose that caused the fire was curse located ship. underneath the deck plate. That is a curse ship. This is would the be parts thing I was talking to you about. The parts of thing. Of course, it turned out not to be sufficient as the engine room fire broke out as a direct result of the unshielded fuel line. In addition to fixing the fire damage, Carnival added new technical features to prevent a sequel. They spent $115 million on cleaning, repairing, and upgrading the ship before it resumed service four months later. No. In 2019, uh... after another $200 million overhaul, the ship was renamed Sunrise and continues to offer passengers everything you could ever need on a cruising holiday. Fingers crossed, red biohazard bags kind and of, onboard uh... activities like Survivor or Hunger Games are <clears> not <throat> on the list of fun activities offered. Another reason Watch this I'm not episode going to cruise ships, yeah. You found this video Damn parts, hell yeah. Please add a like and leave a comment they if you want to support it? the channel. He did. This was the whole thing that we were talking about before, where we're like... You know, it's different for taking parts from a ship that's that you know that got into an accident, like um, <clears throat> like the last story that we we listened to. But now they actually took the entire ship and they said, "Well, fuck it." <laughs> Are you ready for the prequel, though? The pre the prequel. There's a prequel. Oh my God. Oh, I totally forgot to change the um the name. Sorry. Whoops. I'll do it for this one. I promise. Here you go. For the next one. Here you go. Here's the next one. Oh my gosh. It is too long. When did you get in here? It's too long. What am I gonna do about that? Oh, not do that. Okay. How about I just put it on the top here? Sure, you, you guys should be able to see that. Here. Here we are. So, we've got this story last. This is the last one. How long have I been streaming? Almost two hours. I'm gonna take a drink. Hold on. As this one is a this one's a long one, so yeah. When I saw <laughs> Shadow, when I saw this one, I'm like, I've kind I kind of have to watch this. One. <laughs> I I've actually seen like. This 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 particular video recommended to me on my recommendations for a while, but I thought to myself, I really want to keep this for stream. So you're lurking, no worries. 
Of course. Thanks for joining, Jian. Hopefully, groceries will go pretty quickly and painless. Unless you like, um, unless you like getting groceries. I know Shami likes getting groceries, so who knows? Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys like that one. That one was crazy. Uh, I can't believe they they decided to. I mean, nobody. I, I don't want to say nobody. That there was that one person who um who passed away when this cru the cruise ship went rogue essentially. But <clears throat> am I good to hop on? Of course. Do you have permissions, right? No, you're you're an admin, so you're good. You are all good. You are all good. Send me a wig for movie night. Do y'all want to help me with the other thing? Wonder our sales. Burner. Burner, are you still here? Oh my god. He's probably no. He's he's napping right now. He probably has me in the background or something. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We have we have we have anime night soon. Uh yes, you should have the ability to get in. Oh. There you are. Oh my gosh. Let me. I didn't want to just barge in. I wanted to like, you know. <laughs> is Shami is Shami um is she good? Good in volume. Hello, do I sound good? Too loud, too soft. Let me know. Let me know. Hi, Wumpkin. I still say your name is so cute. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, good, 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 good. Sweet. Excellent. This has been a great stream. I've been enjoying it. It's been fun. Good. I'm glad. Good. I've been having fun too. Start of this um, this little one here. What what are we going on in the apiary cruise? That's my question. <laughs> um, never according to this. That's gonna have an audience of zero, like no guests <laughs> whatsoever. I'm going to be the captain. Nobody's going to I'm going to get I'm going to be the captain. I'll be on shore. Have fun. <laughs> Hi guys. We've been trapped on this boat for 3 days. Just thought I'd stream. <laughs> just just thought I'd stream our 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 misery. Here's your here's your bio bag. It's red. No, it's yellow. It's yellow. Here's your bio bag. If you have to number 1, that's a wee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she has a like she had clarify. to clarify by explaining that. That was actually pretty fun. It was very British. Very British of her. Was that British? I, I don't know why I thought it was Australian. It could be both. They kind of... They share some words. I know. Yes, yes they do. But yeah, are you ready for the the next one? I am, if you don't mind streaming it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and while I'm setting that up, do you want to give an introduction to yourself, just in case? Just absolutely. In case. Hi, everybody. I'm Shammy. Um, I show up on June streams a lot. Um, as we like to say, this is basically how we would hang out. We just happen to be streaming it. <laughs> yeah, I um, hang out the, like this all the time, just normally. It, yeah, literally. So I'm um, happy to be here as always. Uh, you can find me in chat if I'm not on stream. <laughs> Usually I try my best to make it. Uh, sometimes life happens, but you know. Uh, oh, she's like literally on vacation. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell her. Get on my stream. You're on vacation. <laughs> that too. <laughs> like, um, go on vacation. Yeah. Stop. Stop talking to me right now. Go on vacation. Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Go touch well, grass. I've done, I've done my grass touching, and here I am. <laughs> she no, did do her that. grass touching. How was your yeah. vacation, by the way? Did you enjoy oh, it? Oh, so good. It was so good. Work was a bit of a struggle today. I'm not gonna lie, but um, it's funny. I kind of have a little story. If it's okay, if I tell it, it's a quick one. Please do. Um, so, um, I work at a place of education. <laughs> And uh, as, as a preschool, you know, understandable. Yeah, yes, yes, a kindergarten. No kidding. Mm. <laughs> and, um, Sometimes I feel that way, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is the first week of school. And so I was thinking about last night and I was like, oh, oh God, like getting to work is going to be hell. Like, Gosh, it's sure literally, literally the second day of school. So, anyway, so I 
left a little bit earlier just to like be prepared for the crowds and i was right the buses were absolutely packed so nice good 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 idea i tried, good thinking. I tried. It was rough, too, being my very first day back and already having to go to the office, but anyway. <laughs> You're so, like, uh, I am exhausted already, and it's only Yeah, I, I am dying. <laughs> yeah. So I transfer downtown, and I'm waiting for my, <laughs> for my bus, and a car pulls up, and it's my boss. And she goes, Sarah, get in the car. She, like, <laughs> yells it. And I'm like... Shami, you're doxing yourself, number one. And number two, that is terrifying. She's literally kidnapping you off of the street. Well, okay. <laughs> the, the city I live in, the city I live in, it's not unusual to have people, like, yelling downtown. <laughs> so at first I thought it was that, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I literally said my... Whatever, I can dox myself. Whatever, it's fine. Anyway, so, um... Yeah, so my boss... Yell, Shammy, get in the car! Again, twice. And then I see her and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> and she pulls right up and the light's changing as I'm like getting in the car and she's like speeding to unlock, unlock the car. It was so funny. Oh and my god. Anyway, so, um, yeah, my boss picked me up off the side of the road <laughs> and drove me to that work. Sounds like it. She sounds like. I mean, okay, let's just. So, Shami has had this job for how long have you been there? Two years? A couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About yeah, two like years. two years. And yeah. her boss is a fucking, like... She's um, something. She is She is awesome. She's so cool. She is, but it's just so funny, <laughs> like... She is so funny. It, it was just so her. This whole interaction was so her. <laughs> get in the car! Shami, get in the car! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Crap. How are you? Hello. Wumpkin, honestly, there are hundreds of thousands of us, so <laughs> it's, it's okay. Like, honestly, yeah. It's a very common name. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't even realize I did that. It's so funny. See, that's what I mean. It just feels so natural. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're enjoying, you're enjoying streaming and chat. I'd be a little scared, but hey, a ride home, I guess. It's a ride to work. It's a ride to yeah. work. Which, honestly, that's just that's kind of your is your boss feeling capitalism right now that's what she's doing she's like I, she I needs she uh, did you have did you need another ride though it was, yeah i was i was at my like transfer point I oh it is halfway. okay 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 yeah, yeah. so it's perfect yeah and it just so happened to be oh, that's why i felt kind of like oh i was there a little earlier so it's funny Tell chat another another um, story. I will. So another Tell. boss that pays. Okay, she's really extra, and oh, there's a feather too. <laughs> well, Wumpkin, I guess I'll have to hire my ninjas when I my protection ninjas. Um. So anyway, um, my boss is just generally an extra lady. Um, she's very nice, very lovely boss, but she's also like kind of eccentric if you will um so i got I, as as you guys know i got back from my vacation and i saw so i was checking my emails today uh, i don't know if any any of you worker bees can relate out there the the checking your email yes <laughs> yeah creeper exactly <laughs> yeah yeah you're wondering why i've gathered you all here today yeah right um anyway so i was checking my email today and my my boss has sent us a picture from the newsletter that I come out while I was gone. And this picture <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it. This picture is from a barbecue that we had like before I left for vacation. You can see me and my workmates sitting at a bench so far away, it literally looks like a pinprick. You couldn't even tell that was us. I couldn't anyway. And my, my boss puts in like an arrow, like a paparazzi arrow and goes, that's us, we're famous in the email. And you can barely see it, it's so funny. Um, yeah, that, that's my boss, she's funny. Like I could probably do an entire stream just telling stories about her. Like June's heard it all, honestly. So li like the sink, my boss is her own saga, I guess you could say. So yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful for her though. She's a great boss. Like weirdness aside, funny stories aside, she's she's lovely. I'm really grateful for her. 
So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she also likes to use like funny idioms too, like old people sayings. Or like sometimes if you're working in office with her, um, she'll just exclaim to herself, like she doesn't swear really. So she'll like make a mistake and go rats like super loudly. <laughs> It's really funny. A shammy stream. Oh, so much pressure. Ah! Ah! I'm, I'm just babysitting the stream. It's not, it, you know, I'm the cool aunt. I'm babysitting the stream. Uh, uh, should I juggle? Should I like tell a joke? Should I? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, okay. Okay, chat. Here's one. Why did the chicken cross the road? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Are you entertained? Are you not entertained? How was everybody's day, though? Did, did, did people work today? Any workers out there? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lumpkin. Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad little old me could entertain you. <clears throat> Any funny work stories? Any foster? Oh, thank God you're back. <laughs> oh my Hello. God. Pumpkin put the pressure on me. They were like, this is a shabby stream now. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle this! <laughs> oh my god. I had to talk to the plumber. The plumber called me. He, he was actually like, uh, I was like, well, when are you going to come tomorrow? And he goes, uh, what about tonight? And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, he's gonna be coming tonight. Um, I don't know when. I was like, can I oh, oh, fucking hydrate? Anna Krupp is trying to make me be healthy? What the hell? <laughs> in this economy? Yeah, in this economy, also, the coconut water is warm now. Blah. Whatever. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna have to. <clears throat> but yeah, um, plumber's gonna be coming tonight, thankfully, to rot out my, my, um, my sink. Thank God. Um, Finally. Yeah, so he's going to be doing that. So if I just drop out of nowhere, like, my bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I won't drop completely. I'll obviously end stream, but it, it'll be an explanation if that happens, okay? Yeah. Um, I worked on QP Lord. Does that count? I asked people if anybody had had work stories or if anybody worked today because I was telling I was telling boss stories. Oh, did I you hear the one I told about about the the newsletter and the picnic just now? No, I wasn't. I was not here, unfortunately. You'll have to tell me that another time. I will. Um, it reminds me of I have a one work story, but I won't probably won't tell it now because poor Shadow is probably going to be like, dude, I'm here for true crime. <laughs> <laughs> I've got raid in 30 minutes, my dude. <laughs> but yeah, let's start this. Um, anything else to say? Forever hold your peace, Chami? Uh, thanks for chatting, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I stream support and I don't stream myself. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I stream for it. You, you don't you don't think you would be able to do that? We talked about you streaming sometime. Yeah, it, it's definitely a practice. Like it's definitely something that you have to get used to. I think you found that, right? What? That it's something that you have to practice? Yeah, or like get used to the feel of at least. Um I wouldn't say that. I think it for me it was more comfort like like do how much of how much can I actually keep 
Um, no, no, no. I don't know. I'm kind of just myself on stream, though. Like, it's not, it's not like I, you know, like I have to pull out stories or anything. I just react the way that I need to or yeah. want to. So it's, it, but so, for some people, it's harder, I think. And I also can talk forever, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ducky, you're so nice. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I would support. I would too. I'd be out there. Though to be honest, when I'm in when I'm in stream comments, I I'm a menace. So <laughs> I am. If, if Jake is here, he will tell you. If oh, I totally forgot <clears throat> the transition. I want to bring. I wanted to bring Shammy a little closer to me. <laughs> be be jealous, chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I'm uh, I'm definitely a menace in, in Burner Shot as well. That's so, the way to be. So I'd be a hundred percent a menace in your chat. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect it. I'd be upset if you weren't, frankly. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but anyway, let's start this. Let's start this story. You guys ready? Here, here, here. You, I, I have. I mean, with the title, it's already good. I'm um, come on. But all right. <clears throat> Let's start. I need Lord to write. I'll give you some more information about me, Ellie. Maybe. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. There is a lot going on in today's episode, so buckle up. There were Her outfit is cute. <laughs> mysterious deaths happening in China. But it wasn't just the deaths that were mysterious, but what was happening to the bodies of the deceased. So it's not just the fact that they died, but weird things started happening to basically corpses in China. Some of them were just vanishing without a trace, leaving a whole nation of people wondering, what the hell is going on? Like, is there something that we don't know? Why are people's corpses going missing? Why are people's dead bodies going missing? And all of these cases are connected in the strangest, most sinister way. I couldn't even have imagined it if I thought of like a horror movie plot. In 2021, a Daoying influencer, a TikTok influencer by the name of Little Kitty, she had over 700,000 followers. I mean, she was known as a visual influencer. So people would follow her because she was very visually pleasing to look at. She would post about fashion, makeup, lifestyle. I mean, she was a very positive presence on the screen. In 2021, she posted a video that was very unlike all of her other videos. She seemed really, really serious. She looks visibly exhausted. She tells her viewers, this is probably my last video. Thank you all for your support. You guys know that I've been struggling with depression for a while. Every time you see me being happy, that's just what I want to show you guys, okay? But recently, I can't take it anymore. If you want to know the reason, please go watch my live stream. She almost doesn't look real. Like her features are so ball like. <laughs> <coughs> Over a million people saw this post. They immediately tuned into her live stream because they don't know what's going on. It's very cryptic. It seems dark and sinister. Like, what is she talking about? She directs everyone to this live stream and she appears very out of it. She's smiling, but it doesn't feel genuine. She keeps zoning out in the live stream and she just seemed overall very unstable. She's hinting that she doesn't want to keep streaming any longer. People kept commenting things like, please just get some rest. End the stream, get some rest, take a break. We totally understand if you take a break. Little Kitty looked like she was waiting for someone to enter her stream. It was really weird. And then she can slowly be seen lifting a clear water bottle. So like one of those plastic water bottles, but it is filled with this dark colored liquid. It looked weird, okay? The liquid did not look like a normal beverage. 
it just didn't have the consistency of like a Dr. Pepper. It just looked strange. And she just kept drinking it in little sips. And every time she would just grimace, it didn't look tasty. She kept claiming it was Coca-Cola. The police would later identify the liquid to be toxic for human life. Oh my God. She was drinking it on the string. Yeah. A lot of comments were catching on. They were very worried. I mean, this coupled with her last like post, on purpose, it she just was felt it? very dangerous. It felt very, you know, I think people knew what she was trying to do. They were writing things like, please don't do anything stupid. Someone call the police. We love you. Please don't do this. You're young. What about your parents? Others. Thank you, Ducky. Thank really you for the follow. Things. Thank you. Thank you. There were some accounts posting into this live. If you want to drink it, you should hurry up. Some people were encouraging her, egging her, saying, drink, 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 drink. She finished drinking the liquid, waved the empty bottle in front of the camera. She said it doesn't taste very good. The live ended, police and ambulances rushed to the scene, and soon news started circulating that little Kitty had died October 15th of 2021 from that very dark liquid she drank. She was eventually cremated, but the mystery surrounding her case doesn't even end here. November of 2021, her case met headlines yet again because her ashes were stolen by someone who claims to have wanted to marry her. They stole her ashes oh because they want to marry her off. Not even this her body, her very ashes. very puzzling. This is sinister, and it is a case that continues to baffle netizens. Sorry, mate. So, Charlie as always, called me full again. show notes are available so, uh, at rottenmanglepodcast.com. Really I did get a Mandarin speaker to help with this research on this case. And also, I'm not Charlie was like, streaming. The sociocultural context. Not, yeah. <laughs> there is a bit of history to today's case, and it's it's a lot. But as always, if anything is lost in translation, or if you know any cases like this you'd like me to talk about, let us know in the comments. Let's get into it. I'm of course, netizens were devastated right about Little Kitty's paper, death, but it. they were also kind of furious. <laughs> it's speculated that Little Kitty was cyberbullied to the point of ending things on her live stream. She just couldn't take it anymore. But you're wondering, why would someone cyberbully a woman who's just trying to share happy videos online, right? Of makeup and clothes, of all things. Oh, but watch. people do that. The, the internet is terrible. That's why. Yeah. And it's kind of like a tragic tale that starts. I think with especially if you're like good looking. Or do especially, like, yeah. yeah. Never a good way to start a story. Little Kitty in 2019 starts dating a small, small influencer by the name of Zhao. Z. Z was not in the same world as Little Kitty. He wasn't even in the same, I guess, level of influences. I want to know what she was drinking. Was like, what? Basketball. Like, this guy was obsessed what was with it? basketball. And it, it's a very small niche. He just likes to play basketball, post videos, and no one really cared because I guess he wasn't that good. He didn't get nearly as many views or as love as Little Kitty. Despite that, the two of them, they fall in love, and Little Kitty is like, hey, we're like couple goals online. You need to keep posting on your channel. Like you need to create a new account. Like take it seriously. She constantly promoted his accounts. And just two years later, they break up in 2021. This is when little Kitty starts getting cyberbullied. Which like, why? Why would anyone cyberbully her? Z takes to social media to air out their dirty laundry. This guy is, I'm not going to get into it. So the cause of the breakup, according to Z, was little a piece Kitty's of shit. He was a piece of shit. I got it. Just say it. He said it. that Just she say had an extreme it. personality where she would threaten to go to a high rooftop and jump. She would make him get on his knees and beg for forgiveness in exchange for her not jumping off the As rooftop. As he should, no, I'm kidding. He said that she used self-harm to manipulate Z and get her way in fights. Z claimed it was all fake, though. All the scars that she had shown him, they were all fake scars. He told his viewers, on top of that, anytime she got mad at me during a fight, she would go and sleep with a bunch of rich men. Allegedly, little Kitty was pregnant and Z did not believe the child was his, which caused them to break up. This is so messy. This would have been on literally every T channel. Like, it was very bad. The backlash was I mean, swift. she Without could just be like, out little Kitty's side I will give you a paternity test Where both after. sides have an incentive 100%. to lie about each other. The world yeah. is like, we hate little kitty. She's a manipulative gaslighter and a whore. She's a slut. Like people I hadn't heard of insane. her before this, but I realized she's a Chinese influencer. Tell us oh. the truth. She is, yeah. Who's the kid's dad? Yeah. 
So many handsome men in this world. I wonder which one is the dad. Her entire comment section became That's just kind insulting of, comment. It's none of your business, comment. honestly. <laughs> and once the public really? was informed it's by not, the not, it's not you, so that that's she what matters. Her like... pregnancy, things got even worse. Z suddenly claimed, actually, the baby could have been mine, and I'm upset that she terminated the pregnancy. Oh, now it's so yours? Now okay. her, like, Why you do you just, care? You deprived this man of potentially being a father, and it's like, wait, what is going on? Why is everyone flip-flopping just to hate on her? Oh, Even the internet. Person, the child could have been mine. <laughs> Maybe the viewers are misunderstanding, but the kid is gone now. I hope that everyone can just stop hating on her, and it's my fault that I didn't see through the hateful ways of society. Stop hating That's on rich her, guys. coming from him. Oh Even my though God. she knows what she I did, know. maybe I chose to do some wrong things, too. Leave the past in the past, everyone. I hope viewers can stop holding on to this, and I hope she can live a bright future. It's like... Sir, you just aired everyone's dirty laundry, and now you want to like take the good seat and be like, guys, "Hope some prayers, guys, everyone." Guys, calm down. <laughs> Hope some I prayers. take the high road. I'm so better than this. Kind of calm down, but not really. I mean, people still really wanted to hate Little Kitty, so that's what they do. This is like back in 2019. Everyone is just shitting on her. So the two enter into two new relationships. Z starts dating a new girl, and Little Kitty starts dating a guy by the name of Lee. And it was really, really rough for Little Kitty. I mean, just so bad. She never even told the truth about her past relationship. So with Z, you know how they just broke up? Little Kitty, she's getting all this hate, but she never got messy. She never went online and was like, you know what? Z cheated on me I with his ex a month into dating me. I would. So I think that I he was using me like, for cloud. I think this that he was guy. using me for views. He was still hey, my millions of followers. Look he at this. He was not a good person. <laughs> and once he started getting viewers, he would even try to sleep with the viewers. He would engage in these inappropriate Ew. conversations with viewers. <laughs> but here are just a few. A viewer liked one of his pictures, and he DM'd her, saying, just a like, let's get to know each other. So it seemed Ew. like the viewer that had Yuck. this conversation with Z released Constantine's it. Constantine's emojis. Hi, and then, Constantine. you know, it kind of got bigger Hi. and bigger. And then there were little instances Hello. where he like, would hint at the fact that Z was inappropriate with viewers, <laughs> that he also did things. She didn't go on a whole expose as Z did. <clears throat> like, Z went on a witch hunt for her after they broke up. So the viewer said, your girlfriend has a great figure. Because I imagine, like, this viewer is a viewer of both of them. So she's like, um, you literally have a girlfriend. So your girlfriend has a great <laughs> figure. And he continues, let's get to know each other, I said. You have a girlfriend. We each play on our own. Ew. Really? If you think it's real, then it's real. If you think it's fake, then it's fake. I'd go ask her that. I'd message her and like, be like, what? so, just making sure it's okay. Like, like, yeah, 100%. Gross, I would okay? be like, hey, so. This so. Is while it's dating, hard because she's they also break up and a huge Everybody is shitting on so Little Kitty, hard. even though clearly Z's yeah. got issues like, of his own, right? Little Kitty tries to clarify a couple yeah, of things with the that audience he's a liar. after the breakup. First of all, she claims, I would never fake self-harm scars. She said, that's disgusting. That's not in my character. Why would I do something like that? She did end up showing some of her scars, and they were very much real. She also oh, sad that she helped me do that on like depression. Which yeah, I really hate Social when people media. on the internet I mean, are pushed to the point okay. of revealing. But at the same time, basically, uh -oh. they were honest with potential. I totally uh -oh. forgot. Uh oh, uh oh. We're of twenty twenty one, the month asking her, and when she said no, that's when he ended things with her. Okay, He's just okay. know each other. So it there seems like the viewer Sorry. that had this conversation was <clears throat> really So I what what I wanted to say before I fucked up the entire video. Was um, that's the thing with like big influencers like that. It's kind of like, would you, if you knew something or wanted to reach out to to a big influencer, do you think that you would go out and try to do that, even though you know that they are like, they're they're busy. Like let's say like Valkyrie for example, right? Yeah. Right. Like how many hundreds of thousands of like messages do they get a day? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or notifications. Like, notifications. Like, like, how would you, like, how many would you have that you would, like, sift through? It'll be hard. But, um, what did I come to just block? I, that's the thing is that I think these are their fans. So, like, it's like their audience. Yeah. So they can't. Yeah. Really... So, I mean, they, they can, they can do that and be like, oh, this guy's a piece of shit or whatever. But if there are more fans that aren't you or don't want to hear it or something like that, and they're like, you're trying to say shit about 
you know, this really well-known person. They're flawless and never going to do anything wrong. It's like then suddenly you, by reporting it or saying, t- telling other people, are suddenly seen as a bad person. Um, you never have to provide evidence for things like that. I, no. Oh, to be honest, though, her showing her scars, like, personally, maybe as somebody, like, who doesn't have anything to do with that, I'm wondering, I whenever I see people show their scars and in, in not in a harmful way, they're just like, hey, I have scars from self-harm or anything like that, like... I also, I just also think that it's very brave because it makes people think, oh, I'm not alone or like, I, I am like, I'm surprisingly like you. You'd be surprised how, how much, regardless of how famous you are or whatever it is, I still have problems, but I mean, you know. I agree with that. You don't have to hide them, but yeah. at the same time to feel like, <laughs> see, here's proof I'm not lying. Look, like that, that to me is a little sad. Yeah, there's like, okay, yeah, there, there, there is a difference between empowering others with evidence of, you know, um, or, um evidence of the experiences that you've had, negative yeah. experiences, versus hey i'm i'm doing this because i need to cover something up or not cover something up but defend myself essentially or you feel like you're back in a corner yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah but uh it's a bit gross and people fake anything like that but i can't imagine calling someone out for fake self-harm or suicidal right yeah you don't have to show them off too yeah i'm good at ghosting people that's good though that is really good the fact that some people just don't have, um, like, any – I think it's healthier to not have any guilt for blocking people or, like, just cutting people off. Um, I've – I mean, Shami can tell you, sometimes I have really hard time doing that because I don't want I, – I don't like things to be really final like that with people especially because most of the time I think, okay, there must be some type of misunderstanding, right? So – yeah. Um, but, but I wish I had more of that idea, like that, that, um, kind of bravery. I think the key is like knowing when to go with somebody or like knowing when to cut them off. That's the key. It's hard though, because it's like, yeah, it is, you know, like when do you decide, oh, is, is this the right time? Am I misunderstanding? Like, like, I mean, there are some people who are just straight up just so belligerent that it's not even worth it but right we've we've known some people like that (laughs) yes we have known some people like that we have um it is so it is brave to share on your own terms yes sharing on your own terms yeah i don't know if i call ghosting skill (laughs) skill as good kind of hard to level up your own friendship with your your first response is ghosting like i am yeah i understand (laughs) yeah I think I think there are positives and negatives to to both, but like, because if you keep giving people chances that are just bad for you, then that's not good either, you know. But at the same time, like, there are people who, let's say, are really good at ghosting. It's hard for them to keep friends, for example. So you have like one argument, and then you never see them again. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're just like, that's it. I'm gone. <laughs> that's it. I'm gone. Yeah. Ellie, you're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Second. After I fix my mistake. What the heck? That is sideways, ma'am. That is not lined up at all. Are you also It's a really good this? idea how you, I, I am, yeah. <laughs> it's a really good idea how you section off your uh, painting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ch- it's because I always... If I put my hand on here, it gets sticky and it's just not yeah. a fun time because then I kind of lift my painting too, which makes some of the cones come off if, if they're kind of loose. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, also, context on the white text. It's the video topic. Yes, it is the topic of the video. It's the, the title of the video. Yes. I wish I could fix my mistake, which is me. Oh, I, you're not a mistake. It's fine. There's a lot of 
Um, everybody has flaws. Everybody has flaws. Oh, be quiet. Stop it. Stop it right now, Cousin T. I'll give you some pr- free praise kink if you if you keep it up. Free praise kink. It's like Boxing Day, Black Friday. <laughs> free free praise kink. <laughs> Constantine, look at it this way. If you can, like, point it out as a bad habit of yours, then at least you can start to work on it or recognize that. If you want to, that is. If you want to work on it. If not, then live your best life. But... I mean, like I like I said, you see that as a negative. As somebody who has issues with it, I see that as a positive. So it's it's the whole phrase of, like, you know, one man's treasure or trash is another man's treasure, like. It's the same it's also thing. Also about balance too. Like, like I yeah, said, absolutely. know when to go, know when not to. <laughs> when to put your foot down and when not to. Yeah. Yeah. When to, when to give that that option, and that's sometimes what I have an issue with because I, I can sometimes be so <laughs> lax and, um, I guess forgiving uh, and giving second chances that like. I need to know when to put my foot down more strongly sometimes. And thankfully, I have Shami here who, honestly, you know, seeing it from a third person point of view, more than likely you're going to be like, you you have a better perspective. So you can tell me, um, you know, June, you really need to put your foot down about this. This is unacceptable. And I have, too. I have before. Yeah. Yeah, she has. She has she has helped me in that way. I mean, you see the best in people or like you like to see the good in people. You might want to lean back a little bit or put your hair out maybe. FYI. Anyway. <laughs> oh, is my hair uh, out? My hair yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it. I just fucking do it for you instead. Put your hair back. What? This hair? <laughs> flings it glamorously (laughs) what i was gonna say before i got distracted (laughs) by your free assets um i'll show you some (laughs) you better you better after stream right um you 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 see the best in people which is inherently a good thing but then again sometimes it can also lead you to like maybe not recognize when to stop giving people chances if that makes sense yes yes because you that assume is that they have the best intentions when they might not yeah right? yeah or or they they don't see it as fair i always think oh well people just want to be fair right everybody wants to be fair just like me but not everybody wants to be fair not everybody yeah. wants, to, wants things or looks at things where they're like okay well it has to be fair here you know like which is unfortunate. Like the world would be a better place, I think, if everybody treated everybody equally and fairly. But free assets. <laughs> yeah, that's some after hours stuff. All right, you guys, you guys don't get that. All right? You guys have some great yeah. emojis. They're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Obviously, it's just. I know that's just part of me, but like yeah. at the same time, I wish I were more a little bit more, you know, it, it's like what you said, you need balance. And in order for balance ha- to happen, you have to have more of the opposite. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. I had a little bit more of Constantine's um, boldness, then <laughs> I, I probably would be more balanced out. No, So um lurkin good luck on raid shadow good luck good luck good luck i violently swing from believe in people to the world of shit and back Honestly, well, well, you. you're so real for that you're so real for that <laughs> yeah it actually that's kind of true though and it's just like do i have faith in people and then there's something it's like you want to think oh i have faith in people and then somebody does something fucking stupid and you're like what what <laughs> Yeah. I hate people. People are so dumb. <laughs> As we watch like true crime and stuff. <laughs> I know. With true crime, you just leave every bit shred of faith into the dumpsters immediately. So kinda have to, yeah. Um wait, I'm bold? Yes. I'm uh I'm just on the far edge of I weep for humanity. <laughs> exactly, June. All or nothing thinking engaged. 
Honestly, yeah. That's what my therapist is like. He's like, <laughs> my therapist has that too. <laughs> yeah. My therapist is like, dude, you gotta like not be so odd. Like, what's the word for it? Oh, fuck. What do they call it? Catas- catastrophizing? They're like, you catastrophize too much. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm so. Weird. <laughs> and it's a catastrophe, don't you see? It's like that yeah. meme, wake up, like where you're leaning over them on the mountain. <laughs> you gotta tell me how how I'm bold. Give me the secrets. Well, first off, one of the first things you said to me when you were first on my stream was um the snacks right here. I mean, if that ain't bold, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Like That's you came out, you came out, you came out swinging. All right bud friend <laughs> friend it's like we're all in therapy or some shit as we should be as we should be we stand good mental health hygiene we do <laughs> brush your brain all right that's right don't don't be don't be shy to brush your brain oh uh, uh, so that counts as both i mean that's bold for in one way yes i was just joking but yes that is bold for some people yeah for me, it was all right. For me, it was all right. <laughs> uh, get on it. You give me an excuse and I'll help her out. <laughs> um, I thought it was just good old banter. It is good banter. It's wonderful banter. Thank you. I love different personalities. Everybody here has a different personality, and I appreciate that so much. It's fun. It's very fun, and I get a different perspective, and I get to have awesome fun conversations with everyone i mean it's just so fun it's true sorry i ain't got no money i'm try- not trying to be funny um yeah, yeah yeah i mean definitely 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 therapy if you can and you'd be surprised though your your state or wherever you live might actually have free therapy I was telling my my um um my my landlord about this actually. It was funny because he was like, you know, I wish I had more people to talk to. I'm like, you can anytime actually. <laughs> you really told your landlord to get therapy. <laughs> I did. I was like, because he always keeps just talking to me about it because he knows I can I I listen, but I'm like, you gotta get like people who want to hear it. Or or paid to hear it or whatever it is like, like and not yeah, just get a professional to help your, with this shit, not my tenant, not, not your tenant. Yeah, not your tenant. <laughs> so you know. Oh, speaking of, by the way, so when he called me, he wanted to apologize, and oh. I was like, "Why? What's going on?" And he's like, "I told the guy upstairs on the second floor that you might sue him." for damages and i'm like um no i'm not gonna do that because the most that he's damaged is like pots and pans and some bowls and stuff and if you know how the legal process works lawyers are so expensive you will lose money if you're doing something as petty or or like suing for something as petty as a bunch of pots and pans you know so more trouble and money and time than it's worth it, it is right <clears throat> um neither am i for real i can help look into it i don't want to pry i care about this stuff a lot i do too i think we all do i don't have an income just saying there's things in things in places depending on where you are yes that's why i said like if you live in the states like you each i think every state offers free free therapy free free counseling um you just have to look it up you have to look up like even if it means just like somebody's there to listen to you that matters a lot it 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 counts for a lot when you have somebody who can listen to you and listen to your issues and and give where you safe i and am i know they offer like a sliding bar payment scale so like they, they'll like adjust it based on your income yeah which is nice so i don't yeah. have the time for it um 
I spend like 14 hours. At, you too. You've actually told me that you spend a really long time at your workplace. Um, hopefully yeah, that that's isn't tiring. tiring to you. I mean, that is the thing too. Is like you have to be ready. You know, yeah. like you can't. And if 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 you if you decide that you're not, then that's up to you. If you decide that you are, then there's resources. <laughs> yeah, there are resources, and it could just be, oh, I have some time right now. I can just call this number, and somebody will be on the other line, and they'll listen to me. And like that can also help too, you know. That's true. There's like phone lines, like even like text lines these days. Mm hmm. I love how you guys are trying to be real neutral. What do you mean? We know there's all we there's different people from all different walks of life watching. I know. So yeah, yeah. if that's mm-hmm. what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by neutral, but yeah, like I'm just trying to be real. Like therapy is for real because there's a lot of people who who need need therapy. And they, the first thing that they think about is, I can't, I can't afford it. And I'm like, bruh, there are so many options out there. So many options. And they're available for you for free or at a very discounted rate. Well, it's Constantine, awesome. it's true, though. You have to be ready. If you're not ready, then it's not going to help you. Like, I, you I'm not trying some to help be like... You. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you should get help if you, if you want it what yeah so basically shami explained it um if you go to and i've seen this before if you go to therapy and you're not ready to be open with your issues then there's no point in going to therapy right because they're not they're not going to get anything from it you're going to be paying for no reason right to sit there Um, and like not be honest or say anything and or like make up a lie and say, "Yeah, my life is fine." When it you're in fucking shambles, like you're there for a reason, right? Yeah. You don't always have to be there for a reason, but but being honest is part of being ready. And if you're not ready to be honest with somebody who's a stranger, then maybe maybe to kind of like think about it and reconsider if that makes sense. <clears throat> That's my life is so fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> Uh, that works for some, but some people don't realize they need help until they got it, though. Yeah, I mean, they have to realize it. That's the thing you can't really force they, them. To yeah. <laughs> um, this is <laughs> it's fine. Everything. So, yeah, I know. This is something I've been struggling with. I've not been very receptive to, to the idea of therapy for myself, but I'm trying <clears> to get there. <throat> yeah, like it's hard because some people are receptive. Some people are like are ready to be open, and other people are not. And that's nothing wrong with you as a person, in my opinion. I think that is just some people are ready to talk about those things that bother them, that make them them. Some people are not ready to unwind and unfurl themselves in front of someone else. It's that's a very hard. vulnerable thing. It's a very vulnerable thing. And you're opening yeah. yourself up to like, possible judgment and... Yeah, especially you know. if you're if you're not if you yourself are if I'm sorry, if your issues stem <laughs> from being not vulnerable, then it's doubly hard for you to go to therapy. Because yeah. your in, your instinct obviously is to close up, right? So you're you're doubly in this you're dub, you have You're working overtime because you have to convince yourself, no, 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 I I do need therapy. I do need to open up. So. Nice. Good job. Oh, we're just talking about therapy. I hope you do. (laughs) Yeah, I hope you do. I I hope you do, too, Ducky. But it's it. I recognize that it is not something as easy as saying, just get therapy. It's fine. Just get therapy. Um, definitely yeah it it's almost like somebody coming to you and be like just lose weight just lose weight like like it's not it's not easy you know like it's it's a hard concept that's fair i think i have some reservations about that yeah if if your problems have stemmed from closing up or telling or somebody like you know like i'd imagine a guardian figure telling you don't talk about your problems stop crying or anything like that 
It's gonna be or hard. You, you have be problems vulnerable. while other kids have it way worse than you. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't even talk about your problems. Your problems are nothing compared to other kids. Stuff like that. Um, I was miserable and bullied. I was a miserable and bullied kid, and learned really well how to compartmentalize anything bad, like super well, but to a detriment. Yes. See, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mom says that I uh, I sometimes am unfeeling because of it. Yeah, because you're you're um you were taught the first instinct to do when you have a bad feeling or something that is um not good not good in your head like you're like oh this is a negative feeling just compartmentalize it, it it's never going to come out you know um if you consider that vulnerability is so hard to do um get good that sounds real asian good old asian parenting yes <laughs> yes good old asian parenting um um as somebody who is who comes from that background as well um it's more so of avoidance right so for us it's just like yeah my eq level is real low not going to lie um i think with most things eq things like eq is learned right i think it can be learned to be better some people are just naturally good at it or like are more receptive but you can still be you can still work on it and i think that's important my role models qb thank you i'm i mean i would tell you to get better role models but I don't know. You're my role model too. <laughs> For what? What am I role modeling? Uh, streamers and being a streamer. Why don't you role model someone from like the people that we watch? <laughs> <laughs> They're better than I am. Can't I add on to the sentimental <laughs> moment, Jesus? <laughs> yes, yeah, you cannot. You cannot. Um, I'm really worried about her. Because not only accounting for her own difficulties, she's also my caretaker. I don't want her to get burnt out and result in resentment. I don't think that she would resent. But I think that there's... If if Ducky is correct in compartmentalizing, sh uh, what I would be worried about is apathy. Um, which is, one could even argue, worse than resentment, right? I uh, just want you to take care of yourself, Ducky, yes. I also want you to take care of yourself... Can't if I can't even meet anyone these days. Uh, June, do be a role model. For <laughs> I am a role model for gremlins. That's what I'm a role model for. And what do you think we are? What do you think that we really are? <laughs> That's true. God Didn't damn gremlins. Didn't get so deep in this stream tonight. Jeez. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I always do. For stream, yeah. we always seem to talk about mental health and like. Things like yeah, that. I always want to make sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is just a standard day in a in a June stream, apparently. True. Have I got any L's in here? I do have some L's. I've got five L's. Oh shit! Well, the video definitely went off <laughs> went went right for the topic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's we're talking about shitty people and good people. I mean, telling me to get a better role model shows that you're a good one. You recognize your flaws, and that's what inspired to be like, yeah. I mean, I, fair. I, I do recognize my flaws. I also recognize my strengths. Um, and I have people around me to help balance out my flaws. Like I said, um, I give people a lot of second chances. I recognize that about myself. So what do I do? I have Shami, who is able to tell me straight up, listen, you should not be giving this person a second chance. Like, they're not okay. <laughs> they're not okay. And actually, I honestly, I recently even, um, I used your advice. I understood, and I understood, I understood the assignment, and <laughs> I used your advice. For Proud of you. Something recently. <laughs> yeah. Trust your friends. Just know that you, if you're to find people that offset your flaws, make sure you're doing that with trustworthy people who are, have excellent integrity. Um, <clears throat> disclaimer, this, this stream is not, <laughs> yes, 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 this stream is not a substitute for getting professional help. What I Thank can you, do, thank you, <laughs> is, 
is this stream is a encouragement for you to get professional help. A safe space. Uh, Let's put it that way. It's a safe space. It is a safe space. Yes, it is a safe space. It is a safe space. Um, so period. Uh, yes. Wait, Shami, can you judge someone for me if I tell you about them? Is this tea? Is this tea? <laughs> Um, you're welcome to message me. However, like, I don't necessarily know you or your situation, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Whereas, like, yeah, Jimmy, like, I most likely do. Just, just Sh say. Shammy has known me for <laughs> more than ten years. I feel yeah. Like. So she knows my natural inclinations, and I know she knows my natural inclinations. <clears throat> so she knows what she's working with. Yeah. Um, she's an expert in her field. So, um, versus Juvenile. like, yeah, like she knows the type of responses that I'm, I am capable and comfortable with handling, if that makes sense. So, yeah. like, if she told me, I don't know, like something that I'm not comfortable with handling or saying to this person, like, oh, just tell them, fuck you. Like, she knows that that's not my type of communication versus Just someone else. Them and never like, talk to them again. Like, no, that's not. <laughs> yeah, that's not my, my community. Even, even when we were talking about um, Coco's situation, I was like, oh, you have to, like, just talk about, talk to them about it. And then Shami's like, what is there to talk about? Just fucking report, block, just do it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. In my head, I was like, no, you don't need to talk to this person. They're literally, literally, literally like disgusting well, because <laughs> i don't i don't like to be ghosted and be because another part of me too is a, i feel like i need a responsibility to tell people why i'm doing something even if it's a bad thing and i'm just like listen i am i am blocking you because these things that you've done therefore like so that that works in two ways right for me two ways the first way is you know why i'm leaving so you're, yeah. you're not it's not a mystery. And number two, now you know that this is about you, like these issues about you, fucking try to fix yourself. Try to fix well, I was gonna say, I was going to say too, on the flip side, when thinking about it, like they, they, they deserve to know that they suck and like, yeah. they should know well, that they, they do, suck. Like, or, yeah, or like they feel, if they feel guilty about what you're saying, then good. Honestly, they deserve it. Yeah. Right? Honestly, Hello? like <laughs> only good, only good things come from telling somebody what a piece of shit they are but anyway um you heard it here first folks <laughs> um the shamo the shamo meter the shamo meter <laughs> that's very giving of you i guess i i guess i i just i want other people to understand that they can be better by giving them a guideline on how not to act sometimes and you can't i can't i can't have the world be a better place if people don't know what their problems are or they don't even know how they can solve them because if i were in that position and somebody was mad at me right i don't want them to just ghost me tell me tell me the issue so i can at least have the chance the chance to fix it yeah yeah that's that's just me for real i think it's a good thing oh um, I love some nice late night deep talk for sure. I we can give that any time. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I want both Shammy and Chat's opinion. I have this friend who kind of treats me like shit. They insult me all the time and tell me I should. I know how they feel without t without them telling me. They tell me I'm not really their friend and that I'm completely irrelevant. Nothing. To Just stop being friends with that person. Yeah, like what, what advice are you looking for? Like they they it doesn't yeah. sound like they're interested in being your friend. Yeah, I agree. If they're not interested in being your friend, then just slowly stop talking to them. Like, if you talk to them, let's say every day, start talking to them um maybe like once a week. If you can't do that, maybe twice a week and then slowly just dwindle and say, "Hey, like I want nothing to do with you because I want I mean, yeah, Constantine says is a problematic upbringing. Not gonna lie, sure, sure. However, like at the same time, you should not have to suffer for somebody else's lack of upbringing, especially if it's not a healthy 
and fulfilling um, friendship. And Claudia, from what I know of you, you sound, um, you, you say you're in school, right? Um, there are so many other people and opportunities that you haven't had or met yet that like, you'll meet so much, so many more better people than this, that this person will be in your past and you won't even remember them. Like, there will be people who give you so much more joy that you will forget about this person. It's exactly. Not, exactly. It, yeah. Like, it, it's kind of almost like, don't gaslight yourself in thinking this is the way that friendships work. Because they're not. Right? Friendships right. are fulfilling. They're supportive. They're healthy. They encourage you. They make you braver. And uh, to to take on things that would normally scare you, right? Um, in a positive way, right? Because like I said, we all have flaws. But, you know, um, if you're trying to fix that flaw, it is imperative to have a friend that says you can do it versus a friend who says, okay, good luck. I don't care. So... You know, or a friend, friend that choice. actively discourages you and says, "No, you can't do it." That's not a friend. That's yeah, somebody who's like, <laughs> "Oh, you're trying to do that? Well, good luck." Like, you don't want that type of person around you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, also too, um, um, I had a point and I lost it. But... Well, you think about that. I'll I'll read yeah. what Constantine says. Uh, and and, and one can um to exactly what June just said or or if you ain't got the energy for that they're just up and leave yeah I agree and um they apologize but it never feels genuine yeah just don't be with this person this person sucks they are sorry um, they got caught they're not sorry they hurt your feelings also yeah. I remember what I was gonna say now I, I I've used this with June I've used this with other people I've used this with myself but like how would you feel if you had a friend in your position if you had a friend that came to you and said I have a friend and they treat me like crap and they insult me all the time and they gaslight me. Like, what would you say to them? What advice would you give them? If I like had a friend it, like that, if Burner was doing that to me in, in chat, I think most of everyone here would be livid. They'd be like, get the fuck out. And I'm pretty sure Shammy would uh, kick him out. I would ban yes, him. I'm yes. Using but no question. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> You're not obligated to help, but you can try if you want to. Just realize that it's not your responsibility to do so. Mm. Not sure what that's from, but I'll read that later. What June said about telling them why you're leaving, I wouldn't take. I wouldn't take time telling them either way. For that, I actually wouldn't, because they've already made it clear what their what their intentions are. Or you could also do the one liner like, "I don't like how you speak to me, so I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. Just leave it at that." Yeah, honestly, honestly. <laughs> just telling just telling them, hey, like you you kind of treat me treat me like shit. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Like nobody's going to be like nobody's going to be, be out here being like, no, she doesn't treat you like shit. <laughs> like, You're crazy. Be, You're crazy. <laughs> You're overreacting. Oh, my God. Well, well let me overreact then. If this the yeah. point is <laughs> really the point is, is that like. I get to choose the type of friends that I, I want to have. And you don't fit that criteria. So goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, I've had such an accelerated, accelerated experience, though. I just took my first on-level class with fifth, since fifth grade. I've been a community college student. I just feel like it's all too much with friend stuff and school stuff, and it feels so fast. Um, Ellie... Right now, you're in a in in a position in your life where you're going to be very busy, and there's a lot of things happening in your life. I understand, but I think at that point you need to take a seat and with yourself, sit down, um, and think about your priorities that you want to put in front of you. You know, you know what I mean. So also, um, like, if you're that busy and you have a lot going on, which like I commend you for, that's impressive. You have to take care of you. You are your number one priority. And if that means like working on yourself and maybe chilling out on like socializing and stuff for a bit while you like get successful and do what you have to do, then so be it. 
Really. And honestly, Ellie, if you are this busy, you have no time for people like this. No. You, you, you have even less time <clears throat> for people who are going to be so negative in your life. Yeah. Um, I insult people every time I even do that to myself. I don't discriminate. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I know that's banter. There's a difference between like genuine insulting uh, insulting someone versus just like straight up banter. My previous sentence was because, oh, to elaborate, I see, I see. You can call me Ellie. If you're worried about losing a friend, know this. Someone better will take their place. Exactly, Vumpkin. That's what we were talking. Or actually, that's what Shammy was talking about when yeah. she said, you know, you're young. You're going to find people that are so much better. Like, you don't have to worry about, oh, this is the only friend that's going to be around me. No. There are lots of people who want to learn you uh, or learn who you are and what you're all about, your tics, um, and the way that you work. So. I wish I'm young. I wish... Mm, I don't wish I was young. Because if no, I, me neither. I, li- I like where I'm at. I like where I'm at in my life. If, if, I was, if I was young again, I feel like I would also do stupid shit again. So I'm just going <laughs> to keep where I am. That's so real. That's so real. <laughs> <laughs> you literally just said... <laughs> you literally you actually just said that's so true bestie you so true bestie literally <laughs> i literally did <laughs> so true bestie oh we're anyway. aunties. aunties oh we're aunties <laughs> we are aunties we're actually aunties <laughs> did we just like do advice streams once in a while like Ask us anything. <laughs> AMA. <laughs> I feel like most of our, our viewers are um, uh, have their lives together most of the time, but um, there are times where I like Bumpkin and and you know now with our new our new recruit to our cult, Ducky. Um, <laughs> you know, being able to talk about this stuff is it's just fun. You know, it's fun sometimes. It's it is fun. it's fun and it's healing. It's fun and it's healing. It uh, is. My stress is why I've been writing so much. I wrote a whole lore page for QB and I didn't think it was a big deal, but QB was like, "That's not a normal talent to have," and that that did that I did a good job. Um, I'm I don't want to say it's not a normal talent. I was saying it's a talent that you should uh that you should acknowledge. Right. If you're really that great at writing something, I want you to be able to say, hey, I'm good at writing. You know, maybe I should explore this or keep it as a hobby that, you know, how to get friends and GF. Give me the cheat codes. <laughs> uh, work on yourself and don't think about getting a girlfriend and get a girlfriend. <laughs> no, that's so true. Like, stop trying and then it'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Honestly, it is like the less you think about it and just go about your business, um, the higher your chances are actual. Yeah, real, like, real just shit. Live your life. Just live your life. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, because because women, if you're looking for a girlfriend, women are attracted to people who have their have the ability to be independent on their own. They're they're not looking for people who are looking to be taken care of or anything like that. If they if you can take care of yourself, then a woman doesn't have to take care of you. They're not looking for a baby. They're looking for a partner. And that partner needs to be independent and able to handle themselves as well. Um, I live my life at work. Hmm. Then maybe that's an issue. <laughs> Not saying, oh, you should get a, you should get a, another job or, or not another job, um, a different job or anything like that. But if you're working 14 hours a day, that's a lot of work unless you're like, it's not a very hard job or anything like that. But I think also too, um, what's important, at least for me is, and, and, and Shami can agree that, that that's important for me. What's important for me in uh and attractive in my dating life is somebody who is um has a drive and is always looking to kind of improve themselves or improve their situation 
and stuff like that. So because that's how you, know. you live your life, I think you're always striving to like do something <laughs> bigger and better and work on yourself. So yeah, I I always do. I'm always busy. I'm always trying to do different things like streaming stuff like that. I'm pushing. I always research and do all all, all the stuff. When I, whenever I get, as I say, it's a British day, get stuck in something, I I really do get stuck in. Uh, when mm-hmm. it came, I like, I've only been streaming for two two months and a week or so, and like, I've learned so much and gotten so much better at streaming and, you know, putting in assets and doing different things. So like, I think that you know, having that drive and wanting better for yourself is important to me. Uh, And as a result, I think it's important for a lot of women as well. I wish I could change the situation, but I live in the middle of nowhere. Downtime is wasted time. I am no, not even close to a pro streamer. However, I do think with my personality type, I'm, I am closer to, um, a good streamer than if I was, um, I am faster than most most other streamers. One second, Shami, I know, I know you don't want to do this, but you got to enter in chat. It's okay. I can, I'll I'll babysit you guys for this. Um, Constantine, it's funny that you say that because I was always all for June streaming. Like, um, she definitely talked about it well before she actually started. And both of us really enjoy like Ninja Sanji and other VTubers together, like just just for fun. We would like watch streams together. And even as long as I've known her, like even before VTubing really became a thing, she would like stream games to friends and stuff. And she'd say things like, you know, unless there are people watching me, I feel like playing a single player game is a waste of time. Like she would say that. And it's like, okay, well, if that's not a streamer mindset, then what is? So when she first talked about it and said hey i think i want to stream i was all for it from day one i knew that it was something that she'd be good at and she'd excel at and she's always been good at like fostering friends fostering a community and um just bringing people together i've always said that about her that she's really good at bringing people together even even offline like level this is turning into a gush about june stream which i'm good at but like even offline like how she is with you guys is just how she is i promise it's not fake (laughs) she's always been very friendly and very like convival i guess the word is so when she said she wanted to start streaming it just made sense to me and i was all for it and she had some doubts as you do with like anything new that you're starting and i said to her like don't even think about it like you got this i know you can do it and it makes me so happy to see like new names and stuff in in chat because i i just knew it was always something she could do i believed in her so hard (laughs) i don't mean to be cheesy but like i just knew like like, not saying i'm i would be a bad streamer but it definitely doesn't come as naturally to me as i think it does for her and um because i'm i'm a little more introverted i'm not gonna lie um it's sometimes hard for me to think about things to talk about or maybe reach out to people. Um, I'm sure people here can relate to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm really excited to see where her channel is at a year from now. Even though she just started streaming, like I really think she'll do well. <laughs> yeah, Brie, I see you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I think if you ask any of her friends that know her too, they would say the same thing. Believe it or not, I thought about streaming like for quite a while, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure I thought about during my high school years, but what was my situation? Yeah, I mean, that is the thing too, is like it is hard, especially if you have another job. Like I work full time, June does too, so the fact that she can do this on the side is incredible, I think, because um I, I get mushy. I have to like de people when I come home from work and you know, um, so yeah, even even just me talking now, I'm like, um, what do I say next? Um, uh, it, it's hard. It's definitely a skill. It's definitely a skill. And people, has, people who say, oh, streaming's easy. You just play video games online. Like, no, that's really not it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've thought about it myself too. I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
and I, I still do, especially um, watching June get started. It's um, really been inspirational, and um, I'm really proud of her and how far she's come. I am not that it's a competition, but I don't know that I could quite achieve the same. And not that it's even about numbers or anything like that, because it's not. It's about quality, not quantity. Um, I don't know. I don't know. My streams certainly have a different vibe to them, that's for sure, and that's not bad. Um, yeah, I'm not I like it, especially because I consume streaming content myself. I'm not gonna lie and say it's something I haven't thought about. So, so yeah. Um, firstly, the key to stop the anxiety is to stop overthinking. Um, I used to be really bad with like racing thoughts and stuff. Speaking of therapy, um, I would say I'm quote quote neurotypical, but therapy has still helped huge. And another thing that I've recently picked up is meditation, which is the concept of if you're overthinking, <laughs> I would have a Twitch link. Actually, I just have like a regular profile. I don't stream. Thank you, though. I would if I had one. Um, yeah, I would say meditation has helped a lot. Look into it if you haven't. Obviously, it's not a one size fits all solution. But it is really helpful if you find yourself with intrusive thoughts, um, with racing thoughts. The idea of just focusing on your breath or picturing yourself in your favorite place. Well, Constantine, if you're gonna threaten me, maybe I'll have to. Jeez. <laughs> if you're holding me at knife point, maybe I'm gonna have to. My goodness. Um, um, yeah. Welcome back! Here. <laughs> Sorry to torture you. <laughs> no, it was, it was cool. It was, it was better this time. Constantine uh, knife, threatened me at knife point to stream, so Damn, there's nice. that. Yeah. Me next, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you for thank you for sub. First of all, congratulations, um, Ellie, for that sub. It's wet. Well, wait. So I follow Brie. Nice. Oh, nice. Maybe it was from last time. Oh, wait. What do you mean? <laughs> Ellie recognizes you? Brie, are you actually secretly famous? I had no idea. Secretly? Oh, thank you, Shadow. Shadow came back from Raid to Pog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy Pog. shit. Never mind, JK. I, I, I realized that uh, Ellie was reacting to the sub that she was gifted. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> um but what so i am going to be the palmer's here so i don't want to i don't want to leave him alone what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue the stream for you guys the the um the the true crime and um yeah so i'm going to do that i will be back enjoy okay hey, Talk to me once in a yeah <laughs> And then, you know, it kind of got bigger and bigger. And then there were little instances where little kitty would hint at the fact that Z was inappropriate with viewers, that he also did things. She didn't go on a whole expose as Z did. Mm -hmm. Like Z went on a witch hunt for her after they broke up. So the viewers said, I kind of said something, doesn't it? Like you like, because I imagine went nuts like, and she just kind of chills about like, it. Them. So she's like, um, you literally have a girlfriend. So your girlfriend has a great figure. <laughs> And he I'm hijacking the stream. This is my other, debut, everybody. Welcome. You have a girlfriend. <laughs> we each play on our own. Really? If you think it's real, then it's real. If you think it's fake, then it's fake. That's what he tells her. Like, what? They were not in an open relationship. Like, Gas he's lady just beyond is gross, okay? Oh, so this is while they're dating. They break up, and everybody is shitting on Little Kitty, even though clearly Z's got issues of his own, right? Little Kitty tries to clarify a couple of things with the audience after the breakup. First of all, she claims, I would never fake self-harm scars. She said, that's disgusting. That's not in my character. Why would I do something like that? She did end up showing some of her scars, and they were very much real. She also showed oh, that she was dying. Depression, which I uh, I'm maybe saying the this internet, stream for uh, June right now. She's unfortunately dealing with um real you know, life like, stuff. But welcome everybody. Thank you so much. So people believe you. That's insane. Uh, June's and not she dead. She's just trying. <laughs> she's just busy. Sad and I'm keeping the stream warm. Welcome everybody. Thank you so tactic. much, like, I Kat. Threatened to um, go die we just we uh, had fight. some life like, chat that you missed. Like it was okay. We'll probably have more. And now we're doing a crafting crime stream right now. So we're just watching some. Depressed? True crime stuff. We've been house? here for a bit and we're I just working on some time painting. 
What Shun will be back, like but in the meantime, hello. Stay a while if you feel like it. Like, I can't even get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Like I didn't kill her. Her plumbing killed her. <laughs> demanded that they I promise. I did not have nothing to do with this. She did not want to. Oh, Constantine. Her, and when she said no, you're on the next that's um, when ended things with her. crime live stream. So it does seem like she was pregnant. Oh, Ellie. Oh, oh she Ellie. She doesn't deny those rumors. <laughs> yeah, drink but she said that she begged Z to do a That's what every killer would say. No, I'm Z insane. Z did not want to do one. He kept avoiding the tides. A lot closet. of medicine started speculating that maybe Z was worried that the baby was indeed his. And he did not want to take responsibility not only for the child but for also the false accusations that he put out saying this child isn't mine she mm -hmm. got pregnant and that's why we broke up so z refused to ever take the dna test but he did go on a post about how the baby could have been his and how sad he was and like stop hating on everyone so when people start calling z out for his shitty behavior finally he proudly states that he gave little kitty fifteen thousand dollars to help her out but he never gave her a single penny Never. So despite all of this information Snake. coming out onto the internet, little kitty is still getting hate comments. She's trying to stay strong. She's trying to stay posting online, but no matter how much she tries to clear her name and the way that she's clearing her name is, is not even vindictive. She's just clearing her name from the allegations she was facing. It's not like she was going out of her way to shit on Z. They never stopped following her around. I feel These so frustrated and worn down slut, for her. A like, a this is so unfair. uses mental health to her advantage in relationships. And it was just really bad. Eventually, she moves on with a new man by the name of Lee. Lee is not a good person. According to those that were close to Little Kitty, Lee was using her for money. He scammed her into buying a house with his name on it, promising her that they were going to live oh, there yikes. together forever. In October of 2021, the month that she passed away, he allegedly drugged Little Kitty's water, invited his friends over. Constantine, that's totally him. fair. I totally there is get no that. no police report, but um, sources close to Little Kitty said that this happened. I'm not really sure. Now, this is where it gets really messy. Apparently, Lee vanished after all of this took place. Like, he left after the whole R-word alleged incident. So she went on this live stream Almost as a cry for help to get his attention. Remember how I said that I she was waiting for someone on the live stream? I think the timing is interesting because I like to hear that there might be some was trying to get his attention, and I don't know if she was trying to get his attention because I like enjoy hearing him suffer. Back, obviously or not. Maybe she wanted him caught by the police. I don't know. I don't even know if the alleged R wording <laughs> incident happened, but we do know that was the main purpose of the live stream. But the only thing that's clear is that little kitty was not doing well. People believe that she started with the live stream as a cry for attention and a cry for help. That's crime. That's and exactly right, Calorie. Yes. Attention. But with these people or egging more, her on, actually, it's crime and crap. Flooding into the live stream. <laughs> but, uh, call it whatever you feel. Crap and crime, crime and crap. It's important to mention one of the I accounts sure, that kept coming. egging her to drink the dark colored liquid was named You're the Most Precious and has an icon of a basketball player on their profile and nothing else. Remember, Z loves basketball. And I'm not saying it's him, but a lot of people pointed out this connection. It totally so him. kept egging little kitty on, telling her to drink more, drink more. I'm and little crash kitty's family would later try to take legal action against crime this account. Crime. But they Crafting were unable crap. to find out who even owned this account. <laughs> Doying in all these places, they just oh, shut down the account gosh. and never talked about it. Even after a little whoa, whoa, You got her raid whoa, 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 while you were gone. You had a raid. Hold on. I'm so yes. sorry. Sorry, guys. Um first off welcome raiders i am qb june uh you can call me qb you can call me june doesn't matter i accept both uh, my pronouns are she her i am a variety streamer i stream a lot of games i also stream this series that you're part of um that you have the pleasure to join in it's called crimes and crafts where i do a craft and i listen to a true crime story which you will see over here <laughs> that way um and uh today obviously we're lis listening to rotten mango chinese live streamer dies on stream then someone stole her body so that's kind of crazy but thank you first off for coming coming in cat lover um lover and her um and her viewers that's the name i was looking for viewers <laughs> Uh, thank you for trusting me with your viewers, Cat. As usual, she is awesome. What were you playing? Hold on, let me see. What were you playing? Can um, Shami, can you please uh, shout Cat out, please, please, please. Already done. 
You already did it? Oh my god. I already did it. Are you sure? You shouldn't be a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> um oh I, I'm I'm catching up. Mm. Who's lurking? Shadow's back to lurking. Um yes, you can use sub emotes. By the way, speaking of emotes, I've been drawing emotes recently. I might be uploading them very soon. Yes, welcome Raiders. June is dead. I kind of am. Not gonna lie. One of them I'm said blessed. I there was a conspiracy that I had killed you and stolen your stream. So <laughs> finally, somebody's got to take it. Somebody's got to do it. You guys are too <laughs> late. Oh, hi, hi, Shiro. Oh, you were part of Cat's raid. Awesome. Good to see you. Thanks for the support. Yep, yep, yep. Got you, homie. That's why I don't listen to dramas anymore. My life is bad as bad enough as is. I don't want to. Honestly, yeah, sometimes you got to disconnect from that, that kind of stuff, though. Like, Ellie, I hope you find your dog. Real. Oh, my gosh. I hope everything's Rangers okay. Is What's the name of this? Yes, Crimes and Crafts. I'll drop off. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Have a good night, Shiro. I'll talk to you next time. Um, Crimes and Crafts, Crafting Crimes. Everybody's guessing on the name. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You did Stardew. Very cool. You can draw. Oh my god. Draw me like one of your French girls. Maybe. Give me give me one of your pictures and I'll draw you. <laughs> uh, gotta go. My dog is missing. Ellie. <laughs> yes. Please. Please go. Go look for your dog. You're gonna lurk? No problem. Go for, go for it. Thank you for even stopping by. Get that uh, post stream care. Self care for sure. I certainly need it every time sometimes. Uh, I'm gonna lurk. Night night. Good night. Shadow rated me. Join my game. And stayed long enough for me to raid you. You guys are so sweet. You guys are so sweet. What I noticed though is Shammy reads chat faster. Uh, okay, like to be out fair, loud I'm not or going like a. I did. I did read the comments as they were coming in. Yes, like I. I said hello to everybody. Um, oh, you were going teleprompter like. Uh, Shadow, uh, <laughs> sure, ready to join me in the game, and then stayed long enough for me to raid you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> what are you selling over there, auctioneer? Shimmy. I do have a slower. Um, I have a slower. Uh, what do they call it? Tambor? I don't know. Dude. Yeah, to be honest, that's probably me being like nervous and like making sure to get everybody. I do that. <laughs> this little shit was in the closet again. Oh well, I'm glad you were able to find him. Shimmy yeah. seems soon. Sh oh, Shammy streams soon. So yeah, Ellie. Yeah, um, Shammy took the wheel and did a good job. Excellent. Well, shucks. Well, shucks. Yeah. Shucks. I, uh, I air found him. The Already. Already found him. Oh, I read that as a capital I. Thank God you're here. I was going to be fucking dyslexic. Um... <laughs> Shammy real good. She should definitely stream. So we can all suffer in horror games together. Yes, true. I, I'm going to be suffering soon. If y'all want to get a heart attack with me, yes. I do want to get a heart attack with you. Um we can we can do some Phasmo because I know that um fucking Werner and Eerie are gonna be playing and I'm jealous. I'm gonna be playing some Phasmo too. I wanna scream. Let me scream too. <laughs> 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 so that, that'll be me that'll be me too um get a vr boy you niggas only i got the money for that in my <laughs> maybe one day, donate, maybe one no, no, <laughs> honestly i i'm planning on if you if you want to check my throne in my about page i uh you can see some of the stuff that i have planned for future streams including a binaural mic so yeah mm -hmm. i can promise you it's a game changer yes 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 oh you you check your whispers when you have time. Oh, oh, that's for Constantine. If you put it on throne, it might just pop out, though. What do you mean? I think you know what he means. I think you I know. don't, actually. I'm kind of <laughs> fucking stupid. Per chassis. <laughs> per chassis. Oh, per chassis? That means a per chassis? I don't think so. No way. <laughs> Hydrate with my warm-ass coconut water? Hell yeah. Mm. Thank you for that, Hydrate. And caring for my well-being. You're wonderful, Ellie. I only use my points for self-care. Oh, 
What else is on here? No, oh, no ASMR whispers. Oh, these are kind of high, which is fair. Some of these are kind of kind of sussy too. <laughs> if anybody gets to to the last one for 80 80k, I will fucking die. <laughs> I'll die. Oh, you know, I saying that they wanted people to do it more, but Shemmy, it's it's your job. Go for it. Go for it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, it's good to be mindful of self care because when we get busy, I think we forget to eat and drink and stretch. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ellie, you can't be telling people to take care of themselves and then not take care of yourself. Go eat. Definitely. What should you cook? Um, what are your options? What do you like? <laughs> the chamois zone, yes. The chamois zone. <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> um, I had pizza tonight. So... You know, I wasn't cooking, but that was dinner. That's a good com uh, topic of conversation. What did everybody have for dinner tonight? Or whatever meal here that you just most recently ate. What did you have? Tell us the toppings. Okay. Um, we get this one that's kind of weird. It's like a deep dish. It's deep dish with like cheddar and mozzarella cheese. And it's jalapeno and sausage. It's kind of a weird combo, but it's so good. And you get garlic from Parmesan instead of um, instead of like the regular red sauce. It is delicious. I recommend it. Pizza so basic. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You can do whatever you want. But um, if you want something fancy that maybe like translation. I always miss it. Well, do you like you like you make your own pizza like crust and everything? Because that's pretty cool if you do. Um, you're currently eating, watching you on the big TV. Oh my god, I am honored. I am honored. I have, I don't think I've ever been watched on a big TV before, frankly. Um, what are you guys eating though? Because I asked a question like, what 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 what's the meal? So, I like that's cool. Um, I bake. I don't really cook though. Read is all the cooking. <laughs> um, I'll, I like to bake treats though, especially as it gets some. Oh my god, hello, Salary! Welcome! Welcome! I'm keeping the stream warm for June right now while she attends the thing. So you're at the chamois hour. <laughs> for the chamois five minutes. I don't know how long she'll be gone, but um, yeah. Yeah, you bake? What do you like to bake? Um, as it's getting in the cooler months, I like to bake with like pumpkin stuff, brownies, that sounds good. I like to make cookies, I like to make muffins, bread. I sometimes get a little fancy too, especially for Christmas and stuff like that. Hello? Oh my gosh, did I get raided again? What's going on? Hold on. It, it's salary from Cat Raid. <laughs> we're in Shemi Zone, tell us the toppings. Oh, people, we're talking about pizza here? Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> salary from cat you're late <laughs> you're late <laughs> um you bake as well it, oh, hey he wants to go out to figure out who's out there why why are you locking me in here um pizza is basic i i oh you're saying that you can't yeah pizza's great what's everybody's favorite toppings for pizzas like what's a safe bet for you and then what's your favorite, if you could say? EP Ellie, go to bed. Don't worry about it. You can keep us in the background if you want to. Um, Japanese homey food. Thin that sounds slice. amazing, Ducky. That sounds so good. Ooh, that does sound really good. That sounds excellent. Um, I think my favorite, uh, my go-to for pizza is just sausage and mushroom. Um, Shami has, Shami cannot answer this because she knows the answer to this. <laughs> what what is my least favorite topping that I cannot have or I just refuse to have on pizza? What do you think? What do people think? Well, you guys answer. I'm getting water myself. I'll be back. I'll be right back. 
Okay. All right, now we bombard her with follows. We follow her right now, even though she's not a streamer. Pineapple? Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and ducky, I love, I love Japanese food. It's so good. It's so warm and like, what's the word for it? Cozy. And it feels really nice. That was awesome. Tree bark. Tree bark is your favorite. Oh, fuck. Damn. You out here with the, um, you're really out here with the, the rare and exotic toppings, huh? <laughs> Red onion? You love red onion on your on your pizzas? Just red onion or just you have to have red onion in, included? Do I like pineapple? Um, pineapple's fine. I think pineapple's fine. I can't pick favorites for anything. It's fair. Okay. It's hard. Welcome back. It's it's hard because like food is just so good all the time. So oh my gosh. Um, okay, so my my least favorite topping, which is really funny, Constantine, because you said pepperoni and mushrooms, is pepperoni. And it's because, um, to be honest, though, um, big point of contention here is I say pepperoni because I mainly have had pepperoni that, you know, pepperoni slices that kind of like curl inwards and they make little dishes on top of pizza and stuff like that. That's the pepperoni I don't like. Because pepper uh, pizzas are already kind of oily, so the extra pepperonis that are cooking and then they now have oil within themselves, those just make me feel really heavy and gross. Um, yeah, I love a good like crunchy pepperoni pizza. It's like my favorite. <laughs> more for you, honestly, more for you. Um, Shami yeah. and I went to a local local place and make kimchi pizza. That sounds delicious. I kind of want to try that. I had Hawaiian good. burger. Never again. <laughs> Hawaiian burger. What's in a Hawaiian burger? What, what did it taste like? I mean, other than bad, I guess. Friendship with June ended. Oh, god damn. Shammy is your bestie. <laughs> we'll go get a big pepperoni pizza together. Yeah, you, guys, you guys can get a nice, <laughs> fancy pepperoni pizza together. Chicken shawarma pizza is good stuff, too. I have not had chicken shawarma pizza. That oh, is shit, yummy. I want, kim I want kimchi pizza. Ducky and I, are, we're going to go get kimchi pizza together. <laughs> yeah, you guys have to tell me where you, where you guys got it, though, because I've never heard of kimchi pizza, to be honest. I'm going to show me some pepperoni pizza for the party. Hell yeah. <laughs> My bestie is the sweater weather candle. <laughs> sure. It's burning down, too. It's, ni it's burning nicely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah. Um, shall we continue the story? I'm sorry for like going back and forth. I swear I did not. Listen, the guy told me we're going to be doing it tomorrow, which I was like, great. Awesome. Excellent. And then he suddenly said, hey, by the way, um, we're going to be doing it today. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm streaming. You're killing my bestie, QB. <laughs> Well, hopefully they'll at least like fix it and get it over with on the bright side. <sighs> yeah, I'm hope I'm really hoping so. Murder on a true crime true crime stream? Nuts. <laughs> a local streamer birthed this candle. <laughs> <laughs> Bestie Death Burner. Beth. Beth Beth. <laughs> Burner. Do you wanna do you wanna be on my stream? Do you wanna stream for me? Uh, I'll give you privileges here. Get in here for me. If you, you you can't stream on your own, you're gonna stream here too. Actually, you can join us. You can join us whenever you want. Stream for me, because I've gotta I've gotta handle this shit. <laughs> gotta handle the pl plumber shit. I, <laughs> I was looking for real money. Yes, I, it was. It was an open offer, which I was like, he could not take, or he just could. Burner, get in here. You <laughs> sounded so serious. How are you gonna be like? Oh my god, he took me seriously. It sounded like you're Every, seriously. Asking. Honestly, everybody takes me seriously. Whenever because I joke, joking, so whenever serious. I jokingly cry or get mad at Burner, he's like, you sound so actually mad at me. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Hello. God damn it. <laughs> Burn your I mean, I've, I've, you gave me the opportunity to make life harder for you, so I decided to take it. Hi, stream. I don't know how serious QB was about their offer because I was half a fucking sleep. I just hopped <laughs> in. Uh, clearly, they have found they are not entertaining enough on their own, so I have decided <gasps> to come and replace the Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Well, <laughs> clip and a half. Let me tell you, it's a clip and a half. somebody clip that shit. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, welcome Burner VT from Twitch.tv. Please follow him. Um, I don't have my keyboard. Can you do me a favor, chef <laughs> me? Get the fuck out. It's burner. <laughs> it's burner stream now. Absolutely, it's burner stream. Here, Here burner. Please, uh, death. Z posted. So what, Please what stop exactly clicking. You now can watch. Superior. Stop. We are watching true like crime. I, I will take full. And you can just like make some comments about it every now and then. Come talk to me. Or we're also doing art. So I should have like but art, I have all art to do. I'm disgusted by all of you fake justice people. Little Kitty ends up passing away, but this okay. is where the case takes a weird even thing to wake turn. up to. But all right, a month after I'm her sure. Death, Good she's morning. <laughs> and her ashes morning. are still it's... okay. Well, they're swapped. Six p.m. So come, take in her ashes. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to judge. And I'm replace not gonna her judge. ashes with a different powder. You wake up when you wake up. <laughs> Three people were found to be involved in the swapping of her ashes. <laughs> they admitted that they were trying to sell her to get married for her to Let's be married published after awesome. her death. Please. For her <clears throat> ashes to get married. Will you let me the on your ashes stream? of an unmarried, why did, beautiful young woman. Why would I? Well, just, yeah, why, why do you just why do you let me on there? Because <laughs> I trust like you. The... Oh shit, that was an actual, like genuine <laughs> answer. Oh. I thought this was I thought this was gonna be a shit, but okay, damn. I mean, <laughs> that's I mean that's the part of our 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 banter, right? You never know if I'm for real. I'm gonna give you something wholesome or I'm gonna hit you with something. <laughs> actually hit you with something okay okay i i keep you on your toes i keep you on your toes you know you do you do here i'm gonna move you over so you're not in my in my bee fur hold on there you are you're all good get out of my fur you yeah that's my fur is not for you okay fur is soft i know it's soft and it's not for you oh until later anyway so what all right what? <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We could have sold our ashes for $10,000. Thankfully, 10K. the culprits were caught and arrested and her ashes were returned. But this is probably one oh, of the stranger what? turns I've seen a case take. Like, this is one of the stranger truths I've seen. There are so many unanswered questions for me. Like, what? who gets married to a dead person? Like, who wants ashes of a dead woman? Why are same people, people that buy dead girls ashes like and for bath so water. much money? Those people. That's like you to leave. We all know. <laughs> Ellie, I was joking. Don't worry about been it. Turned into commodities. That's true. Like, that guy who has had to know this and they're going to try um, to make money yeah. off of no. women's bodies. Like, we've heard stories of it's, human trafficking where women are sold off into marriages as hostages, basically. We've heard it all, where One women's bodies are literally just bought and sold Miku, over sure. and over again against their will. I don't think I've ever heard of a case where a woman's body was more, worth more dead than alive. This case is incredibly triggering, oh. infuriating, mm -hmm. it's dark, but let's dive in. There is a really strange oh, connection between this case and another do your case thing, streamers. in a small rural town in Central Oh, streamers. <laughs> it was a drizzly um, summer night. The Jiang family had invited their family and friends over hey, Chad, for now that like a little busy, celebration. How do you really feel? They oh. went the extra mile. They had decorated their entire place. We're there chilling. were red we're paper invited. cutouts adorning all of the walls. Yeah. And you could see that each one had the word happiness written see, all on there. Is, just pop is that like a thing for not, parties like, or is there a specific event? Weddings, New Year. <laughs> I'm engaging. What do you the, mean? The happy <laughs> celebration. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Okay. True. So they got happiness. All over the walls. Turn up burner. Wall, I can't really. There's red curtains draped. Yeah, they're apparently having a giant a portrait one. of him. Yeah. So it, it's very interesting. That is the groom, and this was the wedding celebration. 
So, yeah, like you said, happy all over the walls. But nobody's dancing. No, no, this nobody's is actually celebrating. Nobody's counter. even I can't smiling. Cause chaos Everybody if they can't hear me. Dead silent. <laughs> it felt more like a funeral than anything. I can hear you though. I'm like, what's going on? You is this a me. toxic couple? <laughs> Nobody wanted to get married in the first place. Why does everyone seem depressed when there's a literal cele- when there's literal happiness over the walls? Xiao Yuan, we're going to call him X Jay, okay? They're a part of his initials. Okay. So XJ was XJ. the groom and he was 20 years old. Everyone was pretty happy about the wedding, technically. Okay, XJ had a really tough summer. You can he hear Burner? a pretty bad accident about a month ago. Burner, are you saying things and people can't hear you? Apparently. That did happen, yes. That did happen, <laughs> How's yes. How's that? How's that? How's that, chat? Uh, that... Hi, chat. I'm currently speaking. It's a test to how loud I am. Wait, play the video over Professional streamer right now. Now is good. <laughs> Go. So theoretically, okay, his loved okay. ones can you hear me with the video on? For him. This XJ's is how we do audio tasks. He runs into the room and he <laughs> yeah. the silence. Very he says, professional. The time has come for the bride and the groom to enter the bridal chamber. You're going to review what, what you said about QB. I didn't say. I didn't say anything about QB. All I said was, okay, now that QB's busy, what do you guys really feel? And then nobody like responded. Because they couldn't. A handful of people stood up. I didn't say anything personally. I just asked chat. And there was no twenty. To be honest, though. There was no couple nervous. When Werner went to the chair, bathroom like, oh yesterday at his bridal chamber. Did you, you know? do the same? There was nothing in the room. <laughs> no, no, no. I him. asked for people, how are we going to kill him so we can the take everything talking. in his will? My dear nephew. <laughs> God damn. I finally found you. I remember wife. that. You won't be ridiculed or lonely in the afterlife. It's nothing it's good. Your new wife will take it's, it's so not guess. worth it for multiple people to do it. Remember the accident a month ago that XJ was in? Mm -hmm. He never survived. I got the answer of arson and arson. He was so. in that coffin, and it was yeah, time to that take checks him out. to meet his new wife. His new wife. That's about option number one, two, and three. The family had bought her corpse, and bodies are not cheap. XJ's family had paid about Dude. four thousand U.S. dollars for XJ's new wife, and her name was Lee Ju. She was now going to make XJ a very, very happy. It's just going to be awkward if you say nice things, mean Lee things. Mean. <laughs> dropped her off earlier that day. What are you doing? And Meow, the uncle, he remembered opening up her casket for the first time. She was going to be changed Session. into this beautiful wedding yeah. dress, and she just looked perfect. She looked beautiful, peaceful. <clears throat> Everyone half expected her to look, I don't know, more dead, but she just looked very graceful. Nice. She was what they deem in the market a fresh one. They prepped Ew, both bride and groom what? for their special mm. day to be buried together as husband and wife. Now, as the uncle is getting ready for everyone to bring in, casket in, in out to the corpses, brides, so the bride's in casket, at least casket, is outside. There's a hole oh, dug for both of them. Her yeah. casket is in the hole, I think the and now they're gonna bring out XJ, I mean, like, bury him next to his new wife, like and do like a fresh. whole little I'm ceremony. Out. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I can be okay. But, but relatives I'm outside, they start screaming out. bloody freaking murder. They're like ants. Okay, just yeah, that sounds throwing that their shovels down and scattering into all these different directions. And it's, it's raining. They're getting drenched in rain. And Meow is like, what's going on? What's going on? They're taking a second to catch their breaths. It's a, it's a, Meow runs out and he's trying to see what the fuss is about. What is going on? The next part is going to sound like an urban legend, but it's not. The coffin in the grave was open, and the bride was sitting up, just strands of wet jet black hair covering her face, and she's throwing, waving her arms around. Her eyes look bewildered. Meow turns to his friends, oh, asking God. what the hell happened. One of his friends was in charge of helping to dig the massive grave. He suddenly heard these weird scratching noises. Like wood scratching noises. He's really spooked. Oh, she was buried it. alive. You know, I'm just probably scared because oh, I'm digging a little fuck? grave. You know what I mean? Like the environment is scary. Of course, I'm gonna be spooked out. I'm like paranoid. <laughs> Makes sense. But just for <clears> fun <throat> and for peace of mind, really, he starts calling out, "Are you a ghost or a oh. human? If you're alive, also, Vumpkin QB is gonna find a way to force Silence. out the compliment. Okay. Oh Trust like, me. Imagining things. What's wrong Wait, with me? harassment? Can't but then the scratching noise comes again. And it's even louder. Do you say that, Bernard? Like, huh? oh Why would you say that? I feel like I hear something. Could I say that? Just because it's true. So he just runs towards the true. house and grabs a bunch of people. Yeah, that's exactly it, actually. Him. And they're all reassuring <laughs> him on the way out to the no. gravesite. You're just imagining things. Like, you've been watching her corpse all day. Like, of course, you're just superstitious. You're overly freaked out with hanging out with a dead body all day. But when they get there, they all hear the scratching noises. 
And they're, you know, humans, we like to come up with these wild solutions. So these humans are like, maybe, maybe when her parents were putting her into the coffin, a cat had crawled in. The cat is now like, meow, get me out, bitch. So it's, it's a burner. cat. Burner's we got to pry it open and let the cat out. And everyone is agreeing. I'm like, not a cat. cat. True. I was the water. A cat so because true. the alternative is just bizarre. <laughs> So they pry open the nails off the casket. They pop Why? the lid open. Why? Why the cat? No cat. Shh. Instead, okay, cat boy. a woman pops up. A pale-faced, dark-haired woman shoots up from the coffin. And she's dressed in a wedding gown. I was about to ask gown. for context what's going on. And then I read the title. And now I think it kind of all makes sense. Almost like mumbling something. And she's just shaking. <clears throat> they did not stick around and find out what she was trying to say. They That's drop everything up, and though. they make a run for it. That is when Meow turns my life. to see her I was in the drowning coffin, in the shark of some and he asks, and when her bees came and lifted me out of the water, I was, are you a was ghost a or a human? Wow. This is also not in the past. That's crazy. I did that. <laughs> That's she why I said it's true. I'm the water. They I was the there. Because, <laughs> oh. Well, Meow was pretty damn sure it's not a ghost. He was pretty pissed. He had bought a dead human body. And I was there. I, I was, was the shark. Alive. Yeah. Was kind of I will, I will be right you know, back. kind of got scammed. Uh, okay. Ambulances rush out to the little town, and it was clear that she is not a ghost, and she needed help. Welcome desperate. back to reality. They Yuri. rushed her to the hospital, <laughs> and it was revealed that this woman, the bride that was almost buried alive, was yeah, a why woman is named Lee <laughs> Ju, who was deaf, mute, and had He's... a severe mental disability. She oh was walking down a busy road one day when a kind man, like a 60-year-old man, He's helping me with help strength. Her. She accepted his help, got into his van, and there were five other men in the car that seemed really nice. One of them even graciously offered her a water Girl? bottle. She no. took it and took a big, long sip. Girl, that's asleep, how you don't. And she woke up in this dark space. She had no idea where she was because she had been drugged, placed into the coffin, and was being prepared to be sold as Is a dead corpse. Is this still a streamer? The I'm men confused. wanted to kill her because that's their whole business. They find women, kill them, and sell their corpses as no, ghost not. brides. They would retire early with more money than they knew what to do with. That was their plan. Scoopy. But then they got cold that... feet. Or maybe they miscalculated <clears throat> the amount of drugs that would be needed to kill her. Lee was still that alive checks when out, she was actually. placed into the coffin. Just super, super unconscious. She finally awoke when they were getting ready to bury her. She can't hear. She oh, can't no, this speak, is her um, new mute, boyfriend. Or so something. she starts using her hands to feel her surroundings, and it's dark. Her boyfriend's she like new she's bride, right? She starts scratching the walls yeah. around her, and that's how she was saved. Once the truth came out, Meow felt really, really bad. He had no clue that she wasn't already dead. He had no clue that she had been killed to become his nephew's bride. Like, that's not how it works. He thought he had bought someone who had naturally died. And he was just marrying them after death. He was really shaken up about As this. you do. He right? wanted to help her and he took pictures of her. Posted <laughs> As anyone pictures would. All over social media and found her real family. <clears throat> now, the family that dropped her off with him, they were the attempted killers. They were not her family. A few days later, Lee and her family were reunited. Meanwhile, the police went to work down tracking the guy that had taken Lee. This man had a lengthy criminal record. Lee wasn't even his first victim. He had an entire human trafficking business. The man was 65 human years old. Human trafficking is He had retired, wild. but someone had told him, you know, you mm -hmm. can make a lot of money like, what the hell? selling dead woman's bodies. You were here the whole entire like, time? Wow. Let me sell I'm glad that you bodies. were here. But inventory. Right? You're focusing though. So the way that it started... Mm. He would spend most of his time driving around with his help you focus, looking nice. for vulnerable women. Now, yeah. since he's 65, he would use his age and kind appearance to his advantage and ask these women for help or help these women. Most of the women he targeted either had some sort of disability or had something going on where they were extra vulnerable. He felt like they were easier to target. This man did not see these women as real people. They were just inventory to him. He would kidnap these women, and at first he thought, I don't want to kill Selling her. dead woman you know, bodies? Yeah. I could go to jail for a very <laughs> human long Human organs? Time for that. I want to just yeah. sell these women. I just want to be a human trafficker. I That's don't it. Know. So simple, so innocent. For selling I'm just going to look bodies? for buyers. I'm going to sell these women while they're still alive. I so think he would so contact these like, super poor fact, families in the like, area who had sons that were it's looking so for wives. <laughs> now, these are families that don't have much, so no woman wants to marry into this family. But these families are willing to pay a ton of money to give their son finally a marriage. So he would pretend that this young woman was a single female relative of his. And the bride price to buy her 
from him. Imagine your only chance of getting married being some dead person. He's goodness. also really honest and said that, you know, <laughs> they have either a mental or a physical disability. But again, these families, they weren't looking for wives or daughter-in-laws. They were looking for birthing machines. It was less about love yeah. and companionship. Side note, the disabilities also meant that it would be hard for the women or the victims to tell the truth of what was going on. And it would also mean that they were being R-worded. Because if they have a disability to that extent where they cannot communicate what happened, I imagine that they cannot consent. So he yeah. had first reached out to these families, and this was his business model when he first started. <laughs> but the man was greedy. He was upset that he would have to go through all of this work to kidnap one girl. Then he would be able to sell her just one time. That's a lot of work. So he's like, there's got to be a better business plan. So he creates a way to infinitely sell her over and over again. I literally want to punch these people in the face and honestly bury them alive. So he decides to start a sex trafficking ring. He's like, human trafficking, sex trafficking. Let's do it. He starts a brothel in his house, if you will, where men will come to, quote, meet their needs with these women who clearly cannot consent, but they're also extra vulnerable. He was actually caught doing this women were rescued from his house they were being held hostage they were rescued by the police i mean it was clear that they were forced into this but he goes to prison for like a few years gets out and goes a right back years. to his human trafficking scheme and this time he's like you know what i've learned my lesson <laughs> Dead people yeah, don't talk. so he didn't like selling women while they were alive so he wanted to sell them dead in some parts of the world women's bodies are worth more dead than they are alive it's a statistic that makes you want to gag. Even with dead women's bodies, there are levels, rankings. The best type is what they call a fresh corpse, a fresh one. These are bodies of women that had just died. In fact, negotiations for the sale of these bodies typically happen while the person is still laying in the hospital bed okay. fighting for their lives. Wow. And the parents are usually in on it. The starting price is, depending on the supply and demand, $12,000 on average for a super fresh woman's corpse, but can go up to $50,000. The second grade is what they call a quote, That is a lot of corpse. money. What the? These are the bodies of people who have died a few weeks to a few months ago, and they range anywhere between $7,000 to $12,000 on average. Then lastly, you have dried meat. These are corpses that have died years ago, but they still have uh, uh, dollars. Gross. And I kid you not, but the corpses of girls who were more well off or more Literally educated, they sold for hire, even though they're dead. Okay, this is what do they you know, do with them? Just marry them? How Marilyn Monroe's body went missing. And other stuff, for probably. Hours after she died, and oh, this also whoa. reminds me of how back in the yeah. day when queens would die. Um, Usually it was only female attendants that were allowed with her body before she was buried because wow. Yeah, because if you let a man in there some of these men will do Some very vile things. I mean if you want a whole case on that, please let me know but that's all to say a dead woman could sell more Than a living <clears throat> one and you can keep guessing why but I'll tell you soon enough so the only problem that this guy had living was women that aren't he only had living women. Guys. You know, where is this going? They you know exactly know. where. We can't have he that. would advertise that <laughs> yeah, a close we can't have young them unmarried no. relative of his had just suddenly passed. He would tell families with dead sons that he was heartbroken, that his his niece would never be married. She would be alone for the rest of eternity because she was unmarried, which means she's going to go to the afterlife a single woman. I mean, oh, no. how can that be? She was so smart, so beautiful. Surprisingly or not so surprisingly, it worked. For each girl he kidnapped off the street, he would find a family with a dead son that had a few extra thousands of dollars, and they would facilitate what is known as a ghost marriage. The dead groom's family, that is a dead gross. bride, That's performs so a wedding to bury them together. The fact that her so family that is okay with that, the family afterlife. of these bodies the are okay was with so that? Good. Dude, ghost like wedding matchmakers were making tens of thousands of dollars a month if they were really good. But how many young girls were dying naturally? Whose Gotta family go real would allow quick. them go to be sold it, as ghost brides for a My cut face of got proceeds? Red from Not many. You while this so these ghost matchmakers <laughs> would make their own ghost brides Shadow, by what the killing fuck? Welcome women, back. or they would go rob random graves. Side note, the man was arrested by the police and they promised a severe punishment. He was actually found by the townspeople before he was arrested and severely beaten up to a pulp, like Damn. bandages all over his face, beaten up. I've tried scouring <clears> the internet for what his sentence was, but I just couldn't find it. If you're familiar with this case, please let us know. But he was caught. He was taken in. 
but the pressing question is still what the hell is a ghost marriage <laughs> and, I'll tell and you why, why is there a robust first, industry around ghost marriages because i get living weddings <laughs> like we're in the middle of planning a wedding and it's so expensive the there's so much money nowhere. to be made i guess you need in the to industry. watch but this. ghost weddings like what is going on show on also, netflix just because it's not it's part only of available culture, in the philippines if it's not a part of your culture or what you know, it doesn't mean. Are that you it's an incel and can you even date a living woman? I do so get you have a little sense that when a lot of cultures aren't like stereotypical Western Are you an cultures incel because think that people like to think is, of it as two D is better than three D as less developed. It's just a different culture. Different doesn't make it inferior. So let's keep it civil in the and comments. No. Also, this isn't necessarily a Chinese no, thing. Ghost know. marriages are illegal in China. And the ghost marriages happen oh, all around the world. Legal. There have been cases like this in China, and I'm talking about them today, but there's a lot everywhere. That's now, so weird. There is I've never heard of it before. Legend in China, and I wonder if it's like an urban legend to you guys, but I've received it on the research end as like an urban legend. Or maybe the it's fact you have to make a law saying so like, like, no, you can't marry a dead body. That some cultures give taking red the packets, zombie like red fetish envelopes, <laughs> and they're stuffed with cash, and it's usually grandparents giving it to the grandchildren or parents giving it to their underage kids, and it's a way to celebrate. But there are some rules to receiving a red packet. So red packets traditionally, they're a good thing, you know, they're very good. So during Chinese New Year, you get it and you have to receive it with both hands and it's like a birthday card. You gotta act like there's no cash in there. You gotta act like it's just a token of love, a symbol of family, <laughs> right? And you can't really open it in front of people. You gotta thank them and be like, oh my God, this is such a surprise. My bitch ass opens you take it. it home and then right you're there. gonna go peek. You only Money. Need 20 right? bucks. So one might imagine that if you were walking around and you find a red pocket just laying on the street, you'd be like, oh my God, that's yeah. exciting. I'm going to pick it up. But there are certain parts of China where they tell you, do not ever pick up a red pocket on the street. But you're like, why? I already know what's in there. It's cash. Some, some little 12 year old forgot to bring his red pocket. He dropped it. If you pick it up, you might open it up and there might be a little bit of money. And curiously, a couple of strands of someone's hair. And someone's nail and horoscope information. And you're like standing there like, why is there hair and nail clippings in this red pocket? Like that is weird. But while you're looking down confused, that's when they might strike. People might jump out and say, congratulations. You're the lucky one chosen by fate to marry my child. The only problem is, <laughs> what? my child is dead. In a lot of cultures, it is believed that if your loved one, family what member, the fuck? your Hell child no. dies single, Can you not just say no thanks and go home? Alone, <laughs> like, yeah. And nobody's going to care for them in the afterlife. But not only that, dead single Rip relatives will child, bring bad man, luck to the but... living family members because they're roaming around. They're lonely. They're, they're anxious. They don't have a partner. They're not satisfied. So isn't that fantastic? Even in death, nobody is allowed <laughs> to be alone in peace. <laughs> So what do you do if your family member dies before they get married? <laughs> you find someone to marry them after they die. But it's hard to find a willing participant. It's just not something you ask a favor of. Like, hey, family friend, do you mind marrying my dad uncle? So you can be you can be fused with him in the afterlife and your souls will be forever intertwined and you can never really be with anybody else in the afterlife. Quick and this, there is also the culture night. that puts so much you casual on IOU situation. marrying. So families will put out red pockets on the ground to lure so potential brides and grooms. Yeah. Yeah. And they will tell you that you will be cursed with bad luck for the rest of eternity. So what do you do? Okay, maybe you marry their dead child. Sometimes it's rather innocent. Like, I don't know if that's the right word to describe it, but you go with them. They throw a little Red dress attention. on you. You hold a picture of their deceased child and you do this little makeshift wedding ceremony in their home. It's not legally blinding. It's potentially spiritually binding if you believe in it, but it's the type of situation where I believe if someone has a hard time saying no, you might find yourself in that situation on a really bad day. Y'all just, just jealous can't afford my lifestyle. These for are the more innocent forms of ghost marriages. <laughs> and none of this equates to like technically anything will be illegal. This is not something that you would want to put out there. Like Imagine China being would not so support polite this, and afraid of complication that you end up marrying a dead this. Chinese netizens make would not support family this. Happy. But it's not <laughs> technically illegal. You're just like That's taking a couple of pictures wild, and you're like, though. this is really weird. I'm going to leave now. Thanks. But there seems to be a pipeline between these ghost marriages and murder. And that's what we're talking about. But the only way to get to the motive of these murders is we need to understand ghost marriages. And there's two types of them. So the first one is like the one that I just told you, the most common type where a family member dies, they're unmarried, and you find a living person to have this almost fake 
ceremony with them and you're like, okay, I promise to take care of them in the afterlife whenever I die. Ha <laughs> ha. We're married. It's not <laughs> legally binding. Nothing. They, you don't even have to know this person in real life. You don't even have to date them in real life. You're just doing it to make someone happy. Then the other ghost marriage is the one that starts getting illegal, is the one that the government starts being very, very sensitive about. <laughs> where both parties are dead. Most likely Lumpkin the two dead no. parties have never met each other in no real pickles. life or no they pickles. never dated in real and life. No. No but their pickles, surviving no family members marriage. will together hold a ceremony for their marriage. <clears throat> so let's say my daughter dies, oh my gosh. his Fucked son up. is dead, they're already buried separately. We're like, you know what, let's have a ceremony, dig them up and rebury them together. So that they're what? not alone in their little grave sites and in the afterlife. Dude. This is dangerous because when you're digging up People dead are bodies, so like, that's not only just a um, biohazard. All this, so you don't end up with the worst thing There's ever, ever is not being married. Like, Jesus, complicated. man. <laughs> and what's interesting is that these two families that have never known each other, their kids have never dated, but they will treat each other like in-laws after the ceremony. Right. They will genuinely consider each other family. So if I need money, that family oh, might I'm be glad you're enjoying it, giving Ellie. me money because we're technically family because our kids are now buried together. But it's basically a grave relocation and a quick ceremony. That's about it. But they consider each other family. As a non-Chinese person, I don't really think I can have an opinion on this. I just feel like if nobody's getting I have hurt, an opinion on this and it pressure, sucks. Who am I to tell someone how to grieve? Like, who it's am I to be upset? One. But why? This because is I not. Why this is not it. Want their kids to get it's married now it. in the present you. life, especially in East Asia. This. They want to keep the family unit. Well, let going. Me they tell want you. grandchildren. But I mean, with all due respect, if you're dead, none of that really you're matters not have anymore. Right, why right, go right. through all like, this trouble and pay thousands of dollars to make sure your deceased relative the is most married superstitious even in death? People. A lot of people in China believe it goes back to Nuwa. 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 So there is a popular legend, and it's not like debated as history or fact. It's, it's not a religious take, is what I'm trying to say. It's just a legend that people like to tell. A woman named Nuwa was the creator of humans. She lived in the mountains with her brother since, you know, she was just bored all day. She would fiddle with clay. She would make these little human shapes out of clay, and eventually all these clay figures would become humans. She would breathe life into them, and they were like her precious children. She's like the mother of humans. I had no but idea. But one this day, the fire existed. god and water god get into this huge fight, and during the fight, they damn fire the gods and water gods on Earth. This is significant Always goddamn problematic. It is said that the problematic tallest mountain on Earth is the one attack. holding up the sky. <laughs> So now the sky is coming down, crashing down on humans, kill, almost killing all of Nua's children, her humans, her precious humans. She does her Dude, best her to repair the project. sky, Man. but the human population has dwindled down. They're you so weak, they're barely God, surviving. Man. And her brother told her, we need to repopulate this earth. It is the only way. She was very disgusted. Oh, it's, it's very much giving. What do you mean, step bro? We're literally siblings. <laughs> she said, absolutely not. But then she thought about it and she said, but these are my precious humans. She was conflicted. Just so the two of them, they both like, it, it, this is not fuck a weird brother, situation please. where they both liked each other. The brother don't was like, they climb brother. up to the mountains and they ask the gods. They both light their own fires and they say, we are the only people left. What do we do? If the lords allow us to be husband and wife, may the flames intertwine with one another, or else may the flames forever disperse, meaning <coughs> literally wipe out the population. The flames intertwined into a yin and yang shape. What? So they got married. They did it, but they always covered their faces while they did it with fans because regardless, oh, that's okay then. To each other, but yeah, the yeah. whole point of the it's story really okay, is marriage is so important fans in this story face, that it's, it's almost okay. the only thing that can save this world. It is almost <clears> directly <throat> applied to each family unit. The theory being, if you aren't David married before you die, you are true, killing out your bloodline. You're just... wiping out your I'm population. What do you think? Not even just, even just your immediate bloodline, but it's like bad luck to the whole family bloodline. Because I'm guessing if you probably give your brother, the humans would have gone extinct than I did. That's and then sprinkle in misogyny. The sentiment became came and this is back in the dynastic times that a woman was only supposed to have one husband her whole life <clears throat> for eternity meanwhile men could have more than one wife but there was a loophole like technically men could remarry and sleep with other women but of they would they never can. be his wife <laughs> only his first wife is the wife these are all just like whatever 
but women weren't allowed to do that, okay? So if a wife dies, the husband yeah. can basically remarry. But if the woman, husband dies first, right? in some extreme times back in the day, like thousands women. of years ago, the wife would be thrown oh into the same God. coffin as her deceased husband while she was still alive and be buried alive with his corpse because it is her right, wifely oh life God. duty like, you to be with this? him this for karma. eternity this and forever. Karma. I don't even want to go with you. To oh, no. Okay. The gods like, are angry with you. You got to go. The gods are angry with everywhere. me. But or if her deceased like, husband was really a made it, she would be thrown into the furnace to be burned <laughs> alive with her dead husband. This is like way, way back in the past, okay? This is kind of like the, am I the asshole that we read? The beginnings of ghost <laughs> marriage. People started to believe that bad shit happens like how the brothers when got away with single like, deceased family members. Sleeping with their partners or whatever. So naturally, the introduction of ghost matchmakers starts to emerge. And there is more to it than just burying bodies next to each other. There's like a whole ceremony. So if both parties are dead, it's pretty so simple. Elaborate. The groom's family will go to pick up the bride's memorial stone, like her tombstone, okay? And it's supposed to be symbolic because in Chinese wedding custom, the groom and his groomsmen will go pick up the bride from her house. And the groom's family picks up the bride's tombstone. And it's said that the bride's family is supposed to act very sad. Oh, because like they're departing with their daughter. They're like their daughter is getting married off now. Wow. So they're supposed to cry and like put on a whole show and chase after them, which is very interesting. Is that like a thing in regular <clears> customs <throat> when people are alive? Like, so I, I, yeah, sometimes I guess. Where it's like a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like parents will cry. What? and mm, Yeah. Goodbye, daughter. That's very dramatic. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'll right never here. see you ever again. Okay, so they bring it to the groom's tombstone. See you next week. Some side by <laughs> side, grab pictures of both the groom and the bride, tie the pictures together with red string, and the new couple will have to have dumplings to symbolize family, reunion, and wealth, noodles dumplings. to symbolize longevity. I love which fucking dumplings. It's kind of ironic. I don't know about anyone else, but dumplings are like some of my died. favorite foods. It's not really Let's longevity, dumplings but good ones. alcohol. Because in Chinese yes. customs, you guys do the intertwined alcohol drink mm, mm-hmm. during the real weddings so i have like a shard in my and head this here, is like how they do the whole ceremony then they pick a good day in the month either the second day Sometimes third six or that. eight these are know. typically yeah. good numbers never the fourth of the month okay they will go dig up the two corpses me, Turkey. dig the bride out house husband and have bring her to where the husband is not doing these things and bury aside. her with the husband so now they're married. I love working dead. too. I love working. It's important too. to know like that this is just one of the ways to do it. There, it may vary region by region. Oh, yeah. But Burner. you can see, you know, that if yes. one party isn't I've dead, it's trickier. It's just weird. There was yes. even your back in the day a way to have yes. sex with your ghost marriage partner. I would hope so. Which I don't sex condone with any of this, and neither partner. does the Chinese population. But apparently, you could consecrate <laughs> the marriage if one person was alive and one person is dead. So you start with incense and you talk to your dead partner while you always have been and. And you connect Here's the your ghost partner and the real world, and then again, I don't oh, condone okay. this, but this is what the research said. Step ghost two: If bat. you want certain body parts from oh the God. earthly realm to be touched by a certain someone in the spiritual this realm, this is a bad to day to like. This is a bad day to have low spiritual sense. Anymore, but I'm just <laughs> letting you know what I found in the research. So what I'm trying to say is, what if is, you lose your they wife? They take this very seriously. Just ghost lose your wife. We're taking very very seriously <laughs> back way. then, and it was to save your loved like, ones. I, and I can't. I would need to have a wife first to lose a wife. If someone genuinely made me believe mm-hmm. that I had to save my loved one's soul. That's fair. So that is then. How about now? Are ghost marriages still a thing? It's very rare, and it's only Those occurring amongst so the super superstitious, or in I never heard about that for the residents. Me neither. Even and then, she says other it's rare, cultures but it's definitely it? not happening in like the middle of Hong Kong, of the middle of Shanghai, and it's typically for dead sons. Now, well, with current times, we get into historical and liberal, cultural context sure. because China's one child policy. So <clears> in the eighties, yeah, China Shanghai started a one child policy. That's exactly as it sounds. Each family unit was only allowed one child. It was to prevent rapid overpopulation amongst. <laughs> other things and it just ended in 2016 like and sex, if i'm not mistaken like china is actually having the over? opposite problem just like south korea where nobody wants preventing to have even sex? one child so they're really struggling i don't now. think you need to do but much to prevent the that policy was in effect <laughs> there was this huge huge heavy gender Nature bias towards <laughs> males if families were only allowed one child they wanted a son to quote continue the family name and the bloodline this led to a lot of pregnancies being terminated oh because the, the gender was that? not what they hoped for and it's sexist so these jokes. are also not That's gender reveal parties I where people are like the name oh man i really wanted blue line, line. Like, i want to throw baseballs with my yeah, son instead of a girly girl it's not like that in china 
back then especially and probably even now anywhere in this world my dad also it's wanted fucking to be rough to be a girl, a girl. or why would guy. any mom want to bring a girl into this world to see her suffer the same life that she suffered so far you get it it's not yeah it's, it's, not, like, oh, like, that's it's not like china is just filled with moms that are obsessed with putting boy mom in their instagram bio it's very dark boy mom. and it said that during this time boy a lot of baby girls were abandoned really? or left really adopted. mom of boy it said adoption boy rates lady. overseas all right time for you guys to uptake in female go adoptions streamers, from go. china compared to male adoptions from china this like so now that Cube is busy, what do you guys really feel? Unbalanced. There are way too many. <laughs> like right now, this is a problem. I'm doing it again. Way too many men. I have one bit. Enough women. Don't marry and when or men fuck grow up and become a marrying age, not enough women. Oh my god, marry. that well, this wasn't gonna be a fuck to marry kid, but problems. but all right. Women or specifically I mean... <laughs> female bodies what? are in high demand. High demand, low supply. For the male population, historically, has been a very, very, very scary combination. Daughters have become commodities. And there's a lot of talk about this. It's insane how one law can so greatly affect so many things. But kidnapping, human trafficking, purchasing brides has gotten so much worse because of this one policy. If there are this few women that want to marry men who are Ellie, alive, you final men imagine you're how few women are willing to marry a dead person. In terms Burner's of just chilling here, huh? Industry, yeah, I mean, supply for ghost brides I don't know. I was called lower. in, and I think we that was a joke. This meant there was a lot of money to me. Yeah. Made. And this whole system, which originated as people I was invited. To peace with their mm -hmm. deceased loved ones, starts transforming. That came in. Really I came to cause problems, and I had to go chain. for a second. But now I'm back. But that will now would just be weird not to return. I'm stuck in a social faux pas is what I'm trying to tell you. It, it, talking globally, not just in China. So the vine the industry is just the sale of you dead enter? Is that automatic, or do you just a do that? professor from Shanghai? That is. <laughs> it would be so funny to say whenever I come in, it just vine booms because I will it. So, but no, it's marriages. it's a feature the that you can uh, put in your Discord. If you pay for Nitro, you can put a sound to when you uh, when you come in. That's hilarious. This doesn't include mm -hmm. wedding ceremony fees. I I've been meaning to change mine to what the fuck is up, Denny's. The families would still give gifts to the bride's family mm -hmm. and like i said when there's money to be made hey while you make food and go to sleep early because class at eight good to murder luck so godspeed six a chinese yes. woman in the shangxi Shang Shang province poisoned her ex-husband with rat poison he died she was sentenced to life in prison the deceased husband's brother, Yuan, was left to pick up the pieces. Aw, Jane is delightful. It's super nice to me when I first came in here. It's given me a space to be open to my life, which is a complicated yeah. thing. And always felt welcome to be an incredible community so here. And I look forward to everyone's dream. So I love getting to sing forever. It's singing forever. It's in the Hall of Fame. It's so cute. Okay, now delete that. We can't know nice things have been said. The ghost matchmaker sat down and asked his brother about the zodiac sign. Well, Burner, you still need to join my cult. Remember the original story where he only wanted like certain zodiac signs to come to the back with him? Apparently, you can't really tell. No, delete. I don't have the power. Unfortunately, I totally would. their zodiacs. I have okay, no okay, power. I'll delete it, but I'll, I won't forget. Zodiac, okay, they I'll are never known forget. For not getting along can, with the zodiac. Then you you got Jade and what? Is it link click? Because so I've already done link click. Zodiac sign. This is important because, you know, when both parties okay, are married, they can get to know each other. But I now this delete. is a dead marriage, meaning oh, this is the So you're going to have to if you're curious. Otherwise, immortalized forever. Your kindness is immortalized forever. Oh, Cult of the Lamb. She just haven't showed up yet. sorry. She's about to pass away. They were also looking okay. to give their daughter okay. a husband. Just time them out. Just time them out for like perfect. one second. Okay. A few months Can later, Yuan receives the girl's yeah. You mean already for link click? I've already joined you the right. link click cult. Even what more do you want to supervise? Okay, okay. Which, well, I'm note, ghost up. marriages <laughs> are illegal in China. But People in bad. rural areas, <laughs> police might look the other way. But he just wanted to show them, like, I'm doing everything I can to do this in the right way. Like, I'm not killing anyone. It like does go rare ham. Once it's in a while stories you hear. I'm not My doing that. Died. Like, I'm literally purchased a corpse Useless. and her family is okay with it. Her family sold her to me. And we're just going to bury her with my brother. Nothing shady is going on. The girl, let's call her May. May was dead. So this much was true. The police watch the couple get married and be buried next to each other. And for about a year, everything was good until it wasn't. The matchmakers, they went on their oh, merry way, patting themselves on the back for creating another blessed Is this still about ghost marriages? I feel like I got lost at some point. They were busted for killing a girl. It's like one story that kind of meanders. were working as a team and they but a lot of things. young woman 
turned them into corpses. Um, they were arrested for robbery, and during the investigation, with enough pressure, they had nice, to be nice streamers. In Good job, market. streamers. The police start Thanks, the dots with their we, claims. We're not the pets in a cage. You can't <laughs> go, streamers. Go. Here's your pet little streamers. Good job, streamers. I've been talking to the police to talk about I have how some he tea, but from his daughter. I'll talk about it later. Oh, they start investigating. Oh yeah, and, and what they dog. found was no. really, really nefarious. Oh. May was a young woman oh. with a severe mental disability. Her I'm mind so excited was never to develop beyond the age of six years old. She wasn't able to fully learn how to use the rest oh, of yeah. her own. It has to get to you first. Very impoverished. It get to me first, but they didn't really know what to do. They felt like this was no future for her. When you and get it, when she was about to turn but when 20, I get it, I'm really excited. It's like a, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink it. Same she should be not married. all of it. But I'm gonna drink it. I you have a kettle, right? Don't Do know her kettle. parents. I don't know why they thought uh, this, and I'm sure I, I we heat come up a from pot of water. Different socioeconomic background, so it's very hard for me to put myself in that position. But I do the same. That's also. kind of crazy. They were like, at least maybe she can have kids. Mind you, she can't consent to sexual activity because she can't. They said, I know my daughter can't fall in love with someone like other girls her age, but maybe she can still make babies. So they offered her up as a birthing machine, basically. Gross. They were honest with potential singers and potential grooms and said, she's what not going to be a perfect wife. She's not going to be a companion. Tale is she's going to need a lot of care, but <laughs> she can be R-worded and forced The gross reality of our societies. I haven't started what is that going yet. On right now? A man named Don became her matchmaker yeah, to find her a oh, husband. No, She's still alive. She has no terminal illness. Spoilers. He finds a client named P who's interested in buying May. P straight up told Don that his only requirement in his new wife is that she can give birth to his children. He literally doesn't care if they get along. So Don brings P to May's family home. He meets with the parents, pays them 300 US dollars. Why the fuck is this Baldur's Gate trying to open? There is no price on humans. 300 well, from everything is all, we just not about, a lot. That's very cheap. That's he incredibly fun. He kidnaps cheap. May and brings her home. After a while, he demands a refund. He said May is more work than he thought, and he didn't want to take care of her because she was, and I quote, stupid beyond imagination. Again, I oh. hate this man. I hate this man. Stupid beyond but imagination? Did you mean me? Who informed him she could never give birth. So he's like, I don't. Even want to keep our wording her because Can she can't you give have my birth? children. He drags me back to, to matchmaker, demands a refund, and says she's just another burden. I want my money curse. back. And curse. Curse. This is, curse. Okay. Curse. Back. Curse. This, Instead of bringing May back, this is like not the first time, first time you have mentioned Mpreg in my presence. Just gonna sell her again. Don tries to sell her again. You guys were talking about it. To purchase her as a wife, and that's when he bumps into another matchmaker. But that matchmaker was not a matchmaker for the living. Uh huh. They were a ghost remember. Oh my God! I, I need you to know. You mentioned it. A killer, but I, I need you to know. Murder. Every yeah. time I stream, I enter a fugue state. I don't know where I am or who I'm talking like to or the words leaving my mouth. What a movie! It's like I black out. I entertain people and I I leave. And you were offering me a couple thousand USD. What do you got remember? I mean, clearly, clearly you got something planned because it's not worth a couple thousand. I do. Supposed to remember that. Getting no hits. So like, I remember oh, that because it's convenient. I'm going to kill her. I'm going to sell her as a ghost bride. I'm going to make <laughs> literally maybe 10 grand. So I'm going to profit a lot from this. And he's like, oh my God, I want to get into this industry. So they both profited about $4,000 from murder, for murdering May. They found a buyer, which was Yan. They spooned borax, white powder used for heavy duty cleaning, spooned it to a piece of bread and forcibly fed it to May. She trusted what? them and did what she was told. The poison is known to work very, very slowly, which can you imagine how painful that must have been? It lasted hours. And even when it was oh time God. to bring her to the quote groom's family, she was I still sent you alive, my pick. I can't wait barely to but still alive. Don didn't want to wait any longer, I so he leaned over pick. and strangled her to death. <laughs> She was brought to Yuan, who buried Close her with his brother, who passed. He had no idea that May was killed for this. He had no you idea that the matchmakers it, were just murderers. You asked for it. it seemed in his own little it's way he just like wanted shit. the best for his brother. He was devastated to learn what happened to May. May's <clears> family, his, the parents also I said I'd draw, but I they don't draw well. They ever trying to get her to marry and have children. Which Never said that. That's a lie. You May's know parents a lie. also said they should just leave her buried. I don't know. I've seen your sketches. If they were going to dig her up, uh, there was a huge chance her body would be It was good. Oh, well. Not to mention the Blorbo, which was also good. And sold in another ghost marriage. 
So again, these three matchmakers Your they were arrested was dead. and severely punished in China. So was the sketch. In China, intentional murders can receive a punishment of anywhere between 10 Burner? years to the death penalty. Yeah. What? Selling dead bodies counts as demoralizing corpses, Fine. which is also very, very I'll illegal. I'll take your support. What the ghost matchmaker God said was zero it. remorse. I'm it's just not really a choice. It. Money comes in fast in this <laughs> job. Like if choice. I didn't get caught, I'd probably just do a few more and retire. But now I'm ruined. The cases we covered today are all from China, but ghost marriages happen all over the world. And most of the times they just aren't called that. And most of the times the two parties know each other. In 2017, a 26 well, year old in Thailand. Honestly, I don't know if I want to say it's better, attack. but she wore a white wedding dress next to his body, which was also it just kind of makes more sense to me. They I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like her. A year earlier in France, a 25 year old married her boyfriend <clears> after he <throat> got into a fatal car accident. Okay, that I can understand. It makes sense. She stood in her wedding gown next to his picture as the city's mayor read their vows. That's like sentimental. It's, it's not like interesting. I must be married. There are a lot of stories like this. Yeah, that's and just if, fanaticism. If the story yeah, is right fanaticism. and they knew each other fanaticism. prior to the marriage, it's almost yeah. an endearing I'm in. story because no, marriage really actually. is a beautiful thing. Like to commit to someone is a beautiful thing. And I can see how people would want to be married to someone that they want to spend the rest of their lives with. But maybe they never but, got the chance to. Like in these international stories where a partner but, passes away too soon. But, I but do think ghost these people where the don't two know. Parties don't know each other. People, yeah, I mean, there's so many ways that it can turn into this corrupt, scary system. So again, this is not something that Chinese people condone. Netizens were outraged every time a case like this came out. The Chinese government does Did not condone netizens? this. This happens yeah, in netizens. other parts you of the world as well. This? But No, no, I've heard of netizens. It's just like, it's been a while since I've heard someone actually do you say think that netizens. it has to do with the level of spirituality <laughs> that somebody has? Because that's a, that's an sure old I'm just term. Not that spiritual of a person. That is an so old it's term. really hard for me to put myself in that mindset. Like, do you believe it's true if someone passes away single? I don't even know what honky tonk, tonk actually means. What are your thoughts on today's episode? Doesn't just mean like. And have you ever heard of the human traffic? Playing around? around. Genre of music? Please let me know and stay safe. Maybe. I'll see you guys. I mean, I know. For me, like, I know it as a barbecue bye. place. That's all I know. I know it as like the song. It's got that honky tonk, hoopa tonk, a tonk. Yes. Hey, country. I I hate country. That video so was crazy. I don't like... Yeah, I I don't. Oh, did you find another? No, no, no. This one. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you for um for listening to that one. Not gonna lie, that was creepy and yucky. That was pretty yucky. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I'm back. Even dead people get more maiden than me. Cuts teen. <laughs> I said yeah, I wanna... discussing things every time me out. I'm a terrible viewer. What? <laughs> yeah, Wumpkin was really going off, you know, like Yeah. June I, fuck, I, I... she licks sidewalks sometimes. Like she said that. So, you know, they said that, excuse me. So, you know, I had to like time them out. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Oh. Mm -hmm. That happened. That happened. They... Was there. I, I was there. I lick sure. sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah, what they she said? said? You, you, they eat, said you, eat the gum off of, you eat the gum off the sidewalks, too. Yeah, terrible mm, stuff. That sounds so good. <laughs> I had all the bad opinions. <laughs> hey, that one's going in the quote. No, like no, the book. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I need Stop to saying regrettable time. things while I am in the presence. <laughs> That's true. I really shouldn't. I say a lot of regrettable things, honestly. I got a gem stuck in my pen. Before I... Before I, um... <clears throat> I even started here, uh, like streaming ever, and I was just on a regular Discord channel. Um, uh, we started, the Discord channel started um, a quotes page just because I would just say the most out of pocket shit sometimes, and they really needed to just make a record book. It's I true. Think it was a f That's <laughs> yeah, so shit, I mean, valid. There. Back That's in my younger days, not. <laughs> Yeah, you were in there too, but it oh, started. Oh, the the dinosaur age. <laughs> wow, I need it. Slash ban. <laughs> I need it. Slash ban <laughs> burner vt. <laughs> but okay, so now we're done with that video, and burner has stopped using his mouth for a second. Um. <laughs> We're going to read this uh, Am I the Asshole post, and we're going to do the poll, as we usually do. 
So we're going to finish off with that. But before we do that, let's put on some music. It's too quiet. Hold on. Yeah. Is it, are you playing? That was a crazy fucking video. And I'm not going to lie. I, I almost feel like I want to go back and watch it again. Because some of that stuff, I was like, huh? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Yeah, some of that, yeah, some of it was like, oh my god, what the hell? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, good one, though. Good choice, overall. Yeah, some of that, because I didn't even know that existed, honestly. This whole no, ghost marriage thing, I've never even heard of that. Well, I mean, you've heard of, like, people, you know, if they die, then their special, I mean, um, their significant other decides to, you know, marry their marry them regardless of their death i mean i'd imagine that especially for fiancés and stuff like you were about to marry them anyway you just died in the process which sucks that i can understand yeah mm -hmm. so you're like a like a i don't know if your uh person was a veteran or something and they died in war like stuff like that i get like a ceremonial yeah, sure. thing yeah i agree um but let me go ahead and try, unless you guys have something else to say about it, I'm going to go ahead and read the Am I the Asshole whenever you guys are ready. You guys good? You guys good? Uh, that people can't consent, that's all, thanks. <laughs> okay. I yes, was so lost in the video, consent. but I agree. <laughs> nice. We love your- Also, <laughs> Yes. Prep the, prep the ghost condom if you're going to have ghost sex, I'm just saying. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, get ghost the, birth control. Make sure. With eyes in it, you know, like make sure. Make sure. There, make sure you've got the plan B, plan G, whatever. Plan boo. <laughs> plan G? boo. Yeah. yeah. Plan ghost. Ghost. <laughs> ghost. Ah. Uh, Let's read the freaking Am I the asshole already? Oh my god, not the ghost dusty. Chowder. That ghost dusty got me acting different. Stop oh burning it. <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> it's not allowed. Anyway. Alright. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> Shadow. Hi Shadow. Um Okay, we're gonna read this. Am I the asshole? So you can decide. <laughs> Whatever Burner oh, said just killed one. me in the middle of raid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He's not. But I'm also not. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not. <laughs> okay, so am I the asshole for asking my girl girlfriend's sister for permission to marry her instead of her parents? Interesting. What? Sorry, I just clicked this randomly, so I, I'm i shocked. Hold on. Okay. I, 28 female, have been with my girlfriend, Anna, 27 female, for four years. We've been talking about marriage for a while now. The last time we had the conversation to make sure we're on the same page and agreed, I decided there and then I was going to ask her to marry me and win. During this conversation, Anna said that before she proposed, she was going to ask both of my parents for permission to marry me because she knows how close we are and how important they are to me. It's kind That's of old fashioned, mm -hmm. but we agreed that this is a tradition we want to take part in. Anna does not have a good relationship with her parents. She didn't speak to them for the first two years of our relationship. From what she's told me, after she turned 12, they basically checked out from being her parents completely. From that point on, she was basically raised by her older sister, Clara, 32, female. Naturally, Anna and Clara are extremely close, and her opinion matters to Anna a lot. Both Clara and Anna have gotten back into contact with their parents in the past year and are trying to have at least a cordial relationship but the contact has been extremely limited to maybe once or twice a month. Yesterday, Anna and I were having our weekly dinner at Clara's house and decided that that would that I would get her alone. Wait, at Clara's house and I and I decided that would get her alone, which would be pretty easy and not suspicious because I often help with drinks. And and ask for permission then as the date I'd like to propose is in a few weeks. And I'd like to place the ring order in plenty of time. Ah, I see. So she's going to ask Clara if it's okay for the certain date that it's they're going to Clara gonna alone to ask her without this. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I was like, around. that was just wor worded weird for me. 
Yeah. I completely forgot Clara had said that she invited their parents. I was hesitant, and dis- but decided to not let these frankly awful people ruin it. So I went through to the, to the kitchen to help Clara with dessert and told her about my plans and asked her for permission. Before she could, she could answer, their mom yelled for her husband. I don't even remember hearing her come into the kitchen. They both went off saying how if they were finally going to do something traditional, we should at least ask it right and ask their father and not Clara. That was their duty as parents. Before I could jump in, Clara told us that this is not the time or place to be having this discussion. I agreed that she was right, but her parents stormed out of the house. Clara gave me her permission and said that it meant a lot that I asked her. She then came up with an excuse to tell Anna and everything was fine. Until an hour later, until an hour later, when their parents called Anna, screaming at her and made her cry, she said it was it was right to ask Clara if I was going to ask anyone, and she's happy I'm going to propose, though it wasn't my intention that I made things worse worse with her parents. I didn't intend for them to ever find out, obviously. Clara and Amy seem to agree that I'm in the right here, but my parents say that I should have sucked it up for the sake of peace. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely not. No. I'm gonna... No, it... oh. mm-hmm. I'm gonna make the poll. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, well, like... Yeah, that's a very... There's a lot to unpack there, right? Uh, obvious, obvious, that, obvious, yeah. It's convenient that her parents, like, then decided they want to be involved in her life. Like, Yeah. Like, it's where like... Were you? <laughs> you, you don't owe them anything. <laughs> no, you if don't. If they only just started caring now, you don't owe them shit. You don't owe them an invite yeah, to the wedding. Sure. Yeah, that. Like, you don't even have to be there. Like, <laughs> I agree. That makes me kind of like... Did they just decide to come out of nowhere and become or did they hear that hey you're married therefore I'm going to be part of your life again or like I should say engaged with those kinds of parents it was probably like they already decided they wanted to be a part of their life right but the thing is that they feel like they're owed a lot of things they're one like of those entitled to all of them. entitled to those like, moments because they yeah. are your Right, even though they didn't like earn that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's just like okay. Then another question too: Do you think that if you were in the situation that Op's fiance is in, um, would you even have be comfortable enough to invite your parents to your wedding? Oh no way! Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Would you even have told them, "Hey, I'm getting married" or anything no. like that? No, maybe after like, the fact. Maybe after I got married, like, oh hey, by the way, I'm married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would do that. I would, yeah. would not. There would be no contact on that shit. I'd just come back and be like, hey, so this happened. This I'm a firm believer in the uh, information diet with shitty parents. I love the information. You, diet. you do. You, you believe in information dieting. Sometimes, okay, this sounds kind of bad, but like. I don't know how much you guys, how close you guys are to your your parents. Um, well, honestly, I know I know Shammy, but I, I don't know for you, Burner. But how how much in common you have with your parents? So sometimes I'm just in a situation where I'm stuck with my parent, and I don't know what to talk about. Yeah. Because I'm just like I'm oh. just like you. I I don't have anything to talk about with you. I there's no commonality. You know. Do they know that you stream? Probably not, right? Because the yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, they probably don't even know what streaming is. They probably yeah. Don't, but... What about you, Burner? Does do you, does your mom know that you stream? She knows, right? But she like doesn't know how I do it or like how well doesn't I get do it. it. I don't I don't talk about it because I I know that they won't really get it. So I just yeah. kind of like, keep yeah. that to myself. I don't yeah. really talk to my parents all that often. It's just uh, how it is. Yeah, I don't either. To be honest, I don't really talk to them. I, um, I don't know. Would you tell your? Because I know that you're close to your dad, right, Chami? I am. Yeah, I would tell him. Yeah, you would tell him. I would tell him. Yeah, he's open-minded. He might think it's weird at first, but he would try to learn about it because he knows it's important to me. Like, 
D and D is a good example. That's sweet, of this. though. That's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, that's better than most parents. I feel like. I know it is. Literally for Christmas, my dad got me D and D dice, and they're beautiful. And he says to me, "You know, I'm trying to learn. I just looked up D and D on Amazon, and this came up. I hope it's okay." And I was like, "Dad, oh my god, that is perfect. That is so sweet. That is so yeah. sweet." Like, like, like he he want he's interested in learning. He doesn't judge me for my for my um hobbies. Hobbies, I'm, yeah. And like mm -hmm. he he understands streaming to a certain extent too. Like. I, I, he doesn't quite get the appeal of it, I don't think, because it's not like his demographic, but like he knows of it. Like he knows of it. So. I think my my dad might actually know of it as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like it's like one of those things where you don't even know that people are behind it. You're just like, oh, this is on the TV. There's no way, you know, that it's not accessible as it used to be. Yeah. Like um, like say I did start streaming. If I were to tell about it. He'd be into it. He'd be like, "That's cool." I don't know if I send him a link. <laughs> I don't know about that, but like, he'd still be, he'd still like, he, he would be like, "I don't quite get it, but if it makes you happy, then go for it." Like that would be him. So, Harry says, "That's the sweetest." That's my brother-in-law. He gave me Genshin merch when he went to a festival. That is so cute. Yeah, like people who are just like interested in things that you're interested in. Like at least show some sort of interest or uh, care. It's, they're just nice people. That's good. It feels yeah. it feels nice too. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, that, that's an interesting aspect. Free Genshin merch. Free. <laughs> I, I'm gonna open up this poll and it's just gonna be yeah. That's what I thought. It's gonna be t <laughs> three. Not the assholes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like for my parents if they want to give me a gift or anything like that most of the time it's just money like straight money yeah it was official it was official Genshin stuff too god damn do you know how expensive awesome. that shit is holy yeah. shit very god yeah that stuff is expensive i didn't know you played um genshin burner uh i don't play genshin well i, I, mean, I have a genshin account but i'm more of a star rail player i just haven't streamed it in a while yeah. 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 I haven't seen seen you play Star Rail ever, and I, I wonder yeah, why. I, I wonder if you're playing a different game or something. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I've just got addicted to something else. I don't know if someone put crack in the water. Yeah. Who definitely knows? crack in the water. Happened to the definitely. Vessel. Definitely Yoshi P just poisoning the water with his <laughs> cake. I love it. Even if those two pins are my most my most hated characters. Oh, which ones? Oh. I, I'm curious. He got me two pins and a gold charm. Cute. A uh, Star Rail is so much better in my my opinion. I think it's just I, different I style. So it's just this different yeah, style. There's a play. there's a lot of quality of life in Star Rail that's not in Genshin for some Yeah, reason. I agree. I agree. I agree. I don't understand why because they could just. You guys are literally of the same company. You could literally just walk across a hallway and ask, how did you do this? <laughs> it, it's just, it's no, it's not the same. All three Hoyo games that exist right now are completely different beasts. For sure. But like one, clearly, like you said, has quality of life changes that are just so much better that could mm -hmm. be implemented into that other the game. Other one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We've all been asking the same question. <laughs> Dory is a little money gremlin. She's great. Oh. Dory's the short one with little tiny glasses, right? I don't remember. The little one with pink hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's Genshin. Yeah. <clears throat> Recently took a bunch of QOL stuff from... Oh, quality of life stuff from Star Rail. That's great. That's awesome. I lost my Kafka 50-50. Oh, no. Just win it. Honestly, Easy. <laughs> win I was it trying to get. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna you say don't. I don't get to talk because Nezu, uh, was like, "You're getting Kafka," and I'm like, "What do you mean I'm getting Kafka?" He's like, "You're getting Kafka." Did he? He just throw money at you? He threw money at me. Oh my god! And then you know what's funny? After I got Kafka, I I used my remaining mats to like do a single roll, and I got Kafka again. What the Bless. fuck? Bless. So you have C, C1 Kafka or E1? I forgot. Yeah, I have E1 Kafka. 
Yeah, E1. Oh my god. I it mean, do you crazy. like her? Do you enjoy Yes, I love I mean, Kafka. I want okay. Kafka to step on me, okay? <laughs> There's thousands of us. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I told Shammy this, but I don't know why. Everybody really seems to like Kafka, but I am, um... I am not really attracted not, to Kafka not a fan that of the much. Dummy mommy? No, I like Dommy mommies, but she just doesn't do it for me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Fair. You like what you like. I like Kafka, personally. I like her all. You like Kafka? I like I, Kafka. Um, <laughs> the fox lady looks neat. No idea her personality or anything. I don't know which um which fox lady you're talking about. Are you talking about in Star Rail? There's actually two of them. Yeah, there's Ting Yun and Yukong. Yeah, and I have both of them. They're your, fun. I want your E1. Get your get your own E1. Yeah, Miko. Sorry. Yeah, Miko. <laughs> Star Rail. Okay, yeah. There's two of them free for for Star Rail. I'm not sure which one. Ting Yun's the one with the fan though, and then um. Yukong's the one who rams you with a with fucking ship. She rams you with a ship? I think she like runs you over, right? At like at, 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 in in one of her ults or something. Or is that she an error? Rams am I just <laughs> am I just like am I just imagining that she fucking runs you over with her car? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's no. Not okay, her so ult. I does it. She just shoots a big ass arrow at the entire team. That's lame. Yeah. She should run people over. Well, uh, I want to be one of those ults. Yeah, have you seen because I mean everybody should have if you've played fifteen minutes of Star <laughs> Rail, you should have seen Himiko's alt, so Himiko's probably one of my favorites though. She is Dami Mommy. She is well oh, she's uh, nice mommy. Pay no, special they... attention to the end of the stream, Mary. If <laughs> you like Himiko's alt. <laughs> Himiko, yeah, Himiko is just mommy. That's not Dami. Oh yeah, that's true. The end of my end of my Hold on, let me see. Do I have it as my ending screen yet? I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't think I do have it for this one. For for my computer here. Actually, no, I only have it as my intro. Yeah, this is my, my intro. Have you not seen my intro before? This is my intro. Oh, it's your intro. I thought it was your outro, my bad. Yeah! Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's my intro. And it's <laughs> actually inspired by Himiko's ult. Because I thought it was really cool. Why is her top literally like bandages? So she can wrap me up, bitch. Like that's. <laughs> I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Watch hell of a ball. I have not. I have not seen that. I've been avoiding it. I've been avoiding fandom like the plague. Is it an anime? Hell of a bust. No, it's a. Uh, I think it's the online animated series. Oh. Oh, is it the the people who or person who made Has Been Hotel? I think Same so. people. Oh. Okay. I'm dead. Why are you dead? I've only seen Husband Hotel's pilot. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good pilot. I didn't even I don't every, go into the fandom. Go ahead. Every time I see, like, this is nothing on uh, the, the quality of the series itself, but every time I see uh, any, like, hell of a boss stuff, it's always, like, someone using a screen cap to try and, like, Dodge the worst fucking shit imaginable. <laughs> really? What? Oh, like, okay, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, uh, there was one recently. I actually don't know if that, I think if that's Hell of a Boss. It sounds like Hell of a Boss. The character looks like a Hell of a Boss character. So I'm 99% sure it's Hell of a Boss. But the context of which that image was used is just like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, what was the context? Uh, okay. Is, okay. Mm -hmm. This is okay. So, so this it was like a screenshot of the conversations. Of like, there's no way this is fucking real, right? And it's okay. someone responding to the person. It's like, didn't you say children consent? And then the person responded with a hell of the boss screenshot with like saying, "Can we not talk about that right now?" And I'm yeah. just like, "What the fuck do you mean?" <laughs> oh, oh. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I definitely I definitely don't like being part of fandoms that uh 
when that serious. happens. Yeah, because when you see that, you're just like, okay, this is the type of people who are part of your community. I don't, I kind of don't want to be part of that community. <laughs> That's the representation yeah. of like Himiko yeah. bondage co comment. <laughs> yeah. So fine. I'm sorry that I brought that today for show and tell. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Because that just was like, listen, I don't know. That was just like not Burner. a vibe. I Werner. Yeah? Yeah. This is a true crime stream. Literally, we, we talked we about that. Talk and... ghost... <laughs> yeah, we did just talk about ghost sex. Werner has traumatized me six ways from Sunday. See? See? I'm a walking trauma button. Uh I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna deny that, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for you to get your tea, by the way. It'll be so fun. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm considering buying like a, a teacup for the tea. Like a, like a special teacup, like a tea cup. You should. Hydrate salary. Mm. For those who do not know, in just, was it? How many days? Don't tell me, three days. Yeah, in three days, it's Burner's birthday. So if Why you... Am I being if, <laughs> yeah, I don't think... You're not streaming. I know he's not streaming. I'm not streaming but... on my birthday. I have no idea if I'm going to do... I have no idea if I'm going to do a birthday stream later. So, like, think okay. about that. Like, yeah. Are you doing a stream tomorrow? I, don't, I haven't uh, looked at your new I'm, schedule. I am doing a stream tomorrow. I'm doing a stream tomorrow, Friday, and then I'm off Saturday, and then I'm doing Cosmo Theory on Sunday. Which means that the nearest stream that I'm I could like do for it to be belated would be like sometime Monday through Wednesday next week. Yeah. So um please visit his stream to tell him happy birthday. Either I'm gonna say, I'm gonna jump in on Friday to tell you happy birthday. But regardless, please do. And then um, hopefully you get to see his gift. So I sent him a gift. Um, Shammy. Um, I sent him something from Adagio. Yeah. So it'll be fun. I did, did I already great. tell you what I got on him? I didn't, right? Yes, yes. No, you did. You did. I did? I told you what you I did. got him? You did. Holy shit. I talked more than I thought I did. Okay, um... <laughs> Yeah, so I got, so Burner has never had loose leaf tea, right? I've never or, had loose leaf tea. Yeah, so he's never had loose leaf tea, so I got him kind of a set that'll allow him to have loose leaf tea. Um, am I going to stream on my birthday? Are you going to stream on The stream is going birthday? on. It's going on for five hours. Yeah. Oh, three days, fuck, I got to write something for him. Hmm. You don't gotta do shit for me. I'm just saying. That's how I felt about about Ellie when she was, like, she's like, oh, I'm gonna write some some stuff for you. I'm like, I, girl, you don't have to, but I appreciate it if you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, my birthday is gonna be on a Friday, so I will be. You already know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I looked I it up on the calendar. Should I be forcing you to like, not stream on your birthday? That is you're kind of a, a burner question. Too. What do you mean I'm a workaholic? What do you yeah, mean? What do you mean? <laughs> I, <laughs> of course you're going to stream on your birthday. It's not a question to me. <laughs> and it's like a I, year from yeah. now. Like, exactly. Yeah, this, exactly. This is why I delegate the this is why I delegate the evidence to someone who knows you more. Jamie, take what it away. What the fuck? You're a workaholic. I, liter I literally <laughs> just saw Shammy like standing behind Werner and Werner's just talking he goes take it away and he he like he like backs up and it's the Jojo behind. meme where like the two guys getting beat up and then uh, Abaccio puts down his wine and joins in and be literally Burner yeah you guys here he is a workaholic so don't stream on your birthday go do something swear to god I will be doing something it's called streaming you shit it <laughs> motherfucker do I have to fight? We always fight. Yeah. As, this as if this fit. is new. 
Buy one, get one free right here. Here we go. <laughs> you want to go, buddy? I'll go. My B-day is in the middle of the week. Aww. Yeah, probably. But I'll still, I'll still go out. I'll still go out fighting. I'm okay with that. Also, yes, yeah, Siri, I've never <laughs> had Oh, wait, hold on. Man is about to never experience a new life with tea. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a a kettle. Um, a temperature yeah, kettle. Yeah, go and buy one. I mean, you can, but only if you... Like, what if you don't want to... You don't like it, or you don't want to use it? Like, They're really electric... No, dude, I love electric kettles. They they are so fast. They are pretty fast. They're, really great. They're so good. Not that much of a workaholic burner. Share me with me your schedule again. Um, B day brawl sounds lit. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll do something. Uh, I'll probably do a community thing for for um, my B day, and anybody is able to jump in. <laughs> why do I have to keep? Why am I the workaholic that has to like call out all the other fucking workaholics? What's going on? Because I'm a lot of workaholics don't have self awareness because they're so busy working. Streamers, <laughs> go streamers, yeah. go. I'm not. I'm not a Pokemon. <laughs> streamer, streamer, streamer. Burner, what's your favorite media genre? Uh, all of them. Yes. I'm. I'm a big fan of mixed media. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just clash everything together, and it looks fucking sick. Though I, I guess if I had to. The... Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. If I had to choose one. It's. I don't I don't know what it's called. But like the 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 form where they like take IRL images and then put 2D objects or like 2D characters in the IRL image, that shit goes hard. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like rotoscoping or something. Also, horror fantasy actually sounds very accurate. I love horror. I'm a horror. <laughs> I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I would probably say fantasy, although I also like slice of life stuff. So. No, the slice of life is good. I love. Yeah. I love watching slice of life stuff. Yeah. Guys, you're getting a short story for your birthday. Oh yay! I'd, I'm still trying to wonder how I got to where I am currently, but you know, maybe it's best I don't question it. What do you mean? Like, how do you... A, how did I end up here right now? Uh, June invited you, and here you are. <laughs> I, I, I responded, that's true. <laughs> it will be monetized? No, make your money, make your money, make your money. What? <laughs> Checking DMs. There's nothing in DMs. I've been lied to. Oh, wait. There it is. What was the most embarrassing fashion phase of your life? Uh, probably the like baby emo phase <laughs> that we all went through in like 2005, depending on how old you are. <laughs> um, hmm, most embarrassing fashion phase. I just remember when I was like a dumb kid in elementary school, I would wear like sweatpants all the time. Is that a fizz or just being comfortable? <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I don't really like think I've had any fashion phases until yeah. like recently, but that's about it. Like Someone told me to go back to 2008 today. What does that mean? Why? <laughs> 2008? I feel like 2008 had like the least amount of style. I'm not gonna lie. Do you remember that period in like the 2010s when everything was neon? Like, I do like they're that. they're trying to go back to the 80s, but like not. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't like that. No, look up 2008 fashion. I'm, I okay. I I do care about fashion now. I don't know. I feel like 2008 fashion was kind of just nothing. 2008 yeah. fashion. It was like scene. It wasn't like scene kids in 2008. 
Oh. It was like 2004. Mm. The plumbers yeah. are out. They're out, guys. Nice. Were they wearing ties? Um, no, but overalls. I'm just kidding. Uh. They were. They were just. They just had T-shirts, guys. One um, was green. One was red. <laughs> one was green. <laughs> I looked up 2008 fashion. I'm just getting like standard, like the, the not super weird or crazy outfits. I'm not gonna nothing. lie. What's nothing. What's 2008 fashion? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying there was nothing. I'm saying there Isn't wasn't it just like fashion. this fashion, basically. Like it was. Yeah, it just felt, it felt very basic. You know what? We need to go back. Do we need to go back to 2003? We need we need to bring back uh, dyed tips and uh, spiky hair. <clears throat> like La uh, Laguna Beach or some shit. <laughs> Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach. Is that a show? I have no idea. I was yeah, it was like... like an, I thought that was an area. <clears throat> it is. <laughs> it is, right? I don't know, man. I don't know. But all I know is... It was like is... Jersey Shore before Jersey Shore was a thing. Oh. No joke, was walking to the mall and I saw them. Oh, really? You were walking in the mall and you saw the Twilight actors? Huh. <laughs> and you remember the year? I never remember. <laughs> uh, the Twilight? <laughs> yeah, the scene kids were, are the stereotype. 2008 is Han Solo... F Han Solo fall in messy buns. Huh. Like Frosted people wearing ponchos. No, they need to be brought back. Listen. No, They're ponchos iconic. are great. I agree. Ponchos are good. They're comfy. I still oh, wear them. I think he means frosted tips. I think he means... Uh, uh, also <laughs> frosted tips. No, I actually do bring that back. <clears throat> frosted tips? Yeah. I think I used to... I used. To, I didn't used to do frosted tips, but I used to do highlights. And then highlights it just faded good. away easily. Mm -hmm. I feel like highlights are still in, though. Oh, no. So, I love doing it. I got some tea guys want to want to hear white shirt with the vest skinny jeans and knee-high riding boots that's like christian I girl like, fall. Yeah. i also <laughs> feel like that's something that people would wear now yeah that's true if anyway anything, i'm be more popular now i use I'm ready frosted for tips. <laughs> oh sure 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 okay so burner i don't know if you know what's going on with my plumber stuff but the biggest the biggest thing you have to understand here okay is that <clears throat> um my landlord has been telling the guy upstairs to stop throwing oil into the sink okay. he has been telling him for the last three years okay. do not literally pour into the sink hmm? is he getting he is not now? Oh, well, I mean, he is. He is. He is eventually, but not right now. That's not what we're talking about yet. Um, <clears throat> he he keeps denying that he's doing it, first off. And then, even though my landlord is literally pulling, like, black slash, like, gray oh, grease all that, like, out of his sink. Use congealed oil, yeah. Nasty. Yes. And so, so that's happening, right? And... So I told, okay. So he tells me he comes over because, like I said, the plumbers are here. He's he's along with the plumbers, and he comes to me. And he says, "Hey, so um, <clears throat> I'm supposed to set up a time to um, have the our plumber here. His name is Richard, to put in a grease trap onto the second floor, but." the guy on the second floor isn't answering my calls because he's mad at me and doesn't want to talk to me. A grease and I'm like, trap? yeah, so it's a grease, it's a grease trap. So it I, just catches any, any oils and stuff like I that. Mean, and so you can dump it after some time. No, I know. I know. Like, I know what, I've been working in a restaurant. I know what a grease trap is. It's just Oh, that, I totally forgot. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's more just like, it's gotten to the point where the, the landlord feels the need that like, A, this guy's not going to learn his lesson. So we need to build a Burner, spot for he, him to throw away this grease. He is not at all stopped. Like I said, he is denied everything. And, and that's when you kick him out. <laughs> this has happened. This and okay. How do I explain? It has a, has his happened. actions 
has affected me because mm-hmm. I'm on he's on the second floor. I'm on the first floor. Yeah. And so when the oil the goes writing down to you, yeah. It goes goes down and gets stuck in the pipe because it's oil and water and like it gets it hardens, right? And so when any when the pipe is completely full or stuck from this hardened grease, it starts backflowing to me and starts flooding my kitchen sink because it's backflowing from the main pipe. This has happened not once, not twice, four times within the last two years, randomly. And so I would randomly get a call from my landlord who would say, at first he would keep asking me, like the first two times he would go, oh, are you like taking a shower or something? Did you leave the water on? And I'm like, no, I'm not even home. Like, I didn't do that. (laughs) And I come back, he'd be like, can you hurry back to your apartment and check? I tell him the first two times, my kitchen sink is overflowing from water that's not mine. And by the third time, he's just like, he doesn't even say whose fault it is. He just says, he just says, your apartment is overflowing. It's flooding again. So this is the whole apartment flood thing that I was talking, talking about, Bringer, on my Twitter. Yeah. So, (laughs) why are you in like Narnia right now? (laughs) Where you are? (laughs) My food, my food is about to arrive. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Well, I mean. I'm just, yeah. All I'm saying is, it's like, don't put in a gre- like a grease trap for that guy. I, like, because I know. All right, I get it. It's been three years. He's been doing it constantly, but it's been three years. He's been doing it constantly. Yeah, I I know. And my my landlord. Is- yeah. I was gonna say it's that it's costing your landlord money. Like <laughs> it is costing him money at this point. It just cut his losses. You know. And. To be honest, too. Okay. So he got into, so uh, over this weekend, as you know, my, my, my place flooded from this whole thing again. And he tries to talk, my landlord tries to talk to him, to talk to him and be like, Hey, stop doing this. Stop. I know it's you. And eventually, yes, my apartment do be moist sometimes. I swear. (laughs) I just, I, I just, with the, with the dryer, just like drying out the walls please um but um so he and I've had to by the way uh, throw out some stuff because like water right like just not not electronics it's pretty cheap stuff like it's like a pot or a pan n- never anything expensive but even then it's just oh Annoying. hi Hi, Siphonic Panda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Stretch and hydrate, no problem. Stretch (sighs) and hydrate. Is he gonna pay for this? Oh, I know it's pretty cheap stuff, but still, it's it's he's he. Well, the thing is, he's denying it. He's saying that he has nothing to do with it, and he, in fact, he blames either me and says it's my problem, like like I'm doing it, which like my landlord has checked my pipes they don't have any any of that grease in it and uh or he blames my landlord and says that there's something wrong with the pipes and he put in the wrong pipes therefore there that's why there's grease there yeah fuck this guy kick him out what the fuck i think my landlord is honestly afraid to deal with tenants and having to find new tenants because like uh previously i know shammy knows this because i've known her for a really long time but the people who used to live on the second floor were fucking crazy like they were insane actually yeah. like I'm, I'm sorry i will th- be right back go get your food go get your food i'm gonna go get my food um, but I'm, you want to hear the story and i'm angry yes <laughs> <laughs> Go get your food. It's fine. I'll talk about shit. Nothing, nothing important. Um, but yeah, I request for Bernard to be called Bottom yet again. Well, he's not here yet, so I'll call him when when he's here, Bottom. But um, thank you for for following. 
um, Mr. or Mrs. or Just Panda. Thank you for following. <laughs> um, I don't know how you found me, but I'm glad that, that you're here. <laughs> I'm glad that people like my stories. And it's gotten, it's kind of gotten, it's gotten worse, but also kind of better. Spoilers, the guy actually admits that he's been doing it. Finally, after friggin' years, literally years. Three years, <laughs> he, he's had to have a plumber come up there. Like, okay, I'll get there soon. I'll get there soon. Burner is canonically a bottom. Interestingly, Bunny said that he's a soft top, which I kind of agree. But don't tell him that. No, he already knows. Uh, I didn't consent to knowing this, but now I know it. So. <laughs> Everyone now knows. Well, it's Bunny's. It's Bunny's um analysis. To be fair, okay. Bunny said it. I didn't say it. I didn't do the analysis. He cannot be called that. We must beat him back to bottom. I feel like I when being you being a bottom a bad thing though, just asking like <laughs> being a bottom is a terrible thing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's it, asking it's... for a friend. Why? <laughs> asking for a friend. Well, yeah, everyone, <laughs> you didn't get to know this either, but <laughs> I'm canonically not a top nor a bottom. I am. Toast. <laughs> Listen, I'm if toast. he tops us, we will never escape. Don't say that crap. Um, number two, <laughs> Burner's, Burner's Discord, um, has, has just the BDSM test results. <laughs> I Great. found it on accident, like every, no, not just him, just everybody in the server. Well, some, like the people who decided to participate. Unless you're a power bottom possible, yes. What's BDSM? Um, it means, um, it means birds, dogs, um, snakes, and monkeys. It tells you whether or not you're a bird, dog, snake, or monkey. I'm a snake. Uh, yeah, I kept mine hidden for a reason. I am a top. I see, I see. I'm B for bunny. Most people think I'm a top. I'm not going to tell you what I am, but most people assume that I'm a top. <laughs> What? <laughs> what, in, what in Hogwarts house? Is... What a way to make your entrance alone. <laughs> crap, uh, crap! I can't, I can't, I can't allow that. Crap, crap! Don't, please, don't do that. Don't do is that. that. Crap forever now, though. Is that blocked forever now? Uh, for, uh, uh, we really uh, have to uh, say like bird, snake. <laughs> Owl. Not the oh, hog, Lord. not the Hogwart houses. Yeah. I'm black and I'm angry. You're like angry. I am. There's nothing to be well, angry, angry about yet. What about your yet. fucking plumbing situation? How about how the fact that like he hasn't just kicked out the motherfucker? Yeah, continue to see. <clears throat> right. So he so he wants to. He's afraid because the last um, tenants that we had um we're fucking insane like literally okay here's another story here's a, here's an example of why so there were people upstairs on the second floor who lived uh lived there right and they would play extremely loud music at any time of the day they would scream randomly um and um whenever basically the guy it was his his mom him and his mom that lived there and she smoked like i swear to god 24 7 um and i'll tell you <laughs> i'll tell you how bad she smoked um in a sec but he would scream and yell at her all the time like it was wild the shit that happened and i also have seen i don't know if there's that's from them but i have seen in my in my bedroom there were like <laughs> I should say this. I should say this. Never mind. Never mind. It's a little dangerous. Anyway, so <laughs> so Whoa. either way, don't worry about it, Burner. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, it's either guns, <laughs> drugs, or cigarette butts. Anyway, anyway. Oh, I just found so... a new name for an album. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use your use your use your imagination. I can't believe you would lie to me. <sighs> I'm sorry. 
I'm, I'm I, that's all I do out here. I eat hot chip and lie. That's just what I do. Um, <laughs> use condoms. Sure. There, there were used condoms coming down from the ceiling. Absolutely. Okay, you gotta say it now. Okay, right. okay fine. God, you guys are wild. You guys are wildin'. Um, it there's about five bullet holes coming Holy from shit. the second floor to the first floor. Okay, how have he not picked them out? Oh. Okay, well, no, 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 no. These are different people. These are different people. These oh. were the tenants prior to the ones now. Okay. I'm just telling you the experience that he's like had with different... Like, the whole point of different... this one is, like, less bad okay, okay, than okay, okay. the previous yeah, that's, ones, and that's, that's why... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, he he is... And, okay, and so he had been telling them, trying to tell them, oh, you're, like, you're... you're Because there were... Whenever he, my landlord would visit up there, Charlie would visit up there, there'd be just holes in the wall. Like, literally just holes in the wall from, like the guy punching them punching mm. it like he would just randomly punch the wall and we would feel it too me and my roommate at the time um and so <clears throat> so these these guys were not good but eventually i had talked to my landlord and he was like i'm gonna work on kicking them out like literally evicting them because not only that but they had stopped paying rent at some point so he's like i have all rights to right right Mm -hmm. So he tells them, get out. They leave. About two months later, um, I hear a really loud knock on my front door. And, you know, my roommate and I, we sleep in the same room. So I'm, um, so I get up and I'm like, do you hear that? And I guess he went to bed pretty late. Um, so he was really tired. So I was like, I guess I'll get up. But I had left my glasses in the bathroom. And I'm like fucking legally blind without my glasses. Um, so I go in the direction of the bathroom and down that hallway. And in that hallway, there is a window that is, because uh, I'm on the first floor, it's about kind of a little higher than usual, but you can see the top of people's heads. While I'm passing that window, I literally see someone there and I squint and I realize it's a police officer. Huh? So I'm like, uh, hello? And he's like, he's like, hello? Do you live here? I'm like, yes. I'm like, can you give me a second? I have to go get my glasses. So <laughs> I get my glasses in the, uh, in the, in the bathroom and I put them on and I open the back door and there are three cops in the back door. And I'm like, hi, um, uh, he, they're like, do you live here? I'm like, yeah. And he, they go, do you live with anyone else? Is there anyone else there with you? And I'm like, yeah, my roommate. And they're like, oh, can you describe him? So I do. And they're like, that's not, they're like, how long have you been living here? I'm like, we've been here for about two years, two and a half years now. And they kind of like look at each other and I go, there's somebody knocking in the front door. Can I go and grab that really quickly? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. And so I close the door and I go to the front and I open the door. There are literally five cop cars, the entire, both the house next to me to the left and the right are being questioned by detectives. And then there are like seven cops in front of me. and everything across the street too there's just cops everywhere and so i'm like hello by the way this is five in the fucking morning right there's barely light and i'm like hello and they're like they they look at me they, they're like on edge when the door opens but when they see me because i'm just like the short girl <laughs> Squinting into the night, sure. like yeah, like I, I'm just like the, I was not the person that they expected me to be. So they were like, they questioned me, same questions. Do you live with anyone? Blah 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 blah. And I was like, like I've been here for two and a half years. Like I don't know who you're talking about. And they say, well, we're looking for this person here. Hi, Nazu. Welcome, welcome, Nazu. Welcome. They go. 
I'm looking for this. The, I'm looking for this person here. And note that I've never seen the guy upstairs. I've only seen glimpses of him. And it's just this guy with like tattoos all over his face. He has been arrested before. I think there was a warrant for him. He's like on the run. Yeah, tattoos and I'm on his like, face. Yeah, he had tattoos on his face. Yeah. And he was sewing with your mom. You were sewing with your mom? Awesome. That sounds awesome. Um, show me what you guys made if you're, if you're, if you want to <laughs> share with the glass. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was the type of person that was living upstairs, right? Then the person downstairs at the same time, at the same time, the person downstairs, um, they were also loud and obnoxious. They also had this dog that was not like Bumble. He was a big Rottweiler. Um, oh, and while yeah. Roddy's Roddy's are nice, I like Roddy's. They're fine. That Roddy was not nice because um, basically my landlord would go to these people and be like, you have not paid rent in two months. And they would literally go, well, like, leave us alone or we'll sick our dog on you. And at some point they did. And my landlord had a huge, like, bite mark on his arm. Holy and he got, shit. yeah. You fuck? redeemed a hydrate. Let me go ahead and do that for you. I'm sorry, Ellie. Mm. What the fuck? So he, he, they left shortly after. Yeah, rot rollers are pretty. They they are very nice dogs. They just they're not very nice when you have the wrong people. Yeah. Being being when they're the wrong. They right. You, it sucks. So, um like I said, I was like he does not have a very good experience with trying to find like tenants and he is very nervous about that right so he is trying to keep this tenant even though he is just fucking insane I um, can understand that but it's still like a shitty situation to be in man like yeah and so I'm like dude we're suffering out here like the rest of your tenants are being punished for something that isn't even our issue and yeah. he's like I get it I know it and so he recently told me he's like I'm he's out of here after this after this he's out of here but he's out of here after this is after all the fifth time that this has happened where my my apartment is flooding so back to the present right so um he denies anything correct and this 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 morning well should say this first yesterday we had w what he had done was i have this metal bowl underneath my sink that i put under there because i'm anxious <laughs> about any like, leaks I... from this whole thing right and um he says okay i'm gonna bring because this guy won't stop he will not stop putting oil down the drain i'm gonna put I'm going to set up a pipe, a pump underneath your sink. It's going to run a hose that any and pump out any extra water from that that bowl and bring it into bring it outside or in a tub. And so long story short, I thought that we had fixed it, but today I get a call about 10:30 and they say, "Hey, your apartment is flooding again. And I said, wait, but we set up the pump. And it's because my landlord, who is not quite the brightest bulb in the shed, okay? Mm -hmm. Not the sharpest tool. Put the pipe, put the hose, not in the tub, which I told him to do, but in the sink of my bathroom. He insisted to do that. No, no, no. Um, I The, the ones that's, that's flooding is the kitchen one. Okay. And so from the kitchen sink to the bathroom sink. And I'm like, this is a shitty situation, but it is what it is. So, but while I was at work, the hose fell 
from the bathroom sink and started. And of course, my neighbor decides I'm going to use the sink, even though I'm told not to. And so all this dirty water, all this sink water decides to go down the drain and in onto my apartment floor. What a fucking Again. psychopath this guy is, oh, man. Like, yeah. And so the That's guy downstairs... Yeah, so it's flooding again. So I go home. That's why I went. I was work from home today, was because I had to come home because the whole flooding thing happened again. So my the thing is is that my landlord tries to talk to the guy upstairs again. Tells him, "I know that you're using the sink. I told you not to. You're using it anyway." And the guy, they just get into it to a point where. The guy upstairs says, no, I I can't even use the sink for the last three days. I'm not paying rent this month. Jesus. And he's just like, and, <clears throat> you know, my, my landlord tries to get in with him. He, he just ignores his calls. He just completely ignores him, doesn't want to. He's like, I don't want to talk to you. You can't use the sink because you're the one that fucking ruined it, dude. Mm-hmm, like... Mm-hmm. These people. <laughs> then, mm-hmm. okay. Then today, after, okay. Also, in the, that's right. Okay, I'll tell them. Um, when my landlord, so the plumber came today, as you know, right, to try to rot out the 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 pipe. Um. my landlord comes over no he calls me first he says hey so by the way he's like i wanted to apologize and i'm like why do you want to apologize like i mean you're not doing the sink thing he's like no it's just that you know in the heat of the moment you know i told the guy upstairs that you were gonna sue him i'm like what what (laughs) he's like he's like because I remember you said that like there was there was there was damage to like some of the stuff that you had. I'm like, yeah, it's just like pots and pans and stuff that are like cheap. I like I don't care. Like it's not going if you go to a court for that, you lose money. You don't fucking like gain anything. And he's like, oh, Yeah, I shouldn't have yeah. said that, you know, like it was just in the heat of the moment. I was really angry and stuff like that. Well I was like, Well, I'm not gonna do it. And so he goes, well, okay, I get it. I know. I and would then, just hope your neighbor doesn't retaliate because of that and, like, gives you a hard time, like, more than he already has. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. So I'm just like, I, I didn't, I did not say that. I never said that. And <laughs> um, so he's like, he's like, I know, I know. I was just upset. I'm like, God. So he comes over. He comes over, though, today. He comes over and he's like, He's like, yeah, the guy won't talk to me. So, um, uh, and I need, I, I, I need to like make an appointment for when the plumber will put in the grease trap into his apartment. And I said, okay, go and do that. He goes, well, he won't talk to me. So can you go up to the second floor and talk to him? Yeah, all right. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, no, I will not do that. Like I'm like I am not going to do that. I am not gonna go and talk to him. That is your that is your job for you. To, like I am not. You're not gonna pass your buck to me. Okay. Here's the thing too. Okay, he's asked you similar crazy shit, and you say no, and you stand your ground. I don't understand what part of his brain thinks like, yeah, June would agree to this if I just ask her. Like what? God. Yeah. <laughs> Burger is surprisingly quiet and that kind of scares me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> scares me. Um but yeah, so he asked me, yeah, can you go and talk to the guy? And I said, No, I can't, actually, I will not. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, fine. Um and he's like, I guess I'll go up with um I'll go up with the 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 plumber 
and 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 hell talk to him i'm like okay you do that like a great idea i was like that sounds like a great like, idea goodbye and i returned to my stream by the way yes this happened while stream is happening that's why i was like i was like oh, shammy please please take over for me <laughs> Because I'm having to have these ridiculous conversations. I don't know okay. how you kept your cool then when you came back. My goodness. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Man. Um, but yeah. So he 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 tells me that he finally goes up and talk tries to talk to the guy upstairs, right? And I guess he answers and. The plumber goes up there and says, what is this stuff? Blah, 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 blah. He goes, he try. he basically explains it to him and says why his issue, like what the issue is and why he's the issue. So he goes, do you, he's like, do you put poor oil into the drain? And he, he finally, after three years, admits it. He says, yeah. Because you can't lie to a plumber, oil. like he's going to see it, like... Holy and shit. then, and then, and then, my, then the plumber says, can you please not do that? Like, please don't just pour grease and oil down, like fats and stuff, like down the pipe. P please just like, oh, no. do something he's gonna else. Go, he's going to go okay with me. No, no. No? He, he, he says, he, he says, if you see it on the sides, don't just like you know just like use the use this, the the nozzle to put it down the drain like go and grab a wipe and clean it up and then throw it out that's how you properly do it and the guy says no i'm not gonna do that uh, like that's not what i do like that's not how i do it and i'm not gonna motherfucker it, so. it's not your plumbing right yeah. like buy your own house then and like clog up your own pipes. <laughs> like, well, question: What do we do with the oil, like frying oil that's been used? You can actually, you can put you can it in. Them. Yeah, you can you can put mm -hmm. it in a. I usually put it in like a, like a uh, what do you call it? The the little glass jars. Oh, like a mason jar. Mason jar. Yes, thank you. I put it in a mason jar. I close it up, and if you can reuse frying oil, actually, mm -hmm. it's fine. So like, you don't have to just shove it down the drain. Um, in addition, if it's dirty frying oil or if it's gross or anything, what you can do, same thing, I put it in, um, or what you can do instead, you can let it congeal and then put it in a, uh, like a container that's, um, uh, disposable or some, some people just put it in like a plastic bag that has no holes and then double bag it and triple bag it mm -hmm. and then toss it out. So... How Another often can you reuse it? it? I don't know. Oh, go ahead before I answer this question. Oh, another uh, way. Another one, the one that you could use is there's recently been like a, a trend I've seen that's been getting popular that there are these like little capsules that you can throw into your oil. Like you heat up the oil, you throw in the capsule, and then it helps it coagulate way faster so you can just throw it out. Interesting. Mm, I've never seen those. Those are cool. That sounds cool. Mm. Apparently they're yeah. a little expensive, but like if you really don't want to bother with anything, you just get them. <laughs> yeah, when when it like coagulates like that, it it's so easy to just take like some type of tool and just scrape it off at that point, yeah. right? It's just super easy. But I guess if you're impatient and can't wait like ten minutes, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but but yeah, so that's my whole situation with that. And hopefully this guy is going to be gone soon because hopefully that shit. That I wonder is, when it's Lee if, if you were in California, I would have just like sent you to my sister because that's there feels like so much shit there. There feels like so many like so many legal little details that have been walked over. <laughs> Yeah, it, like, it's, uh... What Is your sister a lawyer oh. or something, or...? No, my sister's actually a lawyer. Oh, okay, okay. She, like, took care of some, like, big shit in my city, actually. Oh, really? Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I won't, like, give details or anything. No, yeah, but... but no, like, of course, don't dox yourself out here. Well, uh, 
I'm just gonna say this. There's an incident that happened in my high school when I was in high school, right? I find out years later, she gives me a call. She's like, hey, do you know, do you happen to know the such and such, right? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, why? It's like, oh yeah, I'm like working to sue your high school. And I'm like, oh! That's crazy, oh my God. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, that does sound fucking crazy. I can imagine being being in that situation though. Being like, yeah, give me all the details about your high school. Sure. <laughs> I yeah, mean, did you have was, to provide anything? I didn't have to, but it. I went to the high school and was there when the incident happened. Like, oh, really? Yeah. It all was. Right. A, it was a whole thing. It's not something that I'm gonna talk about on stream today. It's not yeah. the vibe of me. It's a very, very specific situation. So I'd rather yeah, talk about don't. It not being. Uh, recorded, streamed <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i love the uh, reason it's not the vibe <laughs> it's not the vibe so i cannot talk that's, half the, that's <laughs> half the reason i do anything is it the vibe sure is it not the vibe okay then no <laughs> a literal vibe check if you will a vibe check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um how often can we reuse it um Erie, i think it really depends on the color Frankly, that's how I decide, is if the color is just like off. Um, if it's too dark, then I then I go if ahead. If it's like and brown and murky and has like food crap in it, then yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it if it's still kind of clear, that's what it is. If it's clear, then I'm like, Bacon it's grease okay. Possible. Baking? Bacon grease. Bacon, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it works Works at my workplace as well. Just, oh, the, just the color and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it is a, in, in your workplace either, Burner, but... Oh, uh, we do it, like, daily. But generally... Daily? Uh, the only time... Uh, daily, yeah. The only times where we ever skip a day is if, like, it was slow the last day and, like, we check it. We, we check it. We, we get, like, a little ladle because it's still in the fryer. And then mm -hmm. uh, we see if it's, like... <laughs> I'm going to say this just for comedic effect. If it's, like, piss yellow, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, honestly, yeah, it's that's what yellow. I think. I, I definitely think that if it's piss yellow, you're good. Honestly. Yeah, and then it uh, also depends on your oil that you use. It, it also does depend on that. But this is like for I think we use like not soybean oil. Soybean? It, it it's it's not white peanut oil. I, it might is is it canola? I don't think it's canola either. It, it's some kind of oil. 20? Yeah. Some kind of uh, oil. I, I mean, if, is it oil. yellow? Is it clear? It's, is it more green? It's more yellow than anything. More yellow, okay. Yeah, I feel like that's canola, though. It could yeah. be canola. But, but yeah. That's crazy. Weird. Well, crap, I'm not, like, frying things in fucking cocoa butter. <laughs> cocoa butter? Oh my god. But yeah. yeah, some kind of oil that totally narrows it down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I totally. I, okay, first off, I have to stretch because Ellie claimed to stretch a while ago, but I was busy talking. Bad streamer. My bad. Oh, you're gonna take a picture of the blankie? Please do. Um, number two, I was told that I have to call you a bottom. So um, who the fuck is saying that? Eerie. No, not eerie this time. No. no. Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> You're like pleasantly surprised. <laughs> well, like it's usually eerie, right? So who who said it? I'm looking for you in chat. She would she would call tell me to call you a bitch boy because that's that's her that nickname for her. <clears throat> The person who asked is right there at the bottom. Oh, crap. Fuck you, crap. <laughs> Fuck you, bottom. crap. I, okay, I won't lie. I do want to, like, stay in chat, but I also said I was going to do the Gundam movie night. Go! go. Like, uh, what are you doing? Like, I heard you. I was listening to your story! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I wasn't going to be rude. I wasn't going to leave. Yeah? You're like, You'd been like okay, tell you the story, and I'm like, okay. And uh, yeah, just, my... it, it took me past movie night. Oh my gosh. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna end stream and I'm gonna join your movie night too, okay? 
Because I, I told you I would. Like you have to. If you, if you want to keep going, you can keep I've going. I've been streaming for like almost six hours. <laughs> it's been a long time. I don't... I At least don't it's like no. Anything. So if it's of your own volition, go for it. I'm going to I, go and set up for Hathaway's work. I am going to go and prepare my brain for Gundam Night. Gundam Night. <laughs> And I'm going to bed. <laughs> you should be going to bed. Oh my gosh. Thank you for joining for this long, Shammy. Holy shit. That was a blast. Like that was fun. A six hour stream with me. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't in stream. I like watched the first little bit of it. <laughs> That's true. You, you did watch the first bit and hopefully you enjoyed it. it Nezzy, you're back. Did you, did you send it? Let me, let me look at my chat. Hold on. Did you send it through Discord yet? Where should I send the photos? If you're comfortable with it, you can put it in art um, for my Discord. Uh, or if you just want to send it to me via DM, that's fine too. Haku Shiki is the best mobile suit and the flag and strike yeah. rogue. I think flag is probably my favorite of those three. Oh, strike rogue is Yakushiki, though? That's a good choice. I am partial to the V2 Gundam. That's fine. That's fine, Nezu. I like the Nova Gundam like Sailor Moon. V2. <laughs> well, V2 Assault Buster specifically. You you um do Gunpla, right? Yeah, I do. I have one coming in November. Yeah. Which is the V2 yeah, yeah. Assault Buster. <laughs> yeah, I am... Um... I used to a long while ago, but you used to? been a while. Yeah, I used to. I used to spray paint mine and stuff like that. Oh my God, you did the air spray stuff too? Yeah. Wait, like that's actually spray. fucking radical. I want to I wanna start do that. Brain yeah, down, I brain did. No good. My brain wants to buy an MG extract, for, but my wallet says, so, aha, one do with it, me. Do it, do it, do it, do it. With me and it sent a DM for a sense of scale. Okay. By by the MGX Strike Freedom. I want to buy cute. The I love the polka dots on the inside. That's so cute. That uh, oh, I like the pattern. So cute. Yeah. If you want to see it, it's in um, it's in the Apiary Discord, and uh, Nezu sent it in pics. Super cute. No, with me in it, sent a DM. Okay, yeah, the, the chicken from Zeta is also really nice. Mm -hmm. It's a fun mm. little blankie. Yeah, how how quick did it come up? Like, how quick did it make? I mean, I'm sure it was fast because I also sew, but you probably have sewn longer than I have or have more experience. Just because I'm, like, I'm crazy and I need to do multiple crafts and not just one. <laughs> <laughs> It took a while. I have like not really. You have no experience. How did you like it for your first time? Or not first time, but you know. I have zero sewings. Okay, so first time. <laughs> Sorry, this is a problem. Um, I'm gonna go out. later. Oh, bye. I'll see you in a little bye. bit. Bye. See you in a little bye. bit. Bye. Bye. I like say bye to bye to burner for for me chant. Oh, can you do me a favor and also um give me give him a shout out for me, please? Shammy. I did already. Can I do it again? Like yeah, earlier. do it again. Okay. Okay. Bye, burger. <laughs> yeah. Bye, burger. Thank you. Remember when I shouted out the wrong thick earlier? <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is, but it's fine. <laughs> You're welcome, Thick. Yeah, if you're out there. <laughs> um, Borg. hopefully he comes in and is like, who? Borg. <laughs> yeah, you get a you get a new follower out of it. You're welcome. Burger TV, yeah, Burger TV on Twitch. That's that that TV, yeah, for sure. Um, that Maybe reminds that's me. New, uh, yeah. I was gonna say that reminds me of the guy who accidentally got invited to a wedding or a cookout or something. Um. <laughs> Because they got the wrong number and they were like, hey, do you want to come to this cookout? He's like, I don't know who this is, but yes. And he shows up and they actually have a fun fucking time. Yeah. 
Do you remember I was that? Say, I don't know. No, yeah, it's, it's for Thanksgiving dinner. She like it was Thanksgiving, and they, like, so cute. Yeah, and then they went like every year after that. They like yeah, it was so cute. Made it so a cute. thing, super cute. Oh, I should make it a new cool. tactic where I like just shout out random people and see if they come to your stream. Oh, we we typoed that. My Oops, name sorry. is literally just a shit ton of numbers. There's no way you could typo that. <laughs> Shout out. Anyway, hello, hello. typo. <laughs> Welcome to stream. <laughs> she was like, anyone who shows up as family. Yeah, so cute. Hey, I remember watching a streamer make potato jokes on a stream and people started donating subs to random potato users and they ended up with several regulars after that. That's so cute. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's, so done. Cute. Yeah. it's done. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you were going to say something. I, I cut you off, though. That's what I was trying to say. Like, what if my random new tactic to get you, like, viewers oh, okay, 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 yeah. out-outing randos? Like, I could do, you like, B names to... first. Like, at Bumblebee26. Like... I was just trying to find my bee family. Can you please help? Yeah. Hello. Are you out there? Hello. <laughs> um, but yeah, please get some sleep. Oh, my God. I had you yeah. stay up for way too long but hopefully you had tons of fun <laughs> it was so fun um, I, I, I love these streams you know I do <laughs> I know I don't know why but people just love crimes and crafts I don't know why maybe it's because of the crimes maybe it's because of the crafts tonight's was especially like fucked up in my opinion but <laughs> there were some crazy ass stories tonight yeah wait I just read the text in the top yeah yeah that's not clickbait. That's that's what actually. I don't know how I. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It, it is definitely not clickbait. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We learned what about. We learned a lot. <laughs> we learned a lot about people's cultures that are not okay. Weird People shit. People be okay. crazy. Yeah, they do be crazy. Um, I. I probably will VOD this if YouTube decides to strike me. Fuck you, YouTube, but that's fine. Is that um, happening? I'm... Wait, that's real? What the fuck? Yes, it is real. And no, I have not been struck, struck yet, but... Stroke. Stroked yet. So... <laughs> Hear that, everybody? Just she hasn't been <laughs> stroked. <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, my side is going bad. I should probably go. <laughs> Should probably go. This is what happens. This is what happens. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks you yeah. for inviting me as always. It was fun. Yeah, thank you for coming, Shammy. Sing Good night, bye, everybody. Chat. Bye, bye. Bye, chat. bye. Ooh, look at everyone saying bye. You guys are cute. God damn. No, what do you mean no? <laughs> That's where you say good night, Shammy, and stuff like that. <laughs> Shammy says good night to Shammy. That shit's real, actual. She would say good night to herself. Except she wouldn't go to sleep. She'd have to take a melee first, like me. But yeah, shot. Wait, Shammy, you can't good night her yourself? Mm, a melee? Yeah, I call it a melee. Everybody seems to know what I'm talking about. But I always say it. I always go, I gotta take my melee. <clears throat> Don't call out my secrets. Sucks to suck. I touch the pillow and fall asleep. Fuck you. <laughs> Papa melee. Not that type of melee. <laughs> gotta let the melee cook, too. <laughs> you guys are funny, though. We're just chilling, though, at this point. We're just chilling. I probably should end stream, but instead I'm here. Never heard melatonin be called something so similar to a zanny or something, some drug. I mean, it is a drug. It's just not a hard, it's not the hard stuff. It's just, it's, it's soft core, it's soft core drugs. <laughs> um, skill diffed. <laughs> Yeah, that is skill dipped. I am I'm getting sleep skill dipped. It's fucked. It's fucked up. I fucked I fucked that up when the melee hits. <laughs> Stop. Oh, um also I was gonna join a VC earlier, like when you said you first hopped in, but then I asked I was asked 
to help with the sewing. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just a little bit mad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's, it's usually just an open invitation. You know? Like, I like talking by myself sometimes, but most times I feel like I'm just a collab streamer. Can you be angry with you? Yeah, I'm angry. Angry with you. <laughs> Never gonna forgive you? Yeah. You're banned, Nezu. You're banned. Oh, I have an extra comb. But yeah, thank you for everyone who decided to join today. You guys are always so nice to me. You guys decide to join in my my chill stream. My chill streams. I like solo June runs, to be fair. Really? You like the solo stuff? I mean, to also, to be fair, uh, Bumpkin, you, you met... When you first saw me, I was solo. Because um, the first time you saw me, I was doing... What was it? Uh, Cozy Grove, and then the second, the same day, I ended up doing Unworded or, or Unwording. No, is it Unwording? Yeah, I think it is Unwording. Yeah, it's Unwording. To be honest, all your, your content is nice and comfy and fun to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Solo or otherwise. I mean, I feel like there's a lot more energy when I've got more people, right? <laughs> I'm full of despair and sadness. I'll never recover. You'll be fine. You can make blankets now. You're fine. <laughs> um, Kibi would never give me up. She'd never let me down. She'd never turn around and desert me. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> New coping mechanism unlocked. <laughs> some people say that. Ellie's like, you're my therapy. Please, go get some actual therapy. Don't use me. I am not sufficient therapy for you all. Especially since I only stream like three times a week. To be honest, like, I feel like people see their therapist less than that. Huh? Maybe? You're so very welcoming. Oh, okay. Oh, new coping mechanism unlocked? Blanky making? Yeah. I used to make blankies, but I used to make Thai blankies. <clears throat> and I it got to a point where like I made so many tie blankies that um I didn't know what to do with them. I still don't know what to do with them. I still have too much. I only see a therapist once a week. And tell an alley, make sure that when you see your therapist, you're telling them the truth and stuff. Just make sure, okay? I'm not scolding you. I'm encouraging you. It's been a while since I went to therapy, though my mental has been solid, so I think I'm chilling. Yeah. I mean, I think, too, that, like, if I were a therapist, I would really like to also see my my patients when they're happy, too, and not when they're just, like, completely down in the dumps. Because then I, I as a therapist, will be like, okay, well, that thing worked for them. Because it's it's working. They're, they're feeling better, you know? My coping mechanism is joking about my me mental health. It's unhealthy. Oh, well, I mean, at least you know that it's unhealthy. I'm, I'm happy that you're able to recognize that because when you recognize that, it means that you can work on it, you know? Oh, gosh, I'm sticking. I'm sticking to my painting. There we go. Awareness is a big step. Absolutely. I've been talking. I've been talking about how I'm very touch starved. I see. Yeah, being touch starved can can fuck you up a lot though. I understand. But yeah, definitely when you're aware of some of the things, even the terms in which you're you're feeling and stuff like that, um that can help you a lot because you can be like, "Okay, you're in the middle of an episode of, you know, doing XYZ. You're, I don't know, being very OCD or whatever it is, like, etc." Um, awareness is a big step. Yeah, attending on the good days is all part of the process. I agree. I agree. It's part of the process. It allows your... Because think of your, your therapist as a scientist, right? Like, a scientist is not going to get perfect results by just one test, right? That just wouldn't make sense. 
So they have to do multiple tests. They have to have more data to work with in order to give the best result. So, um, bro, I've avoided relationships and such for so long because of an ex, hee hee. But I'm at a point where I'm very content. By that, do you mean like you'd be open for relationships again? Oh, like if I if I find someone who I feel safe talking, uh, taking that step with, then great. I'm just not gonna go out of my way to search for something. Honestly, that's kind of the way the way to go. That's the I find that that's the healthiest way to find good partners is that when you yourself are stable, and then you find somebody who is as stable as you, right? And and you do that by kind of just chilling out. Honestly, I feel like the craziest partners are the ones you find when you're desperate, like. Like, I'm not saying everybody on dating sites are like this, but I feel like the chances of a positive relationship experience for dating sites is pretty low compared to, like, others. However, um, I do think that people should get into more relationships, um, e even if, of course, do your best, right? even if they don't do well because i i feel like there is a huge there's a huge stigma of you you shouldn't break up or like um if you if you break up the first time the second time the third time oh you're you're bad at relationships i think there's a really bad stigma that way um and I really don't like that because I feel like the more relationships you're in with a variety of people or a change in people, it allows you to get closer to what you know works for you. And even like narrowing it down or even things that you thought worked for you do not work for you realistically anymore. And you do that by experiencing and having experiences and going into more relationships and being with people that way. <clears throat> I have un have unhealthy attachments to my friends. I get so scared when they leave and when they hang out without me, I'm afraid they don't care. Ellie, I will say that friends that you should be around, the quality of friends matters, right? Like we should i think also we you should consider or think about your own self worth because if you just allow yourself to be friends with anyone and you don't kind of view yourself with high expectations or not even high expectations just like a standard then it's going to be a problem, right? Because you're going to be friends and covet people who don't deserve to be coveted. They don't, they don't covet you as much as you covet them. And that's, I mean, do you really want to be friends with those people, you know? People talk so badly about short relationships or breaking off things that aren't working instead of fixing it. Yeah, like, honestly... Not every relationship can be fixable or both people will be happy once you do fix it. Sometimes some relationships and um, some relationships shouldn't be fixed because like those people just don't, there's no, there's not as high compatibility with them. Like you can be maybe good friends perhaps, but maybe not good lovers. It's fine. Um... I've had six boyfriends and five girlfriends. I have issues. I mean, what I'm seeing from that is uh, you fall in love easily, maybe. Or, I mean, not even. Maybe it's possible that you should reconsider what you're looking for, you know? So, um, because I also feel like sometimes that that's the case for me, too. But I have to rein that back and say, hey, maybe you're like this because you have a lack in yourself. And you have to kind of reflect on that from there. 
Um, and when in reality, sometimes short relationships are a huge part of finding out both what you need from others and what you should reflect on. 100% I agree with that. That's exactly how I look at relationships, short or long. Because I actually, prior to the relationship that I'm in now, I was in very long relationships prior to this. Like two, uh, six, six plus years relationships. And it's just, you learn more about yourself. Um, oh, I'm 100% a quality over, uh, quality friends over quantity. Cause I know, I know it's people that I, I know I will love to talk to any time of day, every day if possible. Yes, I agree. I've had a short term relationship with someone who I was super close with and we ended stuff between us, but we're still friends since, you know, we, we kind of, we just kind of wanted to test the waters. Yeah. Yeah. We're great friends, but not, but as lovers, not so much, but it is what it is. Yeah. Some people are just great, good friends but their habits or whatever they do are not are not don't, don't fit um it's also possible by the way ellie that you could be in love with being in love and not so much being in love with the person very very possible very very common actually the feeling being in love with the feeling of being in love um not not great um that is wild durations yeah they're they were very long relationships um but in between i've had short relationships and those short relationships helped me narrow down hey i want to be with these people um and and sometimes those relationships don't have to end badly the last seven year relationship i still talk to my to my ex and it's not because like i want to be with them or anything it's just because over time what we wanted in people we realized were different i was different from what he wanted in a in a in a partner and he was different from what i wanted in a partner so we cordially were like hey we really don't want to be in a relationship anymore because it's kind of fake in it in a way uh stretch sure i don't think i've ever been in love <clears throat> just really short relationships i think there's some truth uh, in that you should love or at least understand yourself of pursuing pursuing any kind of relationship. This can be true for friendships too. I I agree. However, um, I also think that uh, the type of person that you are in a relationship is different from who you are as a friend as well. Sometimes you just act differently when you are in a relationship and dating. There's some maybe habits or things that you tend to do, names that you use, etc., and honestly, in my opinion, it's hard to realize that and see those habits and things that work for you unless you're in a relationship. Honestly, like, in my opinion. Um, and so I, I have no issue with going into a relationship and trying to figure yourself out, um, trying to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Mm, just very short relationships max three months if that's the case ellie i think what you should probably do maybe if you want to do this write down th the qualities of the person that you're with at the time and be like i like these qualities and then also write down things or mentally note things that you don't like about them and and are like deal breakers maybe and you're like this is not something that i want in a relationship um and then and then use that as a as a tool as a template for looking for the right person and i promise you once you use that template like there are a lot of people that you will rule out that doesn't work um, I had a bunch of short relationships around high school and college, but those were rarely healthy. I've had short relationships around high school and college, or rather more so college and post-college, but some of them, them were healthy and others were not. I kind of see dating as job slash career hunting. I agree. I kind of, you kind of have to... Um, interview, try different things and learn what your skill set is. I agree. 
also a big part of that is knowing your self-worth similar in jobs right you know how when you go and interview for a job you don't just take any job even if that job is like your job your dream job or whatever you have to see how much are going to pay you do they give you benefits like you you have to stand up for yourself too and that's the same with relationships you have to figure out for you sure you could work for the other for that other person you may be their 100% their ideal type but are they do they also work for you they have to offer something for you as well and i think that's very important um let's see um i'm super needy and my friends think it's because of trauma during my childhood but it's fine in my opinion but they said it was really messed up i i agree i agree that um i agree that your friends i don't think that you should say it's fine knowing your flaws and saying I'll work on them is different than hey I know my flaws and that's fine um I strongly believe that your partner should also be your best friend but that's just that's just what has worked for me Wump and I have been together for 17 years so he's still my best friend in the world I agree because to me being a best friend also means being able to communicate with them being able to uh, properly openly um and also sharing your feelings maybe not all of them not all of your feelings have to be shared sometimes even with your best friends but it's a trust thing you trust um wouldn't that make me too picky what's wrong with being picky it's so um it's totally okay to be picky yes in whoever you who you choose to be in a relationship with in fact i think that's better yes i agree um i don't think it would make you picky it's more that you know what you're looking for that i agree too because just just because anybody comes around ho willing to give you love does not make them a good person to give you love All right um but what if i'm too picky and never find someone because no one can live up to my standards and i end up alone that will never happen i know it's what you you know it's what will make you feel make you happiest i feel okay yeah um that's real as fuck i'm just saying that my childhood was fine not my needy issues okay your childhood was fine um, but they give me love. Why wouldn't I love them back? Because not every person deserves love. Like, let's say, for example, I'm in a committed relationship right now. What if, okay, not saying that Shadow has ever done this, but what if Shadow decided to DM me and was like, hey, want to, you know, be in a relationship together? I'm just using this as an example. Okay, no, Shadow has never done this. Okay, <laughs> don't, don't do this. Um, um, do I just give him back love because he has decided to give me love of course not right so um isn't this what i'm supposed to do no 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 that it isn't your love have more respect for your love your love doesn't do not covet more your love a bit more your love does not does not have to go to everybody who gives it who gives you love right um also hot take was that from? Hold on, let me see. Flying suit. What's a hot take? I'm, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look for this. What hot take is there? I did not read that. I don't see it. I'm fucking blind as shit. Oh, right here. Also, I'll take, but better to be alone than be with somebody shitty and abusive. Abso-fucking-lutely. Yeah. Because you never know. What if you're with somebody who's going to be abusive towards you? Or unhealthy towards you? And it, it's not going to be worth it. If you're in a relationship, even though they give you love, right? Uh, and they're willing to give you love. If that person is not a good person, don't be involved with that person you say okay well thank you thank you you know thank you for for appreciating me however i don't feel the same way you know um i wish it has uh i wish it wasn't a hot take it should be comments oh fuck i don't know why shami's comment right above nezu's reply did not click in my brain but it didn't should be common sense yes 
Um, you're going to find somebody that truly cares about you or they'll find you. Keep your, keep an ear open. Yes. Remember, okay, think about it this way, Ellie. If you're in a relationship, that's closing a door, right? You're not allowing anybody else in. But what if there's a better door out there? What if there's a door that was meant for you, but because you're kind of going into any door that opens, you miss the door that's for you. You miss the door that gives you the most happiness because you're just taking anyone or any, you're taking any door. Um, uh, let's see. You're going to find something. Um, well, we did go on a few dinner dates and played up. That's true. We did go on a few dinner dates. Shout out. Um, they were, we got pretty far, honestly. <laughs> Um, I'm so confused. This is the opposite of what I was taught. Um, sometimes, honestly, Ellie, there are some some childhood things that were shown to me that don't apply anymore. Maybe they applied to my parents or maybe they apply to other people, but they don't always have to apply to you. Sometimes you can say, I see that's how you like to live your life, but that's not the way that I like to live my life. The hot take of Shami's message, yes. Uh, so if someone loves me, I'm not required to reciprocate. Absolutely not. No. Not not ever unless you feel the same. You're not required to do anything. Correct. I'm starting to think y'all are messing with me. No way this is true. Yes. Like, like Ellie, let's say some... What if some, for example, okay, just like this cracked out guy that is homeless and doesn't do anything with his life okay comes up to me and is like hey I, I'm, I'm in love with you June be with me I love you does that mean that I should give him love and be with him even if I were single no no like, you have a choice, too. You 100% have a choice. TLDR, you have a choice. Yes, you have a choice in who, you are, who you're with. If someone likes you and you don't like them back, that's normal. Absolutely. I said, okay, I said it in my Twitter. You're not in my Twitter. But I did say, like, I get a lot of people who ask me out and, like, ask me to do things. Like, oh, my God. I had a story about FanFest. <laughs> the creepy guy from FanFest. Right? Uh, listen, like... <laughs> like... Listen, that stuff... FanFest horror story. Yeah, like, there are people who are going to like you. But you have feelings too. And you need to also respect those feelings and listen to how you feel on the inside and not just the and not just the child looking for love, but the person who you are inside. Um, you don't like them back. That's normal. Completely OK. Does not make you a bad person. Yes. Does not make you a bad person at all. Bro, wait, that was an issue on a regular basis. Um, I don't know, Shammy. Shammy, Shammy says at least, yeah, there are a lot of people who, um, have catch feelings a lot for me. Uh, I mean, think about this too. Has every single person you've liked liked you back? You're lucky if so. Yeah. Yeah, like, if if somebody, wait, 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 if someone is in a relationship with me and they don't treat me like the way I, I like, I can cut them off, no questions asked. Um, you can, you can be, uh, you can be, for me, I like to communicate, and for Shammy, she's like, I don't care. Depends on your, like, for, sh and both answers are right. You can communicate. Or, or you could also 
just cut them off, that's fine. But if if you if they're not treating you the way that you like, I if somebody's not treating me the way that I like, I talk to them. I say, "Hey, I don't really I didn't like the way that you treated me XYZ." If they cannot change that, then absolutely I'll drop them. What if I've been mentioning it to them multiple times asking for a friend? So, friend, I would say say, "Hey, this is an ultimatum. If this doesn't change, I've asked you multiple times." This bothers me extreme uh, to an extreme. If this keeps up, this is something that's a red flag for me. I really cannot handle it anymore. I'm going to have to break up with you. Yeah, you don't you don't need you don't need at the end of the day, both Nezu and Shami are correct. At the end of the day, you don't need their permission. You can just tell them, I want to break up. I don't want to be together anymore. And that's perfectly fine. You don't have, you don't owe them an explanation. I'm just, you know. So if they keep touching my chest and I'm not comfy with that, I can just leave them. Yes. Number one, yes. And yes, part of healthy relationships, as Shami says, is boundaries. And if you say, hey, well, first off, let me ask you this. Um, have you told them that you're uncomfortable with them touching your chest? Because if you if you have not, then I would say, hey, I don't want you touching my chest anymore. And if they refuse that, well, actually, you said you've told them, right? You've told them multiple times. OK, yeah, definitely. They're they're 100 percent breaking your boundaries. You need to stand up for yourself more, girl. What the hell? Just be like, I don't want, I don't like that. And I told you multiple times, this is literally sexual harassment. I'm tired of this. Goodbye. Alicia, generally it makes me sad that no one in your life has told you any of this stuff otherwise. I'm glad we can be here for you. But I encourage you to find a trusted offline adult as well. Maybe a counselor or a therapist. I agree. But um, she is also seeing a therapist once a week. Um, I shouldn't say but. She is also seeing a therapist once a week. But I would also agree that finding an offline adult is very important. I'm sorry I made you sad. Yeah, I mean, it's because everyone here wants to support each other. We find it very important to support each other. And we don't like when... It's not that we don't like. It makes us feel sad when people, um, you know, are in situations like that. Offline adults are scary. I mean, once I have stream off, and if you were to ever meet me, would you have, would you find me scary? Legitimately? I'm, I would be the same person, right? <clears throat> now we're glad to be here, yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad that you find us, um, you know, you find it's safe enough to say something like that we're, and we're very glad to be able to guide you however we're also very limited where we are because you're only able to talk to me while I stream that's three times three times a week if it, that goes on so if not even in a relationship oh sorry mom can um say something first emotions are complicated we're sad for you because we empathize and care but we're more happy than, than sad because we can help support you. Yes, I'm happy that I can support you. I'm, I'm sad that you're in a situation that I feel as if people have around you have failed you. However, I am happy to be able to offer that while I can. So if not even a relationship, if someone does not appreci me, appreciate me the way I, I want to be, and I've told them, um, I just break ties with them um yes I would say you can tell them for me I always tell people the reason why I am doing the, the way what I'm doing because it allows them to have the chance to get better and be better what if it makes them sad then too fucking bad <laughs> 
Like, I'm sorry, Ellie, but that's just the way social interaction works. Social interaction, you do not live to make other people happy. What if they hurt themselves or others? That, honestly, that's their decision. Like, I've been in a relationship where somebody has threatened to hurt themselves because I was going to break up with them. But you have to understand that's very manipulative. That's very manipulative. It wouldn't be your fault. Because you're not deciding to do the, those things, Ellie. You're not deciding for them. You do not have the you do not have the responsibility of that. You're not responsible for other people's emotions. I only learned this myself when I'm a big girl. Yes. You don't have to bear yourself on a cross just to not hurt them. Not your position to be in. Yes. You're responsible for you only. They're responsible for, th for themselves only. Yes. I feel like that happened. It's not on you ever. You're not the one inflicting that damage. Absolutely. This has happened to me before already. If a person decides to inflict damage to themselves because you have decided to stand up for yourself, do not take it as if I don't stand up, if, if I, I regret standing up for myself. Never. Most recent ex of mine threatened suicide if I broke it off. That is what really sealed the deal. Yeah, same thing happened to me before. I was in that relationship for about a month before I was just like, I can't handle this anymore. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. Okay, I'm going to tell you something that I haven't told many people before. Okay. Um, but yes, do know, Ellie, you were talking with, there are eight viewers right now, right? At least from, from what I'm seeing on my end. All of us are adults. All of us have lived life we are we are in full-fledged relationships um i know two of them at the very least with bumpkin and ducky that are successful and have long have long lasting relationships shammy she's also in a very long successful relationship they know how to navigate relationships. They know how to navigate themselves and their emotions and how to communicate. And also, also, how to value themselves. But yes. Um, emotion potion. Yeah. Oh, man, this always happens, huh? This always happens. We always go down this, this road talking, talking, um... Deep thoughts, emotions. I might just have to unvod this, huh? I'm okay with not botting it. I feel like we need a group hug now. Yeah, sure. Group hug, group hug, group hug. <laughs> I think all of us have gone through a lot of mm, rough stuff. And so we know how to handle our own emotions, which is so nice um could you edit the live chats out maybe um maybe or just the end chats possibly i could prob probably uh edit that i'm so glad you do this jen what talk about emotions and mental health and stuff um speaking of therapy i learned some of this stuff somewhere <laughs> yes shami goes to therapy and she has learned a lot of really nice really cool um It's less about what therapy can give you and more so about the way that it can change your perspective. It can give you a healthier perspective and challenge you to look at things in a different light, in a different way than what your standard monkey brain will tell you to do. Um, because that monkey brain stuff is from like childhood trauma or it could be could be childhood trauma it could be like things that you picked up that was unhealth that were unhealthy etc um real talks like this are so nice yeah they're they're good i like talking like this to chat that's exactly it i'm still the same but my perspective changed yes perspective is so important especially when it comes to having perspective of empathy and upon others or 
having no empathy for others sometimes. Um, <laughs> sorry. Like, I, like, sometimes it's just like, sometimes you kind of have to, like I said, stand up for yourself and um, provide us a space to be open and honest. And yes, how you're willing to speak to these things for others. Oh, thank you. Of course. Yeah, of course. I I always try to keep a space that is nice and safe and where people feel safe enough to open up their open up their hearts and be vulnerable and not feel shy um to be themselves because that's kind of what i am whenever i come on stream even just outside of stream off stream and stuff i just try my best to be myself and be a good person um oh bunny hi hi bunny welcome 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 yes you came you came at a I mean, to be honest, I, I have talks like this pretty often during my stream, so it's not crazy, but um, it is a, it is a good time to talk. I, I mean, it doesn't like bother me or make me heavy or anything. I think it's healthy to talk about because it allows other people to feel like they're comfortable talking about it as well outside of even this stream. Um, let's read what Ellie has to say. This is the heavy thing that she said that she's never told anyone, right? So my friend went through a really bad breakup and I feel responsible for their emotions. They were so sad and hurt, and I just wanted to comfort them. They eventually stopped talking to me, and I got really worried. Nine months later, someone texted me from their account. It was apparently their friend. They committed suicide, and I was devastated. I could have stopped that. I found out later they faked it. My sadness turned to, turned to anger, and I lashed, uh, I lashed out on anyone who talked to me. I see, I see, I see. Um... Let me see what Shami has to say first. I'm really sorry that happened to you, but that must have brought up a lot of complicated feelings that I'm sure you still have. Just know that none of that was your fault, even though I know you feel like it was, especially if it had been nine months. They made the decision, not you. Oh, and they faked it. I missed that part. Fuck them. <laughs> yes. Um, I agree with Shami. Um, if they faked it just to make you feel bad, that is 100% manipulation. Um, that is cruelty that, I mean, yes, you should be anger, angry, sure, but at the same time, like, mm, at the same time, I don't think that you should live your life strapped to this person. They manipulated you, right? Clearly, they manipulated you. They manipulated the narrative to make you feel that way. Do not let them manipulate you anymore by giving them any, any energy, any of your thoughts, and, and, and do not try to not, this sounds, this sounds kind of weird, but when somebody does that, you don't want to affect your future relationships and your current relationships with the way that that person treated you, you know? Unironically psychopathic, yeah. Something is clearly wrong with someone to do that. I agree. What is wrong? Bumble, what is going on? Here. Here, here. Go. Go get it. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> Something's going to be wrong. Yes. Yeah, that, that is not a reflection upon you. It is a reflection upon someone, that other person. And um, I would not blame yourself for that. Why? My friend went through a really bad... Why do you feel responsible for their emotions? Why do you feel responsible for something that somebody else went through when it had nothing to do with you? If they decided to stop talking to you, then that's on them. Anyway. Because they're my friend, aren't I supposed to? No. No, I, you can, supporting your friend is helping them when they're going through a hard time, sure. But feeling responsible for it, because, okay, here's an example. I can feel really bad about something that's going on with my relationship currently, right? And I can go to Shammy and I can tell her what's going on with me. But at the end of the day, 
if it, and and I ha- can have a long talk with her. Let's say two three hours. And she says to me, "Well, do you feel better now?" And I say, "No, I don't feel any better. Like I still feel like shit." She should not feel responsible for me still feeling like shit. I still feel that. And not only that, but whatever she could be upset or she could say, oh, well, it's because of, you know, her relationship right now. You know, that's not that's not your responsibility. That's not Shami's responsibility. Um, Like maybe I could say just the right thing to snap someone out of it. it that's sometimes it's just not realistic because honestly, Shami would not have any control over my emotions, right? So, Ellie, do you, when you say I feel responsible for something, right? Generally, when somebody feels responsible for something, they have a hand in doing that. They have control over that. That is part of responsibility, correct? But if you have no hand in someone else's emotions then how is it that you can be responsible for that especially if you were not involved especially if it's their relationship like why you know like your emotions aren't your fault but they're your responsibility correct um that is some attention seeking bullshit. I'm glad you got pissed because you should should have. But yeah, absolutely. Someone who cuts you off for nine months and then fakes their death to you is not a friend. Yes, they are not a friend and they never meant to be your friend if that's the case. They either wanted you for something or your relationship was just, it, it was for other purposes other than being actual friends. The only person you're responsible for is you unless you have a child. And, and since you're not a parent, you are only responsible for you. I agree. You don't have to feel responsible because you aren't. I understand having very strong empathetic feelings. Yes, but try to take a step back when that happens. Sometimes we need to allow ourselves perspective, even if we're not someone directly involved in the situation. It's admirable of you to care, but please do not let urges to care for someone take away from caring for yourself. I can't believe we've got like the entire Dalai Lama here. Can you imagine having Dalai Lama in a stream? My stream? That is crazy. But yeah, you know, Lumpkin's just 100% on the point. On point, for sure. Um, do not, do not allow somebody else's, do not allow somebody else's emotions, especially, to affect your self-esteem and the way that you see yourself as well. Um, I think it would be best for you to gain a sense of selfishness. Some people like to be like, oh, you're selfish only because you're not pleasing them. You need to please you. You're, um, you are your only concern. Be selfish. Yes. Is it okay that I don't know what to feel? Am I supposed to feel angry? I mean, honestly, I feel like half of that is number one you trying to fight things that you've learned um i think a lot of people pleasers like myself and shammy sometimes uh shammy has probably has um experience with us as well where um you're refusing um you you're refusing yourself to feel angry or you're refusing yourself to feel um justified or whatever it is like because you're like well you know like this is supposed to happen no like it's okay to be upset it's also okay to be confused but maybe just think about it after a while like think about it my brain just shut off for a second oh my gosh <laughs> um yeah I agree with Bunny though I think Gaining a self, a self uh, gaining a sense of selfishness, um, gaining a self a sense of selfishness also is reflected on your self worth too. Know what works for you, and because if you keep giving yourself to everyone, eventually there's not going to be anything left, and that's not healthy, you know. Don't try to force an emotion. Give yourself some peace. Yes. 
um, peace. I don't know. I don't know how how does it feel. That is a question for you to answer. You, what I think you need to do with yourself, Ellie, is you need to go inside of yourself and ask yourself more questions instead of thinking that what makes you happy is other people being happy. Ask yourself what makes you happy and then act upon that. That is peace. That is knowing peace and how knowing how that feels. Um. Oh shit, we were supposed to end stream. What the fuck? It's been an hour? Burn's probably like, where the fuck are you? He's already watching. God damn it. Crap's in there. Nezu's in there. Oh my god. Cryptid's in there. <sighs> uh, journaling is great for exploring your feelings. I agree. I use journaling when I'm in a really bad situation. When I'm in a really bad situation, journaling will work for me. But most of the time, um, I use talking because I'm that type of person. I, I whenever I have an issue, I usually talk it out. Uh, simply exists, my guy. <laughs> You'll know what piece, what piece is when it shows up. But for now, let your emotions settle and give yourself a moment. Time flies when you're having real talk. Yes, um, that's something you will keep trying to define throughout life. But the pursuit of what it, of it is what matters. Don't worry. Take control while doing so, though. Yes, I think control is really important. Um. Oopsies, I'm double watching you making an account for Unwizard 101. Love multitasking. Oh god, get that. Yeah. Um I have 12. I have 13 journals. What is the content of the journal? Is it is it fun stuff? Or is it you talking about your emotions? Or what type of journaling are we doing here? And there's also, by the way, there's two types of journaling. There's, at least in my experience, there's journaling where you, I have 50, sorry. There's journaling where you, where you just word vomit onto a page. That's one type of journaling. And that's sometimes what I do when I'm so full of emotion. And it doesn't matter how many people I talk to, I still have that emotion, whatever it is. Um, and then there's mindful journaling, which is where you write down exactly how you feel, exactly what something, like what you're going to do, etc. I like the writing a letter you've ne you'll never send. That's a good one too. Poems, stories, my book, um, magic stuff, game stuff, feelings, lore, etc. Um, when Shami says journaling, she means specifically a, like a feelings journal. A journal specifically for your feelings and not a mishmash of different things. Because if you have a mishmash of, in, a, in a journal, then you can be distracted by other things, right? You... You can open up your journal and you're like, wow, I remember this really bad day. And then you flip the next page looking for what's the next day? Did the next day make me feel better? And you check and it's a fucking like drawing of a naked Don Hung from Star Rail. Like, I can't concentrate in this fucking house. Like, it's how, how I would feel. Yes, feelings, emotions, journal. I have a, pr I have a pretty one just for f feelings puking in. Yeah, feelings puking in. <laughs> Feeling very naked, Don Hung today. That's what I mean. It's just like you're, you're, you're breaking your feeling, right? You're breaking, trying to look at your progress, um, by putting things in between or whatever it is. Um, I'm feeling. <laughs> I have a cherry blossom journal for my feelings. That's good. I would say um, writing in that more often would probably be a really good thing to do. I think that would be very healthy. 
um, especially with how you're feeling and with all the things that are happening currently. Uh, Shami's approach to therapy is now my new personal goal. <laughs> yeah, Shami, Shami has had um, lots of experience with therapy, not because she was forced to, but because uh, willingly. Like she, she has gone out of her way to be an advocate for therapy. And by being an advocate, you have to also know what you're advocating. And so she's a very good um, um, resource for that. Um, hi. Oh, hi, Tiger. You're home from D&D. Welcome home. A stretch, of course. I know. Wumpkin, I know. You have to. I piss so much of my therapy away to an extent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it's just like, it's just the way that it is sometimes. Like, especially everyone goes through in their life in cycles. As, as Shami says, she's like, people work in cycles. And it's true. People do. People do work in cycles. Sometimes you're in a cycle where you're just like not. You're not good. It's not good. And then other times, like other times, the therapy works for you. It works very well. I feel like I get annoying sometimes with how much I quote my therapist. You don't. You don't get annoying. So, uh, three hours a week right now. Three hours a week? Okay. Off topic, but someone called me the F slur today. Um, it's because they're jealous that they called you fabulous god damn girl um oops four new one now okay it's true we finished a part of the campaign we were on and went from level 12 to 14 nice um my character will now be able to talk excellent we love talking um a fabulous friend yes a fabulous friend but uh, realistically okay just um actual real talk though um i know that can be hurtful but people say the these things because most of the time because there's there are things that are broken in their own home and broken in their own head so yeah there's don't i know i'm, I'm it hurts for sure um but think more towards people who are healthy for you instead focus more your energy towards that um and cultivating those relationships instead of whatever the fuck that is um sorry to, that happened to you try not to internalize too many negative shit coming at you yeah try not to internalize it try try to you're, you're allowed to be sad for it i know i'm never in a in a position where just where i will ever say to you just don't be sad just don't it's just like like I said it's like if somebody was like just lose weight like just drop 20 pounds next week <laughs> it's like it's just ridiculous right um but I understand how that hurts it still hurts I, I know it um but yeah just know that certain people they just they suck okay they suck um yeah i'm hot as fuck you know yeah exactly they really just could not resist that's all they're they're what shammy is leaving shammy wait <laughs> the fuck do you think you're going <laughs> my favorite way to deal with my emotions and internalizing bad bitch energy bunny you can do that but so I, I understand that like hmm, this sounds kind of cringe but I'll say goodnight to Shammy first goodnight Shammy thank you for, for hopping by and I said that because you're a bunny hopping by <laughs> um, and, and coming to hang out with me on stream today um, what I wanted to say was what I used to do when I was a kid when I was shy and didn't know anything about myself um I used to read pieces of media or play pieces of media and say I really love this character this character I want to be them and then I would take like aspects of that character and work towards being that uh, that person so um cause they were my they, they were kind of my um, they were my role model in that way right 
So um, if you're confused or you're not sure or you're like, how do I be a bad bitch? Find a bad bitch and like, and like media, go watch a show where there's a bad bitch and you're like, God damn, this girl is hot. This girl knows who she is. She knows like what she's doing and you know what she wants and try to strive towards it even if even if you even if you have to ask yourself what would x person do what would what would my my friend do and stuff like that or my my role model do um hurt, yes hurt people hurt people i'm i'm late but hurt people hurt people correct um good night yep 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 Thanks for showing the complexities of empathy, June. Yeah, of course. Being understanding doesn't mean you have to take shit or spend your time on, on someone. Yes. Um, empathy... Empathy is also earned. Just like... Like, there is a baseline of respect, sure. And, and there is a baseline of empathy. But depending on the situations, sometimes some people... Are given more empathy and earn more empathy than others sometimes so i mean of course everybody has respect sure but some people gain more respect depending on what they do like i have more respect for i don't know somebody who solved polio like created the vaccine for polio that'd be awesome i respect them um or um you know there are different ways to respect people, for sure. But not, not everybody needs empathy like that. Um, some people like like your person who faked... Ellie's person who faked um, their death not necessarily needs empathy. Um, bad bitches love themselves. Bad bitches don't care about people who are not bad bitches. <laughs> bad bitches... This is this is a manifesto this is like this is the the bible the bad bitch bible this is a verse <laughs> um bad bitches know that they're bad bitches don't care for validation of other people that's the, oh that's the motto got it i follow viking code i'm not sure i'm familiar with viking code not to be not, not, not lying facts yeah oh gosh Oof. I'm kind of like kind of I'm looking at this one. Oh my god. I should end I should end stream. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I'm Scottish, so there's there's stereotype. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I enjoy your streams. Thank you, Bunny. Yeah, I mean, you've probably been in many streams where we just talk about and talk. We just, just chat, you know? I like just chatting with you guys, though. So. I'm Scottish, Native American. Very interesting combination, though. Interesting combination. Um, kind of for the, am I the asshole? Yeah, this might be an, a rare asshole post, actually. I feel like constantly we do not an asshole, not an asshole. Even though there are some that are like in between the fence, right? Today's there was like no in between the fences. They were like every every one of them is like you're not the asshole in this at all, you know? Am I doing the right one? I don't know. We have to let the queen sleep so she can grace us again. Queen's fucking tired, man. <laughs> I am tired with the whole like palming thing that's happened today, but I do I do appreciate you guys being around. And Ellie, you need sleep. I know that you have issues sleeping. I do too, but I want you sleeping. Uh, I even I'm gonna be going to bed after this, even though I've made some emotes that I'd like to share. Oh, that's right. Should I share some emotes that I've I've made? I'm going to be, I'll, I will share one. How's that? I will share the one that I made specifically for Halloween, for all the, all the Halloween stuff. I'm Evie, but I have lore to write. 
Are you? Is it for a commission? Can you can you wait a single day? Make sure to brush your teeth, y'all. Yes, please brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Have like dental hygiene. Don't let the or Lord eat your soul. Here you go. How do I make this bigger again? <laughs> no, it's for he. <laughs> He didn't ask for any of it. You don't have to. Y you do not need to. There is a difference between I have to versus um, um, before versus have to and having to like deciding to. We message privately. Oh, okay. I mean, did he give you a time limit? And if he did, I'm gonna have to talk to Constantine about that because. I will talk to him about that if that's the case. <laughs> um, oh, nice emote. Thank you. Yeah, I, I finished it up yesterday, I think. Um, I'm trying to figure out what, what I'd like. No, I'm doing it because I want to. I, I understand that, but you need to get you need to get some sleep. Ellie, you need to get some sleep. I'm currently chewing gum because I want to brush my teeth, but I have a cat in my lap. Oh. I'm sorry, but you're kind of stuck there, huh? It's it's Jover for you over there. No sleep? Nope. He did not ask you for that. You do not need to do that. And I'm pretty sure if I ask Constantine right now. If I ask Constantine right now, Constantine, do you want her working on your do you want Ellie working on your um your lore stuff? until she because and she can't sleep 100 percent, he would say no i want her to sleep 100 percent. and if he doesn't then he's getting kicked out of my discord <laughs> i only i only want people who who um encourage others to do healthy things in my discord healthy relationships healthy healthy sleep We need a living cloudy at next next stream. A living cloudy. Yeah, we need a living one. Well, who cares what he thinks? Well, you you're also okay. Another thing too is that we don't live and we don't exist for just for you to make lore. So he does care. He does he does what he thinks does matter, right? I. I want you to take care of yourself better. I think everybody here wants you to, to, to take care of yourself more. And that starts with giving your body what it needs. Your body needs sleep, Ellie. It needs sleep. I can't believe I'm still doing this. I, I want to finish up this this panel first, honestly. <clears throat> yes, please sleep. Please get some sleep. If you need me in the background while you sleep, then feel free. I've kind of expected it, but to, like when I start streaming, I'm like, more than likely I'll be a comfy streamer. Um, however, I also note that I don't stream at sleepy times for some people <laughs> like i start stream at like 7 30 you know and i end at like nine nobody's sleeping at that time girl what are you talking about <laughs> you're gonna be a comfy streamer people are gonna fall asleep to your streams um your streams at like 7 30 nobody sleeps um, sleep is a major factor in your mood, health, and just general existence. It is need for everything. If you want to give good lore, you gotta get get a good sleep. I agree. Uh, I agree. That shit is so important. Sleep is a factor for many things, including all the things that Bunny had said. Everything. Um. Uh, I'm sorry, totally random, but when I draw the fat of the body just just right, it totally hits different. I'm hungry. <laughs> June thinking I'm going to sleep in stream. I ain't sleeping on anyone's stream. <laughs> yeah, 
You're a perfect companion for making dinner today, though. I like that. I'm glad. I'm glad that I was able to um, entertain you while you were making dinner. I usually watch... I don't watch streamers, but I watch some YouTubers who are kind of chill and talk um, whenever I make dinner. So that makes me really happy to hear. Um, listen, some people sleep early. I used to, but then full-time school slash work stopped. Yeah. Discord ain't working for me. Sad. Can't watch that Gundam series with Burner. Really? Crap. Really? Hmm, that sucks. What the heck? When you don't get enough REM sleep, your brain starts to re release less through in inducing chemicals leading to a worse payout. So, aka, you should get sleep, right? We're on the same page here. Right? <laughs> you release less thought, yes. <laughs> Ellie, if you're releasing less thought and a worse payout, right? In your own words, then why would you make lore for Constantine? Would it just not be good lore then? Like, you want to give him good lore, right? And to give him good lore, you should get good sleep so you can think properly. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, that makes sense, right? I think that makes sense. I don't know. I'm just a girl. I made your lore in 17 minutes of sleep. I know that. I remember that you said that you did not sleep much at all during that stream I met you during my Final Fantasy stream I remember Toasty Pineapples hello welcome 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 we're having and just, honestly this is just like chatting honestly I want to eat your name damn me too <laughs> pineapple's my favorite fruit so I would eat I would eat pineapple Toasty Pineapple especially congratulations on such a delicious name um bring brain no go burr if you no sleep very true um oh hell yeah i just checked my calendar for tomorrow and no meetings woohoo yeah nice job awesome um same to be honest what are you doing i am which ugh, i pulled it off of my table this is a diamond painting these little cone things in this little tray. I am, um, I have a three, three pen or a single pen where I take either three cones or a single cone to put it into these little things. And let me just show it to you because it's like a paint by number actually. So one second. See, if you see it, it has little symbols or letters. And then these are the ones that I've done. You can see them. They're kind of shiny. Shiny, shiny. See? No clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard to describe. It's like, like I said, it's like a paint by number, except instead of painting by number, you're painting by like cone colors. Yeah. And I've been streaming for like seven hours. So we're all out of our true crime for the day um but so that's what that's what crimes and crafts is um that's what i named it right should be crimes and crafts uh, my crimes and crafts series is we do a craft and we listen to true crime at the same time and talk about it that's basically what it is but we're all out of true crime today but we're here to talk that's all um okay i'll go to bed on one condition tell me what your condition is ellie um, I only build plastic models. You do Gunpla? Um, we had, I had a friend, a streamer friend, uh, Burner VT. Um, let me shout him out again. This is my third time shouting Burner out, but whatever. It's fine. Um. Shout out, uh, Burner VT. Um, he does Gunpla, um, on his off time though like not on streams 
and I used to do gunpla. I used to do all the spray painting and all the all all that stuff. And waifus? Oh, very cool. I don't do waifus, but I, I know people who do as well. Free praise? Um free praise. Like praise kink? Free praise kink. Is that what you want? A free praise kink? We found a different streamer who's building an absolutely adorable miniature kits and obsessed and need one or two. He built them on stream too sometimes. Very cool. 120. Oh my god. That is a lot. Random though. That is pretty cool. Like it reminds me of um, one time I found a streamer that just like looked through plant book or no. um, Just like plants in Australia and they, they lived in Australia and they are just like looking through them looked at poisonous plants looked at like remedies and stuff like that and just talked about them it was a very chill stream very interesting and educational i liked it i was joking but if you do it i'll be happy i mean um depends on what you want me to say i can tell you that you did a good job um free praise is a is a big ask when it comes at 20k yeah i know Box is as thin as a cereal box. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It, it's easy to feel like you're a little gypped after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is big. You have to earn it. But if everybody has. Oh, gosh. I want you to go to bed, though. I want you, I really do want you to go to bed. How many how many points do you have right now, Ellie? If you have half the points, I'll give it to you. If you don't have half the points, then. Uh, I gotta figure out how to invest my points to make some of the American make some praise here and there. <laughs> 218? Maybe I should increase the, the rate, actually. I'm gonna buy a Makima for no reason. I don't even watch any of them. <laughs> I have one, one out of 100. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I think that is my issue. I should ask, um, what what's burner's rate? Cause I don't, cause we're able to get to him pretty quickly. So I like doing that, having some engagement like that. So I might increase the rate so you guys can inter interact with that a little bit more often. Um, you can change rates. You can, yeah. You can change the how much people get, um, after a certain amount of time, automatically. Um, but yeah, I'll probably do that right. Fine, fine, and and. And Ellie has been giving me, like, the whole, um, the, the stretches and hydrates, so I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Toasty Pineapples, buying Makima for no reason, I don't even, honestly, I kind of want to watch Chainsaw Man. I haven't watched it either. I, I, I saw the first episode, and I think at that time, I, when I, when I watched the first episode, I also was in the process of the beginning stages of wanting to be a uh, streamer. So uh, I got uh, 25K pretty quickly there. Yeah, 25K is like nothing. Um, Munchin. What do I get for 80? Gotta save for this big end. Mm. <laughs> You'll see. Sitting at 8.9. What are you gonna save? What are you saving up for over there, Shadow? What are you looking for, huh? You're not going for any colors. You're going for ASMR Whisper. Note that uh, for ASMR Whisper, um, I let you choose what I say. So you can give me a line and I will ASMR Whisper it. You can even give me like an entire paragraph. I don't really care. I don't know. I just have points. <laughs> I'm only at 3.4 Sag. Okay. Um, something tragic just happened. Not that tragic, but a streamer increased her redeem and I'm sitting here like I was saving for that. Ouch. Oh. Oh no, man. Like youngies, I have like 20k. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're you're there like every time though, right? And then you're you're probably in her stream right now. Is she streaming? Hold up. I want to check. Hold on. Cuz I saw her streaming earlier. She is streaming. Woo. Um, I just have streams on in the background. Is she streaming? Yeah. Oh, she is. She is. She is. Yes. Yeah, 
Christmas. You don't even know, Shadow. <laughs> That's the thing about uh, about uh, Final Fantasy PvP, though. You could at least, like, with gaming streams, you can pay attention to them even if they're muted. You know, with just chatting, it's really hard. I like Shadow and keep you through. Yes, yes, yes. I'm encouraging my points to work harder and make more. <laughs> exactly. Tell the, those points to get a fucking job. <laughs> Listen, it must have came on during raid. Ah, 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 I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, tell your points to get a job and work harder to make more points. That's that's the big part of it. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, if anybody gets 80k, I promise you, that's gonna be fucking... <laughs> that's probably gonna be clipped. <laughs> That are cringed at. Probably both. Oh, I'll give... Okay, I'll give Ellie... I'll give Ellie her praise, okay? Ellie, you did a good job today. You did a good job. And I'm very proud of you. Very proud. Um, damn, can we pull points? <laughs> This is an idle point tycoon. <laughs> Bunny with their 25, mine with the 9k. But I want the praise, Ellie. You want the praise? I just gave praise. I gave praise to Ellie, though. Yeah, I mean, unless you guys can think of anything more for praise kink. Whatever, whatever makes you feel praised. That's my praise, though. Telling people that they did a good job today and that I'm very proud of them. Clipped. Published. <laughs> I don't know. I, You know, you say that, but I, every time I come to go to my, um, my channel for clips and stuff, I don't really see it, Ellie. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, I was hoping that I was... I was uh, where is it? Edit panels. No, no. Can I not find it? Oh my gosh. Forget it. <laughs> Go to filters. Ah, okay, okay. It direct directed me at a different person, June. Totally ineffective for me. Oh. Okay, I'll praise kink you. <laughs> yes, go go praise kink them. Go praise kink. Go to filters. Okay, I will I'll I'll go to filters. I'll give it one more chance. Um tours. Here? No? Here? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys are funny. Pumpkin, I can eat you. Thanks, I guess. Oh, don't say that. You are good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Turn off featured clips. Oh. Do I have featured clips on? Hold on. Hold on. One second. No, don't look at this. Uh, 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 here. <laughs> you can look at that. You're witnessing our divorce real time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now I definitely have to delete the VOD for this. <laughs> Get your clips in. I don't know. If you clip from a, um... Deleted VOD does it not show anymore? Um, I want a sandwich with some pickles on it. That sounds delicious. I actually just want food right now in general. The clip remains. The clip will, will remain regardless of the VOD being um deleted. Okay, it's good to know. I am on the wrong. No, I'm on the right area. Should be. Content clips. Okay. And I can turn off featured clips, right? Mm, I'm not really seeing it. Oh no. You know what? Give me one second, okay?
Okay, sorry. Um, let me grab. Well, first off, let me put on some more music because that it's over for some reason. Then I'll give you guys more hand cam. That's not the hand cam I want. There we go. Okay. They're still not seeing it unless they need time to publish. I'm not. I can see it. Wait. Hold on. Okay. Because whenever I go to clips, it's just not. It just shows automatically featured clips. Like I'm not sure where to turn that off. Hmm. Stream manager. Maybe. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I don't want to mess with this too much, but. Hopefully by then it should come down. Stream. Oh, you know what? I found it. Enable clips. Any followers. That's fine. So weird. You can see it. Drop the link for the clip. I'm not sure if you can make it private. It's gone now. Drop down for all. I'll clip something. Let me see. Look at Womp and said, for real, you're you're good and said pathetic just said pathetic <laughs> go to filters turn off featured go to filters and turn off featured i'm going to my channel i'm going to my channel let's see if i can do this i see my about panel but i don't really see anything Maybe it's just because I'm on my, on my thing? I don't know. I don't know. I see that too. That's so weird. I don't know why I can't. Clips manager? Yeah, I see like a clips manager, but. And I see yours shadow but i don't see any of ellie's i see two of ellie's from deep rock galactic but that's it all oh i see no jk i see it holy shit ellie you've been clipping forever <laughs> um how many can i feature i'll look at the clips and see which ones i like the most you did, yeah, you, you clipped a uh, Deep Rock Galactic. <laughs> That's so fun. I liked Deep Rock Galactic. Drop down for all. Bumpkin, that's exactly what I did. Smart. Just so smart. I had a question for you, but I totally forgot. Did you end up remembering what your question was, Bunny? Um, just a random clip. Oh, they don't come up on your channel. Interesting. I might, I don't know where I would have to like change that. Uh, see, I got you. <laughs> you do got me. Um, I need to play Deep Rock a lot. Yes, yes, yes. Please do. Um, Blair, Detective Blair and I, I'll, I'll, I'll shout him out since my mod is gone. My poor mod is sleeping. As she should. She deserves to sleep. Um, oops. Detective. Blah. Yes. I'm going to be playing this with him. I'm going to play. Well, I played Deep Rock Galactic with him originally. But we're going to be playing some Pass Within this Sunday, which is a spooky kind of horror ish point and click game where you have to work together. It's a co op. Oh, and then kind of dropped it because my friends who played it stopped playing. Yeah. To be honest, I'm that fr I'm usually that friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this there's this one Ellie made. I see them now. Cool, awesome. Ooh, looking at my clip, I remember. Yo, but yes, Blaz, cool. Can be what be your what be your Steam? My Steam. Let me give you my Steam. One second. I'll um DM it to you. Where, where the heck is it 
Oh, it's right here. JK. I found it. It's right there. Okay, and then... Where? Wait. That's not it. Whatever. I'll show you. I wonder how many clips I made. You've made quite a bit. I think you're the person who uh, clipped the most. So. The time. You're being pulled along for the, the call of desperate chatters. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I can't stop. It's just so fun. It's fun talking. It's fun talking with everyone. I like talking with you guys. It's just so fun. It's it's um it's cathartic it's so fun to be able to talk with everyone and enjoy your time or i could just drop my my entire keyboard that works speaking of which go to bed ellie yes go to bed i gave you your praise go to bed <laughs> womp is also, is refusing to go to bed also despite that we've both been sleeping enough and it's 11 please do go to bed i actually need to go to bed it's 12 and i need to go to work um tomorrow honestly i'm gonna be work from home because the plumber is gonna be coming tomorrow i'm a grown man <laughs> get some good rest yes you're a grown man but if you're a grown man you'd go to bed like you're supposed to huh so don't make you that grown huh get some good rest i called you mom with the crit. <laughs> i'm glad i'm off today and tomorrow nice congrats nezu that's fun okay for real this time we're going. We're leaving. We're going to bed. Every single one of you. Except if uh, except Nezu. Because he, he doesn't have work tomorrow. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Saturday, Sunday. Gross. Yeah, that is pretty ewy. But I will tell you. My next stream will be Friday. I'm going to be playing um, Final Fantasy MSQ Theater. I'm going to be doing MSQ Theater with Shami. That's going to start at 7.30. Um, and then the, the, the stream after that, I know no talking streams. I know, I know you lo guys love to chat, um, but they will be game streams. So, and then, like I said, on Sunday, I will be doing, um, a pass within that's, that's the name, a pass within with detective fly. Gotta be responsible adult. Yes. MSQ theater. Let's go. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, see you Friday. Yes. Please, I will talk to you all, all Fridays. Getting called names here. See if I come back. <laughs> you will. You will. <laughs> Ducky will drag you. <laughs> um, yes, I will see you all Friday. Um, I will talk to you all then. Thank you guys for coming by. I will talk to you then. Bye bye, bees. Bye bye, my little beelings. Bye bye, darlings. You did a great job today. I give you give you all free praise. You you did a great job. You did a great job. I'm so proud of you. You're all great and wonderful people. Where the heck is my ending screen? It's right here, huh? Stream ending. <laughs> God, seven fucking hours, guys. Ugh. Dead. Oh wait, stay. Hold on, stay. I need you to stay. We're gonna raid. <laughs> I totally forgot we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid Youngie. I don't know how long she's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna be here, but holding, hold. We're raiding. We are raiding raiders. She won't let me raid her? Oh my god. Alright guys. Do you want to see a game or do you want to see chat? Or like some another craft and stuff. You want to see one of my favorite games? Maybe this one. Depends. How do you guys feel about Hollow Knight? Or do you want to see some drawing? Go, go to bed, Ellie. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. 
Yeah, let's do Hollow Knight. Excellent. Let's go with someone a little bit with less people. I don't know the I don't know what this person is, but let's go with that dude Drew. All right. All right, you guys. For real this time, good night. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you for staying. You crazy people have stayed since till the end. I love you very much. You are awesome. And I, I very much appreciate you. Good, good night, everyone. I will talk to you next time.